in this video i will give you the final proofs with which i have waited until now because the moment wasn't there yet to reveal this to you that Switzerland is the beast with its inhabitants consciously making the alliance with the forces of evil while smiling to the entire world for 2000 years now how neutral clean and innocent they are emphasizing this in all the world's media so no one will get any other ideas in their heads and it worked until homie ross came around found you playtime is over playtime's over swiss he my mind is academic and i need proofs and facts for everything therefore i don't believe in god jesus allah mohammed and the rest of the religious hocus pocus which doesn't mean that i deny god jesus allah muhammad and the rest which the fanatic bible bangers always immediately throw at me when i don't exactly behave the way one should in certain circles to deny is when i would say there is no god jesus muhammad allah and the rest which i don't never have and never will i just don't believe that's all i do believe though the pharaohs are here like the apple sin company on a pyramid here and i can see it but i do believe in the or rather a creation out of scientific reasons it has been scientifically proven some years ago that the human dna is the most complex machine on earth and it doesn't change meaning there is no evolution the dna is permanent and final what i also believe is certain parts out of the book of revelations because the mark of the beast through electronic chips in the hand and forehead have become a tragic reality these days and for my academic mind this is a fact i can see it plus that evil is omnipresent and very much based in switzerland with the seven heads of state and ten ministries the beast with the seven heads it says one of a kind switzerland doesn't have just one head of state but seven here one two three four five six seven here they are the government known as the federal council is made up of seven members it's the only country in the world where they have seven heads or seven kings it says in the book of revelations chapter 17 verse 9 to 11 that the seven heads are seven hills on which 
the woman sits, there are also seven kings. Here you can read that the seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits, there are also seven kings. So I will show you now here in this video where exactly in Switzerland this place is with all the proofs as usual. And also the last part here refers to Switzerland. Yeah. The beast who once was and now is not is an eighth king. He belongs to the seven and is going to his destruction. So you see, there are seven here, and there's one apart from the seven. This is the eighth king. And even the clock is important because here is the seven. They do nothing without a reason. And here it says 12 too, but I don't understand why 12. Must be a reason. Maybe it's another verse in, in some book or whatever. But anyway, the seven is quite clear, you know. The seven heads of state, and this is the eighth king here. Uh, why pink? Uh, well, you answer that yourself. I'm not allowed to by the censorship. So, and also this part refers to Switzerland and their criminal Nazi Templar state. And I quote, the beast who once was and now is not, is an eighth king. He belongs to the seven and is going to his destruction. So the seven Swiss heads of the beast also have the eighth king who is called the Federal Council's Chief of Staff, and he belongs to the seven. In many pictures, you see them together, but he's a little bit apart. So here it says the seven members of the Federal Council, and um, so this one is uh, in. 2022 Ignacio Cassis and well here you got the other ones so that's one two three four well you know this one there was the uh, Per Set Set as the god of darkness of Egypt and Per it means the house I made a video about him so the house of the god of the underworld Per Set and um, well, we all know this symbol here, this parmelin, it's also from Per, the house. Me, it means pyramid, me, mer, or meru, it means the pyramid in Pharaonic, in, it comes from on. So it means Per, me, on, the house of the pyramid of Osiris. And uh, all pharaohs. And there he is, there's number eight. He is the Federal Chancellor, also called the Federal Council's Chief of Staff. And here's his name, Torn Herr. Herr, it's like a lord. So this is the eighth. So there are seven as in the book of Revelations, and there is an eighth one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and here's number eight, exactly as the book says. He belongs to it, but he doesn't really belong to it. It's exactly how it is. So I read it again for you, the last part here. The beast who once was and now is not, is an eighth king. He belongs to the seven and is going to his destruction. But I'm going to show you this now. 
the seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits they are also seven kings and i will show you in this video where this place is in switzerland with all the facts and all the proofs and you can see it for yourselves please excuse me that i haven't told you this before although i've known this for ages literally for ages but the time and moment wasn't right yet which it is now here it says the right time is now i've explained you the seven heads who are the seven heads of the swiss confederacy who are also seven kings because all politicians in the world come out of the nobility in a new horizontal aristocratic rule but first something else it says that the beast rises out of the water but hey there is no sea in switzerland it is a landlocked alpine base at high altitude on top of the world switzerland has a couple of big lakes though where even big tsunamis happen when parts of the adjacent mountains break loose and create real tsunamis like the one of 2004 in the indian ocean killing more than 200,000 people so in lake geneva in the year 563 a.d there was the tower dunum event creating a 16 meter high wave in lake geneva killing many and devastating entire towns and this can happen any moment again so here you can read about it the tower dunum event the tower I, I read it for you here a little bit the tower dunum event of 563 a.d was a tsunami on lake geneva then under the frankish territory of the kingdom of orleans like uh, Jean of Orléans, you remember, triggered by a massive landslide which caused widespread devastation and loss of life along the lakeshore. According to two contemporary chronic chroniclers, the disaster was caused by the collapse of a mountain side at a place called Tower Dunum at the eastern side end of Lake Geneva. It called a great wave to sweep the length of the lake sweeping of away villages on the shoreline and striking the city of geneva with such force that it watch, washed over the city walls and killed many of the inhabitants here you can read here the producing a tsunami up to 16 meters well that's high 16 meters that's what is it like a four-story building or more that's very high so here you can see some pictures you can read it all yourself here so here's tower dunum in the east and the wet and the tsunami went all the way to geneva and what do we have in geneva folks yes what do we have in lake geneva today that would create danger to the entire world when a swiss tsunami would happen again well the cern hadron collider 
runs through Lake Geneva and it would break in two when a big mountain rock would decide to fall into the lake which might provoke something out of another dimension to rise out of the waters just as it says in the book of revelations so here's the hadron collider it goes further on the map here here's geneva and uh, here says Surin. and it runs through lake geneva here's lake geneva the tsunami it started in 563 a.d more to to the right and it went higher and higher when it came here in geneva so here are no mountains but here are mountains and here and of course where the the uh, tsunami started and the rock fell off you know to the east here north and east so um here's the hadron collider and this here this here is the border with france this all this here um I think it is and here no it can't be the border but anyway here's geneva the border is at geneva and um, so a lot of the hadron collider it goes through france actually so tsunami in geneva cern and i guess what will happen eh because at CERN in Geneva, Switzerland, as we all know, they are surpassing the physical boundaries of this earth that might open portals to other dimensions as speeding up matter up to the speed of light and then smash them against each other as they do in the hadron collider at cern these are physical experiments that exist nowhere else in the physical realm of the earth's nature and are no part of the creation uh, this is the wikipedia page of uh, CERN you can read it all yourself and here's the logo and it says three sixes and the colors this is what I wanted to show you it has the colors blue for the new world order or the uh, the pair hat white house of pharaoh and it has blue for the war representing the war crown or pharaoh and you can see it in big the war crown of pharaoh and the white for the white crown standing for the pair head of upper egypt and of course there are four letters for the concept of four and there are circles here the circles are part of sixes and the circles stand for the compass so it does say square and compass and the whole thing is of course in a square in a blue square so always the same ones behind it also an earthquake might break cern's hadron collider in lake geneva as we had a 4.8 season last week on September the 10th here in the east of France next to the Swiss border so I am like here next to the here next to the town of Colmar and here's Geneva you can see that here and all this here it says Switzerland this is Switzerland 
And here's the Hadron Collider running through the Lake Geneva. So this one here might already might have been the one that made it happen, eh? That could have made it happen. And uh, so here you can see it. France earthquake today, magnitude 4.8 earthquake at France-Switzerland border, September the 10th, 2022 on this channel here and uh, here you can see the date it was uploaded on September the 10th 2022 you can read some more about it so the danger is there it might break because of an earthquake it felt like sitting on a tractor that much my chair was shaking and in 2003 we had a 7.9 shake here in Alsace and I couldn't stand up anymore and I had to sit down on the floor so here you can read it it's on YouTube this channel here extreme weather Alsace is shaking 4.8 magnitude earthquake hits France and Switzerland 10 days ago. This Saturday, September the 10th, a magnitude 4.8 earthquake shakes the northeast of France and Switzerland. Hey, son, that can happen, eh? Hey? You can read some more about it here. Earthquake. The quake surprised an entire region in three countries, a magnitude 4.8 earthquake whose epicenter was located on the Franco-Swiss border. That's where I am. According to the National Seismic Monitoring Network, RINES, happened this Saturday, September the 10th, at the end of the afternoon. So here's a lot of uh, newspaper articles which I can't open because I refuse to take their cookies. So that's why I had to show it to you on YouTube. Well, and so forth. It seems to me that every time there is a dry and hot summer like 2003 and now 2000. 22 the earth starts to shake probably due to the drought in the lower layers of the earth now the time is ripe to finally reveal to you where the only place in the world is where there are the seven hills that are also kings at the same time have a big lake next to it with a woman sitting on it and that place is of course in octagon Switzerland. the name of the seven hills are the seven hoerfeerste in swiss german and you can do them in one day, you see, hiking. So that means there are hills. Because compared to each other, which you can see here, they're like hills. It's like 100 meters, like uh, altitude difference, like a hill. If you go all the way down, it's like two and, two and a half kilometers. Then it's a mountain. But there are hills, you see. And Chur, it comes in German, you say Kurfürsten. And uh, Hur or Kur in High German that means to elect, which we can still find back in uh, in Afrikaans today in South Africa. I'll show that to you later on. And Firsten in High German that's Fürsten, Fürst, ein Fürst that means an emperor, a lord, a king. So these mountains, there are kings as well like in the book of revelations yeah this is what they say about it a snow white waiting behind the seven mountains well, i just told you you know you can you can walk them in one day so they're not mountains they're hills 
you know, compared to each other. It's like 100 meters difference, you know, not even that. The seven Hoerfürsten, it says seven Hoerfürsten peaks are as magical as a fairy tale and the children of Tockenburg know what each of them is called. From east to west, Gaserook, 2000 meters, Hinterhoek. 2,300 meters, Schiebenstoll, 2,200 meters, Zustoll, 2,200 meters, Brisi, 2,279 meters, Frumsel, 2,263 meters, Zelun, 2,200 meters. Trails lead to each of them. Well, you see, there's not even 100 meters difference. It's like 40 meters or 30 meters different. There are hills. They're not mountains. You know, if you walk them, there's like hills. The seven hills who are also seven kings from the book of Revelations. Here it is, people. Kurfürsten in Swiss German or Kurfürsten in High German. Or like here in Old German, Kurfürstlichen, Kurfürsten, which is written the same way as in Swiss German, and this like with the umlaut like in High German, and this is Old German, the German of that of, of that time, yeah. So Kurfürsten is a reference to the seven imperial prince electors of the Holy Roman Empire which you can see here, which was a German empire from the year 800 to 1806, and of which Switzerland was part of for hundreds of years. Although Switzerland at the same time was an independent state from its foundation in 1291 onwards. But due to the internal strife within the aristocracy between the feudal vertical and the new republican horizontal rule, the Swissies had to adapt the new situation sometimes for longer periods in which the Templars of Switzerland had already become true masters in behaving like a chameleon, changing colors from the outside only because of the incessant threats of the feudal kings and notably the king of France. This is how Switzerland has become this alleged neutral, innocent, clean state, hiding its true nature to the entire world. It's a little bit like today, you know, with the European community, like uh, Switzerland is so-called neutral and so-called not making part of the European community while they're in the middle of it and having the same laws like the Schengen rules and all this. And this was the same in the Holy Roman Empire. You know, it's the same thing going on. So here the seven prince electors or the Kurfürsten or in Swiss German like the mountains, the Kurfürsten. Here it even says again Kur, the, um, which is in pronounced Kur in German and Kur in Swiss German. This is the old German way to write it. And here's Fürst. This is an S. You know, it's almost like the SS, eh? runic. And... Um, so these these are the this is the reference of these mountains or at the same time the seven kings. This guy really is a king, the king of Brandenburg. And I think these are some um dukes and all this, but you know, and these are the three are ecle ecclesiastical kings, so to speak. And the nobility, they all come the um the church, they all come out of the nobility, you know. And these four here, they are worldly leaders. So these are church leaders and these are worldly leaders. So we get here three and four. 
which is a concept of three and the concept of four. So it does say square and compass. And seven altogether is the holy number of the pyramid, which I already explained to you. This one even has a, almost a Templar's cross in it. These, of course, lions. It's the nobility. Here's a, an eagle or maybe a double header. I don't know. And um, it's, it's all the nobility. And here in the middle is, of course, the, uh, the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, which was a German Empire, actually, with only a little bit of the north of Italy in it. And um, yeah, it says again, the Hoer Fierste, like the mountains. So here you got your revelation, eh? the book of Revelation. Here you got it. It's really hard to find anything on it in English. So this is in German. It says the election of the king. And here it says the seven Kurfürsten, like the mountains. Hey? And there are three ecclesiastical ones and four worldly ones. You know, like the king of Brandenburg. And here are some dukes and all this. And these are like cardinals and whatever. So... And it says here the Pope was not included in the um, in the election of the King of the Holy Roman Empire. And again, the numbers three and four, you know, square and compass. So here it says in English about the Prince Electors in German here. In here it says German Kurfürst or Kurfürsten. And you just saw it in Old German, it's written with CH, just like in Swiss and just like the mountains, which really is a reference to the, um, the hills being at the same time seven kings, just like in the book of Revelations. So you can read it yourself here. And here it says, you know, the elect electoral college is known to have existed by 1152. But it's, oh, okay, anyway. Um, a letter written by Pope Urban IV, suggests by immem immemorial custom, seven princes. So you see, even the ecclesiastical ones, they are princes. So it's really a seven kings. Because the, the whole, you know, the whole church, both the Catholic church as the Protestant church, it all comes out of the nobility. So the, the uh, even... Here, the Archbishop of Mainz, the Archbishop of Trier, the Archbishop of Cologne, they're all princes. So the seven princes had the right to elect the king and future emperor. The Pope wrote that the seven electors were those who had just voted in the election. So they, they kept the Pope out of it. So, you know, it's already going in, in the way of the New World Order and Protestantism. Um, where, whereas actually um, many believe that the only Christian religion is, um, is, is the, the Catholic religion, which is um, uh, like the, the, the religion and really connected to the aristocracy. But it's, it, it is a bit strange because, I mean, the archbishop, it, it's all Catholic, so. But, but they're all like, you know, taken over in the other camp like so the yeah, three ecclesiastical electors the archbishop of mainz interesting symbol the archbishop of trier and the archbishop of, of cologne looks like the uh, teutonic knights eh? and then four secular electors the king of bohemia the Counts Palatine of the Rhine, there, the Palatines, yeah, remember, Obama is from there, and uh, Trump, his father, the Duke of Saxony, and the Margrave of Brandenburg. It also says there, the King of Brandenburg in some places, like it has a crown on, on the eagles or the, the, bird, the, the, the falcon's head. It's a falcon. And... Um, so three and four, the concept of three and the concept of four. So, you know, it's already going the direction of new world order here and the um, and Freemasonry with the Pope being uh, uh, being avoided and was not in it. Um, 
interesting period. So maybe because um, you know the, the the religion was here already taken over, you know. So maybe also like because of that, you know, it's been talked about in like in the Bible, you know. Because here the religion is already going sideways, you know. and of course completely taken over by the uh, nobility. Oh, here it says. The Elector of Mainz was always a Roman Catholic and Cologne a Roman Catholic, except Hermann V von Wied, he was Lutheran, and the Elector of Bohemia uh, was usually a Roman Catholic. The Elector of Brandenburg was also the Duke of Prussia. Hey, Mr. Putin, the Duke of Prussia, hey? Eh? and a Roman Catholic, and then he became a Lutheran, and then became re Reformed. And, uh, well, you read it yourself. Anyway, there's seven. Seven princes. Seven kings, yes. The hills that are also seven kings. A lot of interesting coat of arms by the nobility. And so here it says again in German, also Wikipedia, Kurfürsten, yeah. And um, here it says, ein Kurfürst war einer der ursprünglich sieben Ranghörsten, Fürsten des Heiligen Römischen Reiches. Sieben, it means seven. There's seven of them. And uh, here you can see them, there's another picture. So three ecclesiastical and uh, four secular like uh, ordo seclorum you know, like on the dollar that's the word secular is coming from that there's some other pictures oh yeah this is uh, in Mainz the seven kings and here also some in Nuremberg the church and every day at 12 o'clock it says uh the seven princes they you know they go around here they, it's turning here when it's seven o'clock so important error seven around it you know <laughs> the way he's looking eh? With the Templars cross around his neck, eh? Or the Maltese cross. You know, if you don't understand history, you're never going to understand anything what's going on today, eh? So, well, you can read it yourself. Kurfürsten. The seven Swiss hills were also seven kings. There's no other place in the entire world where you can find that, right? Eh? And there are more connections, which I'm going to show you. And here it says in German, alle sieben Kurfürsten or Kurfürsten, refer referring this time to the mountains here. Sieben, it's seven, it's almost the same word, eh? And alle, it's all. If you take the the e away, it says all seven Hoerfersten, referring to the mountains, and the same word as I've shown you just before, uh, referring to the uh, the seven prince electors, or in fact seven kings. So in German, the name is Kurfürsten for the Swiss Hoerfersten, and gave name to the most famous street in Germany. The three and a half kilometers long Kurfürstendamm in Berlin, also called the Kudamm. So here it says the uh, the Kurfürstendamm, uh, also called Kudamm, is one of the most famous avenues in Berlin, well, in the whole of Germany, I tell you. 
The street takes its name from the former Kurfürsten, the Prince Electors. Oh, there they are again. There you are. Of Brandenburg. And Brandenburg, uh, one of the, uh, the King of Brandenburg, which is part of Berlin, why well, he was one of the, uh, the seven Prince Electors. So that's why the street is there. The broad long boulevard can be considered the Champs Elysees of Berlin and is lined with shops, houses, hotels, and restaurants. In particular, many fashion designers have their shops there, as well as several car manufacturer, manufacturer showrooms. So it's, a, it's an expensive, very famous street in the whole of Germany, where all the tourists go and all this. And you can see all the luxury boutiques, you know, Chanel, Cartier, you know, whatever, Rolex, Saint Laurent. Right, so you've got an idea. It's still the same stuff. It's all about kings and princes and the shops. Uh, well, they're still marked by this. Well, of course, the princes and the uh, the princes of um, of of Prussia and all that. They they'll still visit it, of course. Kurfürstendamm, Kudam. The word first in German means an aristocrat or an aristocratic ruler or a lord or an emperor. And the word Kur means to select or choose, as still being used in the Afrikaner word Koring in South Africa. I hope I pronounced that right. It's too long ago since I, uh, I've heard Afrikaans and uh, I was still a child, you know, so I think pronounce something like coring or coring. I'll show it to you in a minute. Maybe somebody can help me. So here's about the etymolo etymology in, uh, in German. And here it says Kurfürst, like the Kurfürsten. And of course, Fürst, it means a... Um, yeah, the German king, the Deutsche König. Einer der Fürsten, die berechtigt waren, der, den Deutschen König zu wählen. And here's some more about the um, etymology. Yeah, here's Kur and Kur. And here it says in NL, I think that's Dutch, Netherlands. It says Kor, like in South Africa. Which is like Kur, Kurfürsten, you know. Uh, also Swedish, it says Kur and Kur. And um, even in in uh, Ang Anglo-Saxon, there's the old word sire, sire or, or Kire. I don't know how to pronounce that. And here in German, Auserkoren, it means the chosen ones, like like God's chosen people or something. They say aus erkoren. You see, there's the, there's the part kor or kur, like in kurfürsten. So they are selected. So, yeah, aus erkoren, it means selected, chosen, the chosen people, you know. And here's some more. It's the etymology in German about the word kurfürsten. Most German people don't even know what it means. And certainly not the Swiss. And here it says in Afrikaans for the word here, coring. Here it says coring, it means selection, testing, like selecting the king, the core, like this part here, core. The core uh, first, it's the same origin, and it means the same. So, Hochfürsten means the imperial prince electors, who might be even so-called minor kings. Like here in 1340, the king of Bohemia being one of the seven Hochfürsten or Kurfürsten, or the seven hills that are also seven kings, were also the clergy are being considered as kings, as all the archbishops being the Hochfürsten, or Lord Electors, 
of 1340. Here there are again three ecclesiastical ones and four secular ones. And um, here it says, the imperial prince electors left to right, the archbishop of Cologne. The part arch, in fact, it comes from the Greek archos, and it means to rule, like Joan of Arc, um, arc-en-ciel in, in French, it means a, a rainbow, in fact, because arc is also a bow. Arc de triomphe, you know, the, um, the, um, the, you know, the thing in, in Paris, which is the, it means the, uh, the triumph of ruling, Arc de triomphe. So the second one here is the Archbishop of Mainz, Archbishop of Trier, Count Palatine here. The Duke of Saxony, the Margrave, Mar, it comes from Mer, and it means pyramid in, um, in demotic language and grave. So the grave of the pyramid or the grave in the pyramid of Brandenburg. And here the king of Bohemia, and this is from 1340. As I've told you many times, all popes, cardinals and archbishops come out of the nobility considered being the kings of religion by the aristocracy as i've shown you here in this video about the alsatian pope leon whose parents were the count and countess living in a castle catholicism belongs to the old world order feudal vertical nobility whereas protestantism belongs to the republican horizontal new world order knights templars and their freemasons so here it says pap it means pope in french alsatian you know in english is just a t and an a the, it means that the the great alsatian pope Saint Leon the Ninth. Uh, his real name was Bruno Degisheim. De it means he's of the nobility, like von in German. Fils du Comte it means the son of a count, and of uh, Hugues the Fourth, and uh, Heil Heilwige de Dabo. You can't read it here, but. You have to, yeah, you can read it. It's just the uh, Heil, Heil, uh, like, uh, or, you know, Heil Wiege, Heil Wiege de Dabo. De, again, you know. So, nobility, you know, d just like the, the seven prince electors. So, you can see this here, my video from this year, June, the 14th of June, 2022 on my channel Gure, the title Catholicism belongs to Pharaoh's vertical rule, Protestantism is by the Templars horizontal rule. The concept of three and four, just like the seven prince electors. It's it's all by Pharaoh people. That's why normally Catholics hate Freemasons because Freemasons represent the new horizontal rule and enemy of the old vertical rule of ancient kings and their Catholic religion. But well, nowadays the Vatican and the Catholic religion have been infiltrated by the Freemasons anyway. How could it be else with a Swiss guard out of the Alpine octagon and base of the Knights Templars and their Freemasonic political wing? These seven Swiss apocalyptic hills 
of the seven kings are very high and over 2,000 meters in altitude. But when standing on them, they are like hills with hardly 100 meters difference in height. So here you see them, all seven are here. Zulun, 2,204 meters. Frumzel, 2,263 meters. Only 60 meters difference. That's a hill. Brizi, 2,279 meters. It's only 70 meters difference with this one. Tushtol, 2,235 meters. No difference. Schiebenstoll, 2,234 meters. Hinterug, 2,306 meters. And Gazerug, 2,262 meters. Now, compared to them, to each other, they're like hills. And Gorfürste, that's the name of the king, of kings. The kings that are hills. You could say... They are seven hills on top of a mountainous ridge. And below the seven hill ridge, there is a big lake called the Wallensee, meaning the lake of the whales. Maybe a whale with seven heads. Huh? Anyway, must be a deep lake if they can fit a whale in there so this is the lake of the whales Walensee. in german they call a lake the sea einsee and the uh the sea they call das meer and here you can see the seven hill mountain ridge from another angle and uh, so these are the seven hills who were also seven kings from the uh, book of revelation everything is here the only place in the world so here you can see Walensee, the lake you see zee like sea it's the other way around Walensee, the uh, lake of the whales and here is Walenstadt, the town of the whales Maybe that the ships here, the whale catchers. And here it says, Gorfersten, after the seven prince electors who were kings and who selected a new king. So here's the seven hill mountain ridge, like in the book of Revelations. And here you can see the seven hill kings once more. You see, there's seven of them, and they're like hills compared to each other. And here's the lake, the lake of the whales. It's a picture like straight out of a James, out of a James Bond movie. You know, clean, rich Switzerland with a lot of evil rulers, just like in the James Bond movie. This is where Putin has his money, where all the dictators, all the drug dealers, all the mafiosi, aristocracy, you name it, mafia, they all have their money here. Just like in the James Bond movie, with the snow and all. And so picturesque, isn't it now? And here, once more, here's the lake, Walensee, and here are the seven hill mountains, who are also kings. And the name of the kings is Gorfersten, Kurfersten, in German, of the Holy Roman Empire, which in fact still exists. And on these seven hills used to be sitting an almost mythical woman, after whom the whole area is being named, and this woman is an international reference 
to Switzerland. So here you can see the mountains, the Seven Hill Mountains. And here it says, Heidi, every little girl's favorite story. You know, nice. And she has a pet animal and lovely mountain. And look how it's clean. And she has cats and rabbits and a rainbow. Well, isn't it lovely? This is how they do it, people. They indoctrinate our children, like every little girl's favorite story, about how clean and neutral and innocent this country is. Octagon in the Alps. So when these children, they grow up, it's the same with all these, you know, fairy tales about princes and princesses in castles. And when the girlies, when they grow up, they still believe it, you know, because in their minds, they were in their blank minds, you know, where there was nothing in it yet, a little girly, you know, they got punched in their minds and hearts, you know, how, how what, what a lovely place that is in the mountains, like, and nobody will think any harm of it, you know, like, Oni Swaki Malipons, nobody will think harm of it. And the woman in those days, sitting at the Alm, the Alm is this, on top of the mountains, that's the Alm. And she was sitting at the Alm on top of the seven hill kings. She was still a child. But the child has grown up now. Especially in the mythical, symbolical sense of her being. And her name is Heidi. So here you can read it. Day trip to Heidi land and Liechtenstein. The highlights of this amazing adventure tour are Switzerland's incredible diversity and a visit to the locations featured in the world famous children's book Heidi. Well, how dare you indoctrinate our innocent children with this, with these lies. And I t I'm, I'm going to prove to you, this woman who wrote, uh, Johanna Spiri, who wrote the book, she had really evil connections. The, the whole thing is evil. You know? So here's the lake, the Lake of the Wales. Here are the seven king hills here, the, um, the Hoerfürsten, Kurfürsten, or Kurfürsten. And, um, here you can read more about it here. Yeah. Well, you can read this yourself here. But here it says the alternative program during the winter months takes in the village of Vandenberg a fabulous world of mountains, valleys, lakes, waterfalls, and gorge. Isn't it beautiful? The route back to Zurich leads along Lake Wallen, the, uh, the lake of the whales at the foot of the majestic Horfurst and mountain chain. There they are. The hills are kings. How many more proofs do you need? Wakey, wakey. So here it is. Show you a nice picture. Here, Valen Zee Lake. It says double lake because Zee is already lake. Oh, isn't it beautiful and so clean? And the whole world believes it because we all saw it when we were children. And we never forgot it because we had our blank minds. There was nothing in it yet. They engraved this in our minds. They shoved, shoved it down our throats. Oh, here, Heidi's house. Oh, look at here. It's the mountain ridge. The seven hills of the seven hill kings. This is from the book. Here, Heidi lived and... Uh, all that, all the Japs are going, all the tourists and taking pictures and Americans. Oh, isn't it lovely? Oh, it's like going back into my youth, visiting the Heidi house. Oh, isn't it nice? Yeah. Yeah. Look now, here are the mountains here, Heidi and Peter. Oh, what a lovely story! Eh? Oh, look, she's sitting on top of the mount of the seven hills. Believe me now. Yeah, look, Heidi Land. They got the whole stuff here, Heidi Land. Here, the, the Seven Hill Mountains here. 
This is the uh, Honzo Oak Rosales, um, most probably. I'm talking German here. Yeah, Rapperswil Castle. Yeah, of course, they have to show a castle. Yeah, why not? And one of the Russian oligarchs is here, Khodorkovsky. Big criminal, big time criminal. He's pretending to be against Putin. Or maybe he never even was in prison. Who knows, you know? Just taking care of Putin's money in Switzerland. You know, everything is a lie. You know, you never know. And uh, yeah, I'll show you this picture again. The uh, yeah. Yeah, the violence, it must be very deep. Look, it looks very deep. Enough to put, to, to fit a whale or two in there, you know. Or maybe seven, with seven heads. And the land of the seven hill kings is officially called Heidi Land. The land of Heidi, an international acknowledged symbol for Switzerland and the Alps with its seven hill kings. With their CERN, Davos, WEF, World Economic Forum, the enslavement of humanity, the Swiss Holderman dynasty, and their connecting a human brain to a computer with a chip in their head right out of the book of revelations and also connected to Heidi land and its seven hill kings with their united nations and red cross gangsters in geneva and all nations traded with her swiss banks swissy playtime's over now here, Swissy, read this very, very well with your Heidi land. Swissy, read this. Playtime's over now. You're here. And I told you many times that Switzerland is feminine, like La Suisse in French or Die Schweiz in German. Because of the sisters of Isis, Su Is. Sir Dizis, short Heidi Land. Okay, Heidi was a five year old child in the book, but she has grown up now and rules the world. And here you can see in the picture our children sleeping after having been indoctrinated with that Heidi political indoctrination of a clean, neutral and innocent Switzerland. Remembering this all their lives, until, even until they have grown up. And this story of Heidi is hiding the true face of the beast with the seven heads in this horrendous horror story and under the seven hill kings there is an occult temple called the Bax Mal it is Bax Mal where next to the temple and its apocalyptic seven hills to be seen in the background in the city of the Wales or Wallenstadt, the dreadfully innocent Heidi open air musical is being performed, visibly dancing and celebrating in the very same style as the satanic Swiss tunnel ritual of the Saint Gotthard. Heidi's creepy open air musical with the apocalyptic Seven Hill Kings behind. Another creepy Swiss ritual straight out of the Book of Revelations. And 
where many Swiss neo-Nazis come and enjoy the show in their Heideland base of the Nazi Templars. Well, let's hope the whale in the Lake of Wales, Valensee, gets hungry and eats the creepy Heidi dolls and the entire horror country with it together with their seven hill kings so watch this name here johanna spiri and uh, she married bernard spiri an employee when she was 25 they met when they when they were children they lived in zurich switzerland and had only one child a son bernhard diethelm spiri in 1855 in Zurich, they were friends with the musician Richard Wagner. And here she is, Johanna Spiri, standing with the grail. Yeah. And I know, as I've been telling you in the um, in my first film, The Pharaoh Show, already 12 years ago on YouTube, that the grail is the symbol of um, of pharaoh which means our blood is here our descendants are here and this is the joining i've shown that as well you know that means we're all together you know it consists of several parts it says one for all and, and all for one so i know this woman you know she's part of the elite and uh part of pharaoh i mean there's no doubt. So Johanna Spiri was the author of Heidi in the 19th century. And she was a close friend of Richard Wagner, the favorite Nazi composer and active jaywalker hater living in Switzerland. So Johanna Spiri the author of Heidi, the girl on the Seven Hill Kings, was in the Wagner group, so to speak, that popped up recently again, with its leader, the Swiss sleeper agent, President Vladimir Putin, who has all his money in Switzerland, where his charming little family lives in Geneva. His wife, Alina Kabayeva, with their two little Putin kids. From the Swiss Heidi, circle closed and back to Switzerland in the actual situation. I guarantee you that the Wagner Group belongs to the octagon of Switzerland and their banks in the very style of the notorious Swiss mercenaries under Nazi Templar command. And the Swiss Nazi Templar Wagner Group will attack Russian civilians very soon just as they al have already done attacking Ukrainian civilians and killing them and torturing them, and just as they have already done with normal Russian soldiers, because the Wagner group is not Russian at all. They are Swiss octagon of the Teutonic Knights just as their leader, whom you can see here, who is called the Black Prince by the Swissies. Just like the French Foreign Legion, another mercenary group that was also founded by the Swiss Octogon in 1831, with its first commander, the Swiss 
aristocratic Baron Colonel von Stoffel. So here's the list of commanders of the Foreign Legion. And all these mercenary groups, it all comes of, out of Octogon, Switzerland, and their Nazi Templars. And it's all related to Heidi, who was a personal friend, the author of the, um, the Nazi composer, Richard Wagner and the Wagner group and everything, you know. Here it says, April the 1st in 1832, um, there was the, uh, the first commander of the, um, of the Foreign Legion here, the commander of the Old Legion. It was Baron Christoph Anton von Stoffel, a Swiss Baron, yeah, here from Switzerland. It's, and this is because Switzerland was founded by the Nazi Templars. And the same of, of the, the Wagner group, you know, and Putin. It all boils down to Switzerland. Hey, Swissy, ain't that so? Yeah, look, there are many Wagner groups in the world. Here's one. And here, the Wagner Group of New South Wales. It's everywhere. Wagner Group in Queensland. Why do they put the Q like this? Because this is the, the Order of the Garter. We know that now. The Wagner Society of, of Washington. Everywhere. They're all Wagner Groups. They all have these funny ideas, ideas probably. Yeah, there's more. Yeah, the Royal Wagner stuff. The Wagner Group of Southern California. All this pharaonic stuff in it here. Uh, the Triangle Wagner Group of North Carolina, of course. You know, this is the concept of three, you know, pyramid. Uh, Everywhere, the, the, lots of Wagner groups all over the world, and don't you think they're they're not connected with the idea? Hey? Don't you think that Switzerland, the Octagon in the Alps, also called Heidi Land by the Swiss and the insiders, is an incredibly creepy place where the evil of this world is bundled, concentrated, and centralized, weighing heavy on humanity's shoulders as the weight of the seven king hills of the apocalypse. It's all there in Heidi land, the clean and innocent monster, the monster doll of seven times king of neutrality. How big do you think the chances are to find these seven hills relating to seven kings with a woman sitting on it and with a lake next to it called the Lake of Wales, out of which the monster might rise? if not the other lake next to CERN Geneva. Please forgive me that I'm not religious enough for most of you, or for not being religious at all. For I have only one religion, which is called Crush the Evil. The seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits. They are also seven kings. The beast who once was and now is not is an eighth king. He belongs to the seven 
and is going to his destruction. Сейчас вот это то, что многие политики называют мировое правительство, силы Запада, там как Жириновский, мировое за кулисы, это есть. И сейчас, начиная со времен древнего Египта, вот эта мафия, которая управляет процессами на планете Земля, она мигрировала, и сейчас ее основная штаб-квартира это Швейцария. Кстати, вот информация к размышлению многие. Зрители наверняка смотрели фильм «17 мгновений весны» про Штирлиц. Если там помните, вот вся Европа полыхала в пожарах войны, а доктор Плечнер кормил лебедей в Женевском озере и спрашивает, если фюрер был такой лихой и малый, то почему бы ему не взять и не грабануть швейцарские банки? Там же ведь деньги, золото лежало, а Гитлер туда не пошел. То есть Швейцария была неприкосновенной. Почему? Да потому что Гитлер прекрасно понимал, что в Швейцарии находятся его хозяева. И весь победный марш Гитлера по Европе был ничем иным, как сдача ему под единое руководство всего людского, промышленного и военного потенциала Европы для броска на СССР. А зачем? А дело в том, что осуществляя вот эту самую глобализацию, вот эти глобализаторы, они подвели человечество к глобальному системному кризису. И ее уже мы продаем, я вот помню маленьким мальчиком, то есть я из-под крана запросто воду пьешь, и в общем никаких проблем. А теперь из-под крана вряд ли кто воду пьет, даже детишки уже не пьют. Они знают, бутылочки надо покупать, продавать там, из них водичку пить. Следующая проблема вот в этом смысле, чтобы представить ее, как она решается. Вот представьте, мы та самая мафия. Мы живем в Швейцарии. Вот. А в Чернобыле как жахнуло, как говорил Петруха, помните, в белом солнце в пустыне. И радиоактивный облачко может до нас докатиться, и с неба дождичек может покапать. Here you can see Ramzan Kadyrov, Putin's puppet in the Caucasus, also called the Caucasia. And he's deliberately showing Pharaoh's sun hieroglyph, transmitting to the rest of Pharaoh's nobility where he belongs to. So this is the sun hieroglyph or hieroglyph here this thing here with a bar on each side i revealed the sun glyph and its use to the world in my film the pharaoh show which got deleted by youtube under pressure by the swiss when youtube deleted my entire channel with 350 videos. But I had made a copy on my channel, Gatsafrats, still to be seen here. So here you see the, the sun hieroglyph, the same as uh, Kadyrov he's showing to the world. It's, it's all the same, and here on an old building in Switzerland. And uh, there's the entire title, and here is the channel where it can be seen on, and where it's being explained what it means, what the use is. This summer of 2022, I spent some time with some nice Chechnyans who invited me for a barbecue at a French lake, and they told me that Ramzan Kadyrov is not Chechnyan at all because there are no traces to be found on his Chechnyan ancestry which all Chechnyans are supposed to be able to confirm 
unto the seventh generation back into their individual family lineages and there's absolutely nothing on this guy except that he likes to show pharaoh's son hieroglyph and the octagon like here on his military style cap because the octagon group is the top of an ancient military order called the Nazi Templars based in Switzerland where he undoubtedly has all his money on the Swiss Altaqua Bank founded by the Octogon's Swiss Grey Eminences François Genoux whom you can see here in this video and who was a personal friend of Adolf Hitler and Heinrich Himmler and co-founded by Ahmed Hans Huber, a converted Swiss Muslim who in 2002 came and threatened me and my family in the company of some other very dangerous man including one Arab in the group. So here you can see Ahmed Hans Huber and this is Jean-Marie Le Pen and here it says the Al-Taqwa Bank. And you can find this in this video here on my other channel. And uh, there are three Hubers, you know, there's um, J. Edgar Hoover Huber and this one here, the Ahmed Hans Huber and the American president um, Herbert Hoover, real name Huber, all Swissies. And here you can see Kadyrov again, showing the sun hieroglyphics with octagon of the Nazi Templars on his breast, where his heart is supposed to be. He's wearing a red shirt as a reference to the Pertasser Red House of Pharaoh of Lower Egypt and its vertical Old World Order. So here you see the octagon on his Red Old World Order shirt at the place where his heart should be. And again here the, the sun glyph of the pharaohs. In Ramzan Kadirov's name, there's Ra in Ramzan for Egypt's sun god Amun Ra. And there's Ka, the living soul, according to Pharaoh in his last name, Kadirov in Pharaoh's Demotic language. And yes, Ramzan Kadyrov, the ruler of Chechnya, is in fact behaving as a pharaoh, just as his pal, Mr. Putin, is. So here you can see the palace with two huge obelisks here, and here in white probably another two. It looks a bit like the Vatican, all this. Yeah? And here are four things here for the concept of four, and they're round. And round is the concept of three for the compass. So it's, it all says square and compass and pharaonic stuff. And Ka Dirov Ra Ramzan. And the name Ramzan reminds us, of course of the name Ramses the Great, same beard. And here you can see Ramzan's pal, Pharaoh Putin here, with all these symbols in this pharaonic palace. You see, here's the circle for the compass in a square, so it says square and compass. 
here you can see that here and here's an octagon in the square you know the square is us and octagon is defending against us from us and usually the circle should be then in the middle in a lot of uh, symbols they're showing but anyway it's showing both here they're all they're all pharaohs it's all the arist pharaohs aristocracy ramses and, and putin the black prince so watch this picture here very careful here lies chechnya and compare this with the picture coming next after this one so this whole area and a little bit going up here to the left was called in a certain time in history Kazaria. Ramzan Kadyrov is not a real Chechnyan, and the Islamic Republic of Chechnya lies where once was the empire called Kazaria, about which Nazis and the branch of fascist Muslims inside Islam talk a lot about. As the Mongolian rulers of Khazaria forced a jaywalker state religion upon their inhabitants, because these aristocratic rulers of Khazaria were out of a direct line of jaywalker kings like King David or King Solomon, who were all, of course, out of Pharaoh's nobility, with King Solomon even married to the daughter of Pharaoh, which even stands in the Bible. So about here lies Chechnya in the middle of the of Kazaria, and therefore it's pretty weird that some Islamo fascists sort of trying to say that um, the Muslims here and, and more, it's all over Muslims here, that they are in fact uh, jaywalkers. It's really weird. So the whole thing, you know, it's, uh, it doesn't fit what Nazis say. And the name Kazaria consists of the Egyptian demotic Ka for soul. Here you can read it, Ka. And Tsar for king of Pharaoh, here, Tsar, like the Tsars in Russia. You know, I think the Americans write it like this. In English, it's T S A R. In American, it's Z A R. Americans have a thing with the Z anyway, you know, like um, to recognize, for example, in American it's with a Z or a Z, as they say. In English it's with an S. So, well, that's the colonies, I suppose, eh? And so, Ka for the soul, Sa for the king or pharaoh. Ri, it means the sun, yeah, Ri. And A, it means big or pregnant ka zar ri a so kazaria means the souls of pharaonic kings were born here under the sun meaning that pharaoh ruled over kazaria and just chose judaism for the empire's religion just as King Pharaoh Solomon marrying the daughter of Pharaoh and having Judaism as his state religion, just as it happened in Kazaria. And here it says in the Bible here, King Solomon made an alliance with Pharaoh, the king of Egypt and married one of his daughters. The pharaonic rulers of Kazaria could just as well have chosen 
another Middle Eastern religion, like Christianity or Islam, because it's all the same, basically. Here are all the three monotheistic religions. This is what they have in common, or some of the things. It's all about one God, whatever that means. It's all about Abraham as uh, an ancestor, or well, he's not my ancestor. And it's all about Moses and a lot of other things they have in common. All these three pharaonic religions are out of the Middle East and are not suitable for white race Europeans nor for Asians. They used to burn women, you know, only because they said like Christianity is not European. And they say witch and they burned her. You see here all the smoke, she's tied up on the uh, burning her. So in order to have us believe the Europeans, they um, they tortured Europeans, they killed them, they murdered them in order to believe this Middle Eastern religion. And now we are a couple of hundred years later, or a thousand years later, and now the Europeans are completely being replaced by Muslims from uh, Arabia and other places. It's all part of the agenda. And I have to say again, I have nothing against Muslims. I have nothing either against immigration. You just go ahead and do what you want. I think it's quite interesting to talk. I'm just, you know, accumulating the facts. And these are facts. I've got nothing against the other peoples whose name I'm not allowed to pronounce because otherwise my video gets taken off because of the censorship. You know, so I'm only accumulating some facts, that's all. All right? The whole superstitious idea of religion is by Pharaoh to make obedient slaves who honor their kings. That is why religion uses the expression God's flock, whom you can see right here in the middle of Kazaria on the Don River. And Don, in fact, it comes from the uh, J Walker word Adonai, which means the Lord. So that makes sense for Kazaria. So in the middle on the Don River lied the important Kazarian city of Sarkel, which means the White House, as in Pharaoh's bare head of Upper Egypt now related to the New World Order, horizontal republican rule. And in Sarkel, we can see the demotic Tsar for king, pharaoh, like Tsar in Russia, and where Kel obviously derives from Ka, the Egyptian soul, and most likely pronounced Sarka back then, which is in fact Kazar, written backwards, Sarka, as in the Kazar, Kazaria. So here you can see it again, Kazaria and Sarkol, one of the main towns next to Chechnya, and here Crimea, where all the things are going on today. Also is the name of the Kazarian city of Sarkel, very much related to another famous ruler, Sarkozy, the former president of France, and out of a line of Hungarian kings from his father's side, 
and a Jay Walker mother called Andre Muller, probably making the perfect Kazarian combination for the King of France, Sarkozy. Well, the film is not about Sarkozy, but I'll show it to you anyway. And here the family history of Nicolas Sarkozy, the, uh, the former president of France. So his father, Pelle Sarkozy, was born on May the 5th, 1928 in Budapest into a family belonging to the Hungarian nobility. His paternal ancestor was elevated to the untitled nobility of Hungary on September the 10th, 1628 for his role in fighting the armies of the Ottoman Empire. The family possessed 285 hectares of land reduced from an estate of 400 to 800 hectares in the 18th century and a small castle in the village of Atalian near Solnok, east of uh, Budapest. Paul Sarkozy's father and grandfather held effective offices in the city of Solnok, although the Sarkozy Danagi Bosha family was Protestant, Paul Sarkozy's mother Katalin Tod de Zafford, very aristocratic names, and the grandmother of Nicolas Sarkozy belonged to a Catholic noble family. And it, they hide it nowadays, but he's even of a line of kings and has a, a coat of arms and everything. So, and here you can read about his uh, mother, Andre Mala, and uh, who is a jaywalker or who was a jaywalker. And here the uh, Christine de Garnet uh, into the CIA. Uh, his father, Frank Wisner, worked for the Central Intelligence Agency and a predecessor of the OSS the Office of Strategic Services. So, I mean, Hungary is not very far, you know. So Sar Sarkozy and the town Sarkel, I, it rings a bell, doesn't it? So here about the town of Sarkel. Sarkel literally, literally means the White House in Khazar language. So, well, then we know enough, don't we now, eh? The White House. So you can read it all by yourself. And actually the Khazaria extended all the way to uh, to modern day's uh, Kiev in, um, in, uh, in the Ukraine. So again, the people of Khazaria were no jaywalkers, only their Mongolian rulers were of jaywalker nobility of pharaonic origin and i'll read it for you a new fierce force of mixed race calling themselves Khazars, invaded from the east and forced the bulgars into bulgaria the Khazars were made up of mongolian arab and old european elements and began by occupying land east of the Dniestr River by 650 AD. The people are just the slaves of Pharaoh's nobility back then and still today. And when the masters say, this will be your new religion, with the invisible slave master watching you all the time. Then the slaves have no other choice than to accept the new state religion, just as the Europeans were forced to accept Christianity as the new state religion, and just as the Khazars, the people, had to accept Judaism as their new state religion. The people did not have any other choice because Pharaoh rules the world wherever you go. So here on the Khazarian map, we can see the old city of Kiev included in Khazaria. 
where now King Zelensky I is pharaoh over Ukraine, who of course is not just an ordinary jaywalker. Because ordinary jaywalkers do not become kings or presidents, ordinary jaywalkers have to work just as the rest of humanity. It's very likely that the Erev Rav and Pharaoh's magicians and priests were in Khazaria, pushing the Mongolian rulers to convert to Judaism. But the Khazarian people, jaywalkers? No, definitely not. Now watch this item he's having in his hands here. I'm going to show that in a minute in the hands of a Ukrainian ruler from many hundreds years ago. So back to Kyiv in the Ukraine. Who is President Zelensky? Just a normal jaywalker who became president? No, such a thing doesn't exist anywhere in the world not even in the holy land and home base of the jaywalkers in the middle east the jaywalker people rule themselves because it's the pharaonic nobility that rules over the holy land as well sorry i can't pronounce the name of that country due to the censorship of our global dictatorship. Even Zelensky in this picture seems to be asking himself, now where does this royal scepter come from? I've never seen this in my entire life. So you all think that Zelensky I is really that surprised like pretending to have the royal scepter in his hands for the first time in his life. Oh, don't forget, the guy is an actor. He's a professional actor. And after President Yanukovych, Ukraine needs a man from and for the people to avoid a next Maidan uprising. With the president running back to Russia with his tail between his legs. But I tell you, the blue tie he wore here in this picture and on the day of his presidential inauguration with the scepter, the blue tie refers to Pharaoh's blue war crown, transmitting to the rest of Pharaoh's aristocratic world leaders that he wants war for the Ukrainian people. Because a united people that chases away their president is a potential danger to Pharaoh's rule and cannot be accepted. They need to be punished and given a serious reset. So what's going on with Zelensky's royal scepter? Where does it come from and why the importance? First of all, it's the same ones ruling over us since 2000 years, using the same symbols and same power grid of their pharaonic ancestors. The same Zelensky hammer here and here in the hands of Pharaoh and the ancient Egyptians. And here, 
we can see the same Zelensky hammer used to bash someone's head in and force the commoners into submission. Let's call it Pharaoh's Submission Club or Zelensky's Submission Hammer. Here it is. Zelensky here in his old dress like before with his hammer. Same tool. Wakey wakey. Our rulers are real gangsters using a baseball bat. And by the way, baseball is a pharaonic Freemason game anyway, with four balls and three strikes. For the concept of four and three, saying square and compass. And that's why all the rulers show themselves with a baseball bat and they know it it's a big club it is the club and you ain't in it like the famous comic said let's be serious what's a politician in parliament doing with a baseball bat now where's the link and look at the baseball field with the obvious square here and a circle at the end of the freemason lawn you see here's a square and at the end there's a circle it says square and compass all over here's another circle and here's another circle with three things squares in it three squares for the concept of three and the squares the concept of four and here's even a sort of an octagon an octagon it says square and compass all over it's a freemason game played by the people then the referee called umpire because the game is about their empire the referee is in black and the nine players in white as in a masonic checkerboard configuration and baseball has nine players as a reference for the original nine templars and the nine gods of Pharaoh's Aeneid. So here you can see the square game again, and this is a quarter of a, of a circle actually. It's, it's a Freemason game, it's a Pharaonic game of our masters, played by the slaves who are playing like on a Freemason checkerboard field in a lodge. Here you can see the basic four ball, three strike baseball rules. If you want to hit the ball, three strikes and you're out. And four balls, and you can walk. Over the fence is a home run. You got the square again. And now you all know why Zelensky is signing baseballs in his spare time which he really does this is very serious dear people they are all transmitting messages to each other it says this is the uh, the permanent mission of ukraine to the united nations with pharaoh's symbol here which i'm going to explain to you in a minute and here it says, Dear Mr. Kaplan, please find enclosed a baseball signed by the President of the Ukraine, H.E., was that Her, His Majesty or something? 
Mr. Volodymyr Zelensky during the visit to New York in September 2019. With this, I would like to wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Well, we all know what kind of an endeavors these are. Eh? We all know this now. Eh? Yeah, the Templars cross as usual with a circle in the middle for the, uh, the compass and the concept of four all around it. It also says square and compass, already explained it to you. So now you know why this guy, he's signing baseballs. Why would a president sign a bloody baseball? Eh? Doesn't make any sense, does it now? And what does it have to do with the United Nations, a baseball? I mean, yeah, it's round. It's maybe it's, it's the earth or the, it's global or... Well, I just explained to you why. It's the concept of three and four, nine players for the nine original pharaonic gods, the Ennead, black and white for the players and the empire. It's, it's all over. And he knows it. He knows it. He's just an actor, people. Wakey, wakey. Our pharaonic masters of Pharaoh's nobility are all transmitting messages while the dumb slaves have no idea whatsoever. Let's have a look at the uh, list of uh, Ukrainian rulers, which you can see here. This is the list of Ukrainian rulers and see if we can find Zelensky's presidential hammer. Well, let's scroll down a little in history and to the 17th century Ukraine, which is the time when the Swiss migrated into the Ukraine, uh, which I explain to you later. So you can just punch pause if you want to have a look. I mean, you know, it's only through history you can understand what's going on today. It's not possible otherwise. So I do it like this. So then you can punch pause. Want to have a closer look? Okay, where was it? In the 17th century. It's a long list. A lot of things going on there. You know, we never heard anything about Ukraine and all that. You know, they they hid it from us. You know, oh look, there it is. Zelensky, Zelensky's hammer to bash the Ukrainian people with, and his blue war tie. So here it is. Here's the same hammer. There we go. We find it. Eh? Look at this. And here too, the different rulers. So, and, uh, and, and, and look at the hammer's coat of arms showing a Templar's cross, like this one here. Showing a Templar's cross in the colors of the Swiss flag with a white object on a red underground in the red and white colors of the Knights Templars. The white symbol shows two Templar Vs. You see, these are two Templar Vs. Here's one, and here's the other V. It was also part of their secret uh, language. And imagine flipping the right V upside down and then move it underneath the left V. You will get the perfect Swiss cross in white on a red underground. So we leave this left one here 
And you see, this is the top side and the right side of the Swiss cross, going a little bit, not to the top, but a little bit to the, to the left. Then we take this one and we flip it so we can put, um, like if we put this corner like here and flip it, then this side will be over here. And this side will going down, which will make a perfect Swiss cross. Do you see it? So, and also each of the uh, rulers with the Zelensky hammer show the two Osiris feathers on their Ushanka. There it is. This is the almost like the Oshanka, Ushanka, which is the Russian, like the, the, the Soviet cap. And here the same two feathers as Osiris and also like Indians have. And here we got the Zelensky hammer, you know. And I told you before, this thing, I'll show it to you later, you know, was Pharaoh was keeping it. And he's got a little dagger or something. And uh, so the Ushanka is a typical Russian head to keep your head warm. And even in the Templar era of the 13th century, King Leo I had the Zelensky hammer, which I'm going to show you now. First, I'll show you the other dudes. So you see, it's exactly the hammer. Eh? There we go. Eh? And it comes from Pharaoh, which I just showed you. As I've been telling you for years, everything comes from Pharaoh. Yeah, the other dude as well was a little bit different. They didn't have much more money, you know, so they just made a little ball. <laughs> and, um, but the best one is the first one. Yeah. The first one was the best one. But there are also the two feathers here. Eh? Well, they're not uh, ostrich feathers, but um, I mean, it's about the symbol. Eh? And Pharaoh's Osiris does show it, and Indians too. And uh, there's nothing without the reason. So this is really typical, this hammer, exactly this hammer. So and that guy is um, Bodan Kmelnitsky from 1648. When he was elected, you know, just like uh, Zelensky. So 17th century, in the middle of the 17th century. And that's exactly the time the Swissies uh, came to the Ukraine, which I'm going to show you. I already showed that 10 years ago in my videos. So there he is. There's again the hammer. This is Leo I in the 13th century. There's really the Templars era. And that's, again, the same one as the Zelensk hammer and the same necklace around this, uh, his uh, torso here. Yeah, same stuff. So, yeah, he's having the same necklace around his neck. Um, as Zelensky wore on the day, he was crowned at his presidential uh, inauguration. Still the same thing, you know, this is, what is it, 1300, that's uh, you know, more than 700, 750 years ago. Still the same things going on, you know? Does he look like Zelensky? And this is also the same form, things here, like this and here, as uh, Putin, he's showing always behind him in the imperial coat of arms of the Tsars inside the Russian flag. On one side is having a scepter, and on the other side a ball with this here, with one like this and here, which is definitely this, you know. So in red and white, the coat here is in uh, the cloak in red and white. So... I'll put the link, uh, if I won't forget it, in the uh, description. Here you can see Zelensky's good friend, also by the name of Vladimir. 
just as Vladimir Zelensky, we have Vladimir Putin. And he shows the same scepter all the time in the coat of arms of Russia, which is in fact the imperial arms of the house of Romanov, also called the Tsars, meaning that the Tsars are still ruling today. What I've been telling you all these years. Anyway, a scepter is an item by and for kings only. So here you can see the other Vladimir with a here a red tie of the old world's order, the vertical rule, as the Tsars were. Here you see this configuration as the uh, the Ukrainian ruler, Leo, he had on his head with this here, exactly like this. I think there was a Templar's cross as well. So here you see the scepter. And the whole thing is the imperial arms of the Romanovs, of the Tsars. And I already explained that to you, why the double-headed um, falcon, it's not an eagle, it's a falcon, it's only a falcon that stays up in the air like this, and it's a reference to Horus, the falcon. Why double header? Because it's the old world's order to the left and the new world's order combined. They're ruling together now. This is the order of the garter to the right, and here are the, uh, together with the Knights Templars, the order of the garter with the Knights Templars. And here is the uh, the old royalty, you know, or the order of the garter actually keeping it all together, keeping Templars to the right and the old world order of the kings, the feudal system together. So here you see there, there's a crown here of the Knights Templars, and there's a crown here of the old world order, the vertical rule, and then there's a third crown keeping it all together which is the order of the garter, actually. So it's all the same. This is the imperial coat of arms of the Romanov. So you see, here it says the coat of arms of Russia. This is the thing that's put in showing all the time. So, and, um, if we go and have a look at the, um, so I do this again, you punch pause if you want to watch more like this. Yeah, this is in the, so here it says the imperial coat of arms with this thing here and the scepter there. So, and this is the Soviet era where there's nothing of that. So that means we see all these, the coat of arms of the Tsars coming back. And as I've been telling you, we're going slowly or quite quickly, actually, we're going back to a feudal era. Because our masters of the Pharaoh's nobility, they had far more power over the people in the feudal times. And um, I do give them rights. I mean, the slaves are getting arrogant, they're aggressive, they're not happy. Um, I, I do give them rights, of course, in a way, but I don't want to be one of their slaves, you know? And uh, which actually I'm not supposed to be through my family, you know? And um, so this is what Putin is showing all the time, the scepter and this uh, thing here, and St. George, which is also the, the British nobility is having this in the, uh, the order of the garter and, and, uh, and also the Archangel St. Michael. I, uh, I already shown that in a video. Uh, we're going back to feudal times. That's also one of the reasons of the uh, of the Ukraine war, and they're showing their scepters, and they're showing their, they're giving their s signs, transmitting it, and 
lying to us and what a wonderful world. Oh, there we are, the house of Romanov in Egyptian Demotic language, the Per. Per, it means the house, like the word Pharaoh, it comes from Per A, meaning the big house. It's a big royal house all around the world. Uh, here is having a pharaonic sash around his neck here in blue. So he wants war, a sash. And that's why you have a sword and a cannon. Cannon, Peter the Great, he wanted war. Well, they all do. So you just punch, pause if you want. Um, so I'll show you the, uh, the imperial coat of arms. It's interesting, the branches of the Romanov. There's the word Rome in it, of course, Romanov. The Roman Empire, I mean, it's, it's, it's all the same thing. Huh? Now here, the Tsardom of uh, Moscovy, the uh, Saint George, the uh, patron saint of the Knights Templars. So here we got it, here. The imperial arms of the house of Romanov, with and without background shield, which were restricted and used to the emperor and certain members of the imperial family only. So, and Putin is showing all the time the very same thing. And the first time since, since the, the, the Russian Revolution, this is being shown. And uh, we only had a revolution, you know, so they could put in place a new system, the horizontal rule. And within the horizontal rule of the same pharaohs and their nobility, um, they made it, you know, they, they gave some more power to the people, you know, so the people would help them in the new system. But now they don't need the people anymore because it's such a perfect total control system. So slowly we're going back into a feudal, uh, feudal system, vertical rule. We have nothing anymore to say. There's not even liberty of speech. This is nothing. Better just seal your lips. They got these sort of seals and we got to seal our lips, you know. So we see all these symbols all everywhere going, coming back here. In flags and St. George and blue for the war here. I mean, there's a reason why Putin is showing it. You know, this means he's feudal. He's he's a descendant of the of the of the Tsars. You know, I, I I heard Octagon in Switzerland call him the um, the Black Prince. And now I see a lot of black here. It's, Zelensky is keeping it also in his right hand. Have you noticed? I mean. Why didn't he keep it in the other hand? No, no, right hand. He could have signed some documents with the right hand. No, he was keeping it uh, in his right hand. No, he could do some other things with his right hand, but he didn't. It all has a uh, reason. And here we got a, uh, a Muslim sword. Uh, here too. And of course a lion. The coat of arms are very important, people, very important. So the imperial coat of arms uh, and the scepter being shown by the two Vladimirs. And what do we see here? King Charles II of England, Scotland and Ireland in the 1600s here with the order of the garter strapped around his leg yeah showing the exact very same scepter and ball in his hands as the imperial arms of the tsars now shown by tsar putin on the rusky flag now what's going on here brits and Roskies showing the same royal attributes. See, yeah, he's got his garter, the order of the garter, really perverted. 
Yeah, the same thing as, as Vladimir Putin is showing all the time. And here the same thing like in the hat as the Ukrainian king. And also in red here. And here the scepter with a ball as well, you know. She says Zelensky a ball, but it's it's a bit thinner, you know. It probably whips a bit better, like, like you know, a bit longer like this, you know. So this is um, King Charles II of the uh, 1600s. Here you can see the, uh, the uh, Oniswaki Malipans here, the uh, Order of the Garter, with the Knights Templars with the unicorn on this side, the New World Order and the Old World Order with the line, the feudality on the other side. So. If you want to punch, pause, just do so, so you can read it. So the English and the Ruskies and the Ukrainians and, and, and all the rest of them, I'm not going to show it all in this video. They all have the same, this, this, the same coat of arms, like the Imperial coat of arms. Well, and uh, I mean, they were they're one family anyway, which was very clear during the First World War that Tsar Nicholas II, he was a cousin with the English king and 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 a cousin with uh, the Emperor of Germany William II. They're all cousins, having the same coat of arms, and the stupid slaves they're all fighting about it, they're all killing each other, and, and they win, you know. Well. And of course, the whole nobility are out of the same pharaonic bloodlines like Zelensky with his aristocratic scepter. So here you can see the two Vladimirs with their scepter and here you can see the people sticking up their hands. Stick them up. And in the Bible, which is primarily a book about the kings of the Middle East thousands of years ago and how they slaughter entire peoples. It says this about the scepter and of course showing the nobility's lion in the image. I read it for you. The scepter shall not depart from Judah and to him shall be the obedience of the peoples in this place there. So here is the king with a crown and a scepter and a Swiss cross here because the Bible, it's all about kings and ruling over others. So here's the full text and I'll read it for you here. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet until he to whom it belongs shall come and the obedience of the nations shall be his from the genesis chapter in the bible so judah is a kingdom apparently with the king and scepter just as king zelensky with his scepter or his friend, King Putin, also with his scepter. And it says that the scepter will not depart the Pharaonic kingdom of Judah, of King David, whose son, King Solomon, married Pharaoh's daughter. It's all about Pharaoh's. And what the hell is that staff between his feet? A staff between his legs. I mean, the feet are on the legs. In those days, they probably said a staff between his feet. Nowadays, we say a staff between his legs. Now, what is that? Well, I only know of one staff between any man's feet or any man's legs. And a staff is quite erected as well. And only in its erected form, 
the seed of their offspring will procreate. So it says that all of humanity will obey to the house of Pharaonic kings, the Per A, meaning the big house, the etymology of the word Pharaoh. Already in and most of all with the Bible, with its royal scepters and all, they have been working towards this evil total control system unfolding in front of our eyes under cover of some smart Middle Eastern fairy tale book hiding the true nature of these pharaonic kings hiding amongst the sea of peoples or more precisely these pharaonic kings hiding amongst some desert shepherds with donkeys and goats so the local ukrainian nobility they have called the um, zelensky hammer which looks exactly the same as the pharaoh's head they call it the bulava and um, there were some aristocrats of the hetmans here who were having these um, scepter hammers and i find the word het like per het which is the name for the white house of upper e egypt in the name hetman well it sounds a little bit like hitman Hey, Zelensky, a hitman with a Zelensky hammer. And here you can see the other hitman, the other Vladimir hitman, the Putin hitman. In Zelensky, we trust, but be careful, he's probably hiding. The Zelensky hammer here behind the flag, the boulevard. Here's Zelensky and his notorious dancing performance, which you can see in this video here. I'll put the link in the description, which was merely a cynical parody to some Ukrainian pink list killer video which all the Ukrainian people saw and many of the Ukrainians were quite displeased with thus Zelensky becoming their favorite comedian as with this parody he made the pink list killers and their dancing clip look even more ridiculous so it's in fact apparently not Zelensky himself who likes to dress up like well half naked and you know what he did so here you can see the title and it's on this uh ah here's the channel where you can see it but i'll put it in the uh in the description for you so this is the uh, original pink list killer clip i'm not going to show you the hardcore stuff and uh, you know youtube is showing this anyway this sort of stuff you know i mean uh, they have no problem with this showing this to children it should at least be like uh over 18 years old or something what, what they're gonna show here but the whole world is upside down eh? so this was the original pink list killer dance clip uh, on which uh, Zelensky uh, he made a cynical parody so I'll, I'll put it in the description for you anyway 
So I don't, I'm not even one to pronounce this uh, title here. And um, so I think it has been a little bit uh, wrongly presented by people because uh, apparently it was not at all the, the Zelensky dancing clip. It was not at all as um, as it has been interpreted on the um, on YouTube and on the internet. But well, this is all part of the poly tricks and a big setup where the masters have set up a political profile for the next president of the Ukraine, for the Ukrainian people who kicked out their former president in 2014 during the Maidan uprising. So it needed a next president whom everyone would love. And what's better than humor to crack open the defense lines? All this is typical Tavistock planning and anticipating the slaves' minds through social engineering. Zelensky is a typical product of social engineering by the British nobility and the UK-based Tavistock Institute, playing with our minds through hearts and minds psychology and to win the hearts and minds of the subjects. I can guarantee you that Russia's next president will have a similar profile after the Zelensky success on the Ukrainians. And what is also certain that Zelensky wears the crest of Volodymyr the Great, adopted for Ukraine's national seal not very long time ago in 1992 and right after the collapse of the Soviet Empire. And which is also part of the social engineering that for a new idea, a new movement, a new era, it needs a new logo. So here is the new logo for the Ukraine as we've all seen it. Here it says the coat of arms of the Ukraine. And here as well, coat of arms of Ukraine, uh, which has been adopted officially on February 19th, 1992. Uh, so here you can read it. But as you can see already, it's way older than 1992. Way older. So, I guess the Ukrainian people had never seen this royal nobility seal ever before in their lives. Which now, 30 years later from 1992, this new code of arms has been adopted by the dumb slaves of the Ukraine as their own and getting very popular all around the world as a symbol for resistance, justice and freedom which everyone wants to sew on their jackets and have a Ukraine t-shirt with that very symbol. Whereas it's the symbol of their masters standing for obedience to the king, feudal slavery and total control, 
which is, in fact, the aim of the Ukraine war by our pharaonic rulers. Here it says, Volodymyr Zelensky. Here he is. And here it says, with the symbol, the truth is that this is our land. And it's not the Ukrainians saying this. This is Pharaoh and, the, and their nobility saying this, that the truth is that this is our land. It's the land of the Pharaohs to whom the entire globe belongs. And oh yes, the symbol is pure pharaonic and it's not a trident at all, which the dumb slaves think it is. So this is the state emblem of the Ukrainian state. And here we can see the uh, the trident, which is not a trident. I'll explain it to you later. It's, it's entirely pharaonic. On this side, we see the uh, lion, which is, which is a reference to the old world order or the red house of Pharaoh, the vertical rule. And here in white, which is the perhet or the white house of Pharaoh and the horizontal rule, of the Knights Templars, which you see here. So it's the same as the coat of arms of the um, the British Royals with, with on one side, though it's reversed, it's on the other side, the lion is on this side, but it doesn't matter. The, um, the union between the uh, vertical rule and the horizontal rule, and uh, so this uh, is uh, Saint Michael, but in a sort of a, um, a different version with, um, with the Templar's cross and white because of the, um, the Perhead White House. So this is also a different form of the Order of the Garter. And um, it's all Pharaonic, nobility, Templars, they all come from Pharaoh, as is this symbol. So this is a part, the lower or the middle part. There's some more here, which is not important. It's the middle part of the, uh, the coat of arms of the Ukrainian state. Look, here's a similar trident in the logo of the Italian Maserati sports car which is not really a trident either, but the concept of three, because it's an expensive car for the elite. And therefore also a reference to the fleur de lis of the nobility, with on top of the pyramid, the concept of three for the masters, and down the pyramid, the concept of four, for the slaves, with the trident to stick them into their lazy asses, the slaves working for the masters. So here you see a little pyramid in it, and on top of the pyramid there's the concept of three, one, two, three, for our masters, what I've been telling you. And down the pyramid there's suddenly the concept of three, one, two, uh, four, three, four. So this is down the pyramid at the square where the, um, where the grass is. And here again, the concept of three in a horizontal rule this time, the new rule, which originally the concept of three was more like the vertical rule. The original Maserati logo is of course, in red for the Pertasser Red House of Pharaoh's Old World Order Vertical Feudal Rule. A feudal car, so to speak. Please step into my carriage. This is a coin from the year 1000 of Volodymyr the Great. 
and to the sides here, this side and this side, to the sides are pharaonic reed, which Pharaoh used for making scepters and arrows. Therefore, the reed became a symbol for pharaonic royalty and the aristocratic descendants worldwide. So look at this symbol here, the form, just keep it in your mind and I'm going to show it to you now. So here is the pharaonic hieroglyph for reed and with reed the Egyptians they made scepters and arrows. Remember the scepter of Zelensky and the reed is a symbol for pharaonic royalty and we see this exactly this at the sides of the seal of the Ukraine. So this side this one here should be on the on the right side and then there was one like mirrored like here on the left hand side and the reed hieroglyph it stands for the letter i and also transliterated as um, as a j well that's why probably in latin before the j was an i and uh, like in inri so here's about the reed this is what it looks like like papyrus is also a reed and there are different sorts of reed of course so the Egy egyptian reed which i read it for you here which grows from thick roots like a tree was an ancient symbol for royalty in the eastern mediterranean in egypt the reed was used to make scepters and arrows Hence, the pharaohs of Egypt would shoot, well, shoot, of course, with double OT, arrows in every direction to symbolize the sun god and their own sovereignty. If the scepter broke, the kind was believed to have lost his uh, virility and uh, vitality. So, the reed. It's a, um, it's a symbol of the royalty and used to make uh, scepters. And here you can see an ancient pharaonic text with uh, hieroglyphs where the reed hieroglyph uh, was used, like here and here. And it's, uh, it means Tefnut having in herself her brother Shu, they are excavating a pond for King Teti in the fields of reeds so the reed you know it's all connected with the uh, with the royalty and the kings just as in the uh, the coat of arms of the um, of the ukraine i mean i know that everything is being uh, it, it derived from pharaoh and their nobility so it's not really a mystery just as this pharaonic hieroglyph of a bee has in fact no wings on its back but a reed and a royal symbol and what is a royal bee making yes royal jelly yes the bee queen therefore a bee depicted with the reed symbol of royalty which is a reference to isis the royal queen of fertility and imagine this one here on the left side of the uh, the coat of arms of the ukraine and this one here like mirrored and then on the other side well you get those two sides of um of the uh, the, the 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 royal coat of arms of uh, king uh, the emperor volodymyr of um, the great of of the ukraine because the whole nobility, they all come out of Pharaoh. As I just said before, that the reed hieroglyph stands for the letter I or J. That's why in Latin, the J was written as an I, as in 
Enri, for Eos Nazarenos Rex Eodeorum, uh, meaning Jesus of Nazareth, the king over the Roman province of Judea. And in the middle, in between the two reed feathers, in between the two royal scepters, as in a royal court, is the pharaonic sa amulet for protection, but upside down from the next image and tied together here as in the Egyptian sa amulet. So these are the reed feathers again. Uh, out of which they made scepters and uh, for, it's a symbol of the royal dignity and this here is the Sa symbol and this is very important here to see this because here it's tied together which is not visible anymore in today's uh, seal of the Ukraine where, uh, which everybody is uh, wearing with you know so this is the sa so it looks like the court this here it's like an opening like a court the royal court symbolizing the royal court and giving only um, protection and um, good chance you know going only good things going in for the royal court like here so here you see the original Sa amulet. So if you turn it upside down, it's exactly the same thing, which is shown on the uh, the seal of the Ukraine or the seal of Volodymyr the Great from the year thousand. And you can see here how it's tied together, just as on the um, the coin of Volodymyr the Great which isn't been showing today anymore. Now, everything comes out of Pharaoh. So here, the Sa amulet. So that's 2000, 4,000 years ago. And this amulet, I'll read it for you. This amulet depicts the hieroglyph that writes the word Sa, which means protection. The Sa amulet thus extends protection to the wearer, whether in life or death. So, you know, they, they can put it on a coin and um, so, you know, to, uh, to protect the, um, the bearer. And the, um, so it, it means protection. And you can imagine the, um, with the two reeds, it's, it's like the court because it stands for the, um, for the for the dignity of the royal nobility and um, so the whole thing it means uh, protection to the royal court protection to pharaoh and its nobility uh, descendants like zelensky and uh, well all of them putin and uh, they're all pharaohs so here is the sar symbol the sar amulet for protection and as reed is the um, a symbol of the um, of the pharaonic royalty, it it looks like a court. You know, here's an opening, and this protection coming in. And uh, therefore, the whole seal of Volodymyr the Great and the other Volodymyr Zelensky, it means protection to the royal court of Emperor Volodymyr and, of course, the pervert King Volodymyr chose his crest in this manner because it resembles the womb of a woman with a drop of sperm entering. As in Kiev, Volodymyr the Great 
also called Vladimir the Great Fornicator, had hundreds of concubines in Kiev, where he even raped many, many women. So here you can read about the family life and children of Vladimir the First or Vladimir the Great. There you go, you got there you got that symbol again. And see the you know the date is right, that's around the year thousand. And um here I read for you here overview Titma of Merseburg, also Titma von Merseburg described Vladimir as a great profligate. In Latin, that means fornicator Maximus. Until his alleged baptism to Christianity around 988, he supposedly had a few hundred concubines in Kiev. Eh? And in the country residence of Berestovo, uh, he's also said to have had pagan wives, the most well-known being Rokneda of Polotsk. Other wives are mentioned in the primary chronicle with various children assigned to various wives in the different versions of the document. According to the Tampere University, I think that's in Finland, uh, the scholar uh, Alexander Koptev, the legend surrounding Rokneda, Rokneda is closely related to the legend about the Chersonese uh, Hersonese uh, princess and the prince Yaropog widow, all being raped by Prince Vladimir. You know, the guy was a rapist. Well, that's nothing new in the aristocracy, isn't it? Yeah, it's about the, the here, I'll read for you. When Yaropolk was murdered by Vladimir's agents, the new sovereign raped his wife and he soon gave birth to a child. You know, the man killed by Vladimir agents. You know, that's, that's a story, also the story of King David. He was doing the same things, you know. Uh, it's all still the same ones here. Yeah. The Polotsk wife here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but after she refused to marry Vladimir, he raped and forcibly married Rokneda. He raped them all. The guy was a rapist, you know? Yeah, and so forth, and so on. He had hundreds, maybe thousands of women. Well, that's what these pharaohs are doing. The use prime noctis, the first rite, remember? nothing new. So, do you really want to wear the insignia of a rapist and be associated with it? Or even die for it, wearing the rapist symbol on your sleeve and on your dead body? You see, it's like legs up and the royal sperm rushing in. These are the ovaries. I mean, rape has always been going on in the castle, eh? The use primi noctis, the first rite on the first night of the marriage, they raped our women. The obelisk is the symbol of the pharaonic domination. Let's call it the RR, which doesn't stand for Rolls Royce, though closely connected. RR means royal rape, and sometimes happens in the other RR, rape on wheels, so to say, probably called Hot Wheels by the prince in his memoirs, and some more. R, R, which runs through the history of Pharaoh's nobility. And more R, R, the younger the human, the better. R, R marks the royal seal. And some more, the double R, with the royal seal, 
of a wonderful nobility all over it. Oh, James, can you bring me some young ones, if you'd be so kind, and a cup of grey earl tea to go with it, please? So you all really want to identify yourselves with that rapist logo of Volodymyr, the rapist king? Well, go ahead, you dumb slaves. It's so great to do what the others do. It's so great to copy what you see on the telly and follow the herd. It's so great to be part of a greater group and make yourself comfortable in the big herd, you silly cows you are. And the scary thing is that these people walking around with this symbol today, tomorrow they have forgotten everything about the Ukraine and its people. It's the symbol of the fornicator Maximus, as they called the Grand Prince of Kiev, Vladimir the Great, fornicator in Latin. It's like a sales technique to sell a new product which needs a visual component for better sales and you need to see a new movement as a product which they are selling to you by continuously and repeatedly showing it to you in the media until it gets into your unconscious and making you want to run towards the new hysterical mass psychology and join the band for which some get so bewitched that they are ready to lose their lives over it. Every era had its logo for the visual, for the dumb slaves, in order to get mesmerized and swallowed up by the whole enchantment. So the rapist king had a lot of offspring, and of course, also raping some jaywalker girlies now and then to fulfill his great appetite. And here it says, Prince Vladimir Sviatoslavich with sons. And he had a lot more children than that. So here it says Prince Vladimir or Volodymyr, because he was the, the Grand Prince of Kiev in the Ukraine. Isn't Zelensky's first name also Volodymyr, just like the king? And with the seal of Volodymyr the Great stuck on him all the time. As if to say, you see, that's my forefather, and this is my real tribe from where I come my royal tribe. His name is not David, Moshe, Chaim, Zelensky, or some other jaywalker name. This is Pharaoh Zelensky, and he's great friends with Putin, the Black Prince. Look, now he's even a war hero with this king's seal here, President Volodymyr Zelensky. The world has rallied behind Ukraine. It's all a sales technique. And this is from the White House gift shop who made him a hero. <laughs> 
they just make heroes, don't they now? Hey? And they're always the heroes, are always the presidents, the kings, the even saints, the knights templars, the masters. They are the heroes, isn't it? Here you can see the fleur de lis of the French nobility, also in the colours blue and yellow. Just as the royal crest of the Ukraine, and having the same pharaonic sa symbol for protection, for good luck to the court. So here's the sa symbol, the same colors as the fleur de lis, which is originally in yellow on a blue underground, which I'm gonna show you right now so this again is the fleur de lis with the same sar symbol only in the seal of the ukraine it's the other way around it's upside down but it's all also going like in an opening like the womb and with the um the pharaonic uh which is a reference here to the pharaonic reed and here it's tied together, just as the Tsar symbol. The same colors, the same trinity here, the same Tsar, the same tied together, the same things here at the side, which is the reed, which is a symbol of the pharaonic royalty, a reference to it. Of course, you know, it's the same ones ruling over us for thousands of years. Only they don't have a vertical rule anymore, the feudal system, but now it's a horizontal rule, but it's still the same ones, people. Believe me, please. And here, once more, the Tsar symbol for the protection to the royal court. I see with how it is tied together here, just as in the Fleur de Lis and in the seal of the Ukraine. There you go. Yes. The Ukrainian crest is a fleur de lis with the descendants of kings and emperors ruling over the Ukraine and over us all, who force us more and more into a feudal system with less and less freedom. So you see, this is uh, King Louis XIV, a highly intelligent man. I, I'm, I'm really astonished by the things he said. He's superior to the slaves, I can tell you. And it's the longest ever reign in history of 72, 72 years he reigned over France. It's longer than Queen Elizabeth. It's longer than Ramses the Great, the longest ever. Can you imagine 72 years? So here you can see it's the same as the coat of arms of the Ukraine, which is in yellow on a blue underground, exactly the same. Here you see the, the Tsar symbol for the protection of the courts. And this is like a womb made with, uh, with the reed, the pharaonic reed standing for the, um, for the, the pharaonic royalty. It's still the same ones, but this is a highly intelligent man, and um, I respect him a lot, um, in a way, if you see what I mean. And for the pink list killers who have sneaked into my channel from behind, of course, I show the beautiful legs of uh, King Louis the Fourteenth. Here you can see the garter. I'm not sure if it's the, the order of the garter, but it doesn't seem to hold up anything, you know, so. And the, uh, of course, the as I'm pink listed and black listed and, you know, so they're watching me, you know, to see if I'm, if they can uh, smash the, um, if they can smash the bell, like, and, uh, like uh, in the Stasi system we're living in, like, uh, oh, he did something wrong, you know, like uh, take his video off. So there you go. Eh? So YouTube, please live my video because I showed the legs of a bloke. Eh? So I'm doing a good thing, ain't I now? Eh? So leave my film on, on it. Eh? Don't, please don't censor me. 
You know, I, I show the agenda. Look, here's a male's a bloke's legs, eh? So, oh, you're all happy now? Right. So, fleur de lis, the crown, a sword. You know, just like um, Volodymyr Zelensky, who is a war hero. Like this one too, of course, he's a war hero, he's having a sword and all this. It's the same thing, you know. Nothing has changed, eh? You know, look, the Pope's red shoes as well. It's the, um, this is also a symbol here. You know, this is the old world order in red, the Pertasser, where it all started with in, in northern Egypt, lower Egypt, so to speak. And then from history going up, we get the, the white, you know, the, the white house, the Pert hat. The New World Order, the White House of Pharaoh. So the rest is all white, together with the Order of the Garter here. But it started from the bottom down. It started the Pharaonic uh, history. It started in red. That's why this is in red. But even the, the really lower part is red. Whereas here, even on in the shoes themselves, it is white here. And all has a meaning. And again, this is the, exactly the same color as the Ukrainian uh, coat of arms of the Ukrainian state, which is the seal of the king rapist, Volodymyr the Great. The next total control system is coming up through the Ukraine war under the banner of their royal nobility insignia out of the abyss of pharaoh so here you can see the coat of arms of the ukraine under this banner you know the ukraine war is and the new total control coming up in a feudal system it's all under this banner here you can see the zelensky chain of his inauguration a templars flag but inversed uh, what do we see here the swiss flag <laughs> yes the swiss have a they they are in the ukraine they have a base in the ukraine since uh, the 17th century they are there it's all here you know the, the the line with the crown they are the ones ruling over us then, 100 years later, after King Volodymyr the Great of the year 1000, the Templars were founded in 1118 in Troyes, France, and who were also in the Ukraine, as you will see and read here. So I read it for you. Ukraine has always been bound up with the history of Europe, and so it's unsurprising to find evidence of the Knights Templar in the region of Transcarpathia, in the west of the country. So remember this well: Transcarpathia is in the west of the country, where there's no war now, absolutely nothing. And this is very important. And most incredibly, I go on here. Between the towns of Uzgorod and Mukachevo, one can still view the impressive ruins of a Templar castle in the Ukraine. Yeah? Sredyansky castle possessed huge walls and what's left be behind is still imposing. Um, this 12th century monument, so the 12th century, uh, that's in the 1100s when the Templars were founded. Uh, so I'll let you read it yourself here. And here, in blue, I believe there are also claims of a Templar cave on the so-called Black Mountain, Kornohora, a, dom a dormant volcano in the Carpathian Mountains in the same part of the Ukraine. Curiously, websites with details about this have been taken down during the present Russian invasion of the Ukraine. Wow, wow, wow. That's not um, that's not very curious, you know, because it's it's the same Nazi Templars behind it all from from all sides. 
So, but it's interesting that they did this. I eh? so Knights Templars in the Ukraine, they were everywhere. The Knights Templars in the Ukraine settled down in a region called Transcarpathia. So here you see it, Transcarpathia, which is in the west here. And you can be sure they were not only here, but they were like everywhere here. Now they are everywhere. So here's the uh, Crimea, here's Donetsk, and here's Odessa. Kiev is about here on this big river, I suppose. And uh, here's the Ukraine, Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Russia here. And this is Transcarpathia. Like the Carpathians in um, Romania here, where the whole Dracula history is from. Yeah, it's mountainous. It's nothing like what you see on the news about the war. You know, the rest is all flat here. It's flat as a pancake, apparently. And here, it looks like Switzerland. Transcarpathia looks almost like Swaziland. Well, in fact, we can skip the almost. It looks like Swaziland. And therefore, from the 17th to the 19th century, many Swissies emigrated to this Templar region of Transcarpathia in the Ukraine. And the Swissies got known as the best Arabian Swiss of the Ukraine, which paradoxically is not very known at all. So, I mean, this is a, this is a Swiss chalet, eh? This is the whole area, it looks like Switzerland. Oh, no wonder, you know, the Swiss massively emigrated to here. So the next picture, More big. It's like Switzerland. This, this is nothing like the images you're seeing in the news, you know, of bombed out towns. And here in this, in the western part of the Ukraine, it's peaceful. No war, nothing. And all the images you see about the war, you know, it's all flat. It's all flatlands. Not like, like this. And everywhere, always where the Swiss live, there's no war. You know, what's going on, you know? This is what I've been telling you. Nice Swiss cookies. Look, you never see this kind of images, you know, from the Ukraine war. Because it's a completely different t country here in the West. It's like they don't belong to the Ukraine. You know. So I'm going to tell you some more about the history here. I'll tell you everything, in fact. And you see, you know, these, these sort of landscapes, it's like in Switzerland, you know. There's also pictures with cows and... Are these cows? I think they are, you know, like with cows and uh, it looks like Switzerland, you know, where you can do skiing here. So this this is the Swiss Ukraine here. No war, nothing going on, no bloodshed, nothing. And I tell you some very interesting stuff about this part of the Ukraine. some very chilling information i mean you you would think you know that i'm pulling your leg here you know that no no sean he's showing stuff you know from switzerland no 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 well anyway you see this is all ukrainian television here or you know the uh russian alphabet here the uh so look this is like traveling in the carpathians Oh. Yeah. And uh, so this is, uh, I hear Transcarpathian, Western Ukraine here. Yeah. Karpat Info, Info, Western Ukraine, yeah. Transcarpathian, Rakiv District, Drahobrat. So these are, this is in the Ukraine, hey? Right? So, you, I mean, you, you get it, hey? Right? Um, this is the region. So here, yeah, Transcarpathian. 
Uh, I don't remember. Oh, hey, Uzgorod. That's where the Templars were. In Uzgorod. Oh, look at that. All mountains. Of course, the Knights Templars are there in the mountains, eh? And uh, what was the other? I think Makachevo, where the Templars were as well. Yeah, uh -huh. Western Ukraine. There's nothing happening. Uh, well. Okay, so this is uh, yeah, this, the um, Transcarpathian region is located in the southwest of uh, the, the Ukraine, what I've just shown you. Uh, Uzgorod, the ad administrative center is Uzgorod, where the nice Templars are, where the, that castle were, was. I can read this so I look at the landscapes here. Look at that. You want to see it? You don't see this in the news, do you know? No, look at that. It's, just, it's like Switzerland. It is beautiful, though. I mean, they don't want to wait. Look, they, they look like they have Swiss traditional clothes on. Of course, it's too beautiful to make a war here. I mean, I mean everywhere where the Swiss live, there's, there's no war. Oh, there's the cows here. Yeah. Look. I mean, you would say this is in Switzerland. You know, I've seen places like that. You never see an image like this of the Ukraine war, do you know? You know there's nothing going on there. There's no war there. So I'm not going to explain you why. I've already seen these ones. Good. So... Transcarpathia, where the Swiss emigrated to in the uh, in the 1600s, in the 17th century. They are there in Bessarabia. I'm going to show it to you. So this is the Swiss palace of the former Ukrainian president Yanukovych, about which I made this video eight years ago when I was already supporting the Ukrainians in their struggle against the masters. And if all the Ukrainians would have seen only this film, we could have prevented today's Ukraine war already back then. The style of the house looks familiar, huh? Well, you just saw loads of them in Transcarpathia. It's a Swiss style chalet by the Swiss immigrants in the Ukraine who are on all key positions in the Ukraine, just as they did in America and anywhere else in the world. So here you can see there are some more pictures in it and uh, it's about the secret symbols, which I found in this, um, on the pictures uh, about this uh, palace. See, so it's in 2014. That's uh, eight years ago. It's on my channel, Hatsafat. I'll put the, uh, the link in the description. Now look, 37 combatants. Whoa, that's a lot, eh? 37. <laughs> Yeah, there's some more tourist stuff here from the Ukraine. Well, I mean, this picture could have been straight out of Switzerland, eh? Absolutely. Yeah, some more straight out of Switzerland. Well, you don't see these houses bombed in the Ukraine, eh? Straight out of Switzerland. Especially in the uh, Tessin region, where they use a lot of stone like this as well. Yeah, it says... Carpathians, Ukraine, Transcarpathia. 
it's a um, different world you don't see this in the um, in the in the news eh? the big bomb in it and all so this is some it says b and b a bed and breakfast bed and breakfast stuff here yeah. so cozy mountain chalet runa oh runic mm -hmm. so it's in the zakarpatska oblast in the ukraine which is uh, in the swiss ukraine um, i mean uh, look at these houses it's, it's like switzerland it's, it's, it's a gorgeous area i must say look at the mountains I haven't seen any picture like this, you know, with Russian army and and the these Swiss houses bombed in the Ukraine. No, it's only the flatlands. Yeah, it's like Switzerland. So I'll show you where there is the um, uh, that uh, Zakarpatska or something. Okay, well, you got the idea, eh? This is Switzerland in the Ukraine, and it's big. It's a real huge part. So there it is, Zapar, uh, yeah, Zakarpatska. Apparently in English, it's Zakarpatia. And where is it? Look, it's exactly the area where the Knights Templars went to. And this is where Bessarabia, where Swissy went to. And Swissy also went here. Well, I'm, I'll, I'll talk about that later. So, yeah, it looks like Switzerland. Eh? And um, well, you can look it up yourself. So here's some more about the Knights Templars in the Ukraine in an area called um, Trans uh, Carpathia. I'll let you read it yourself. But this is very interesting. I didn't even know this myself. The I know this about uh, King Philip IV. So the initiator of the event, you know, arresting the Knights Templars on Friday the 13th, the initiator was the French King Philip IV, Philip the Fair. Yeah, it says the beautiful. In English, it would be Philip the Fair, which is a nice alliteration, of course. Who was the grandson of the Kiev princess Anna Yaroslavna? Wow. And she, in turn, was a daughter of Yaroslav the Wise. So you see, it's all related. You know, the Knights Templars and this here, the, 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 the whole, and, and the Ukraine is related in it, you know. So we have to understand all this if we want to understand the war going on, you know. That's why I'm showing you this. And why there is no war in the west of the Ukraine. You know, because the Knights Templars, they've got total control there. And they've got their beloved people living there. Hey, Swissy. That's why there is no war. I'll let you read it yourself. Uh, you, you know, even the Nazis have been looking for it as there, you know. Like the SS Annenerbe with Otto Rahn, of course. Yeah, this is some Templar stones they found there. I hear that. It's again about Transcarpathian region, the Black Mountain, the Templar Cave. And uh, they were there, they were everywhere. Um, Yeah, so this is very much related to the uh, to the Ukraine war. I'm going to explain that to you. 
So here's the Wikipedia website about Swiss emigration to Russia. I'm going to read it for you here. There was significant emigration of Swiss people to the Russian Empire. <laughs> you believe this? To the Russian Empire from the late 17th to the late 19th century. This guy, Rauber, estimates that the number of 50,000 to 60,000 Swiss lived in Russia between roughly 1700 and 1917. So 60,000, like uh, 300 years ago or more, there are more than a million now. Maybe two million. Yeah, the late 18th and early 19th century saw a flow of Swiss farmers forming colonies such as Saba, which is, uh, well, remember the Queen of Saba, eh? with the, the, the story with uh, Pharaoh? And Saba is called Bessarabia at the, at, and the Niesta Liman, now part of the Ukraine. I'm going to tell you some more about Niesta Liman later, which is very important and related to the Second World War and, and the Nazi red line. But now I'm going to show you about Bessarabia. So this is all very interesting here. I'll let you read it yourself. So you see there's a Swiss diaspora, you know. So it's not only God's beloved people who made a diaspora, who are not the uh, beloved people of, of Pharaoh anymore. Uh, it's rather these ones here, through the Knights Templars who occupied the, the Alps, their base. Uh, they become, became the um, beloved people of, the, of, um, of Pharaoh, of Pharaoh's nobility. I mean, uh, for the jaywalkers, the beloved people stuff that ended, you know, like 2000 years ago. Which must be quite obvious, you know, if you look at the historical, the historical, uh, or the genocides and all the, the bloodshed, and you know, it must be you, you shouldn't believe in that anymore. You know that uh, I mean, dear Jay Walker, that you belong to a beloved people or something. I mean, um, stop believing it because it'll lead to your downfall. And you know, I'm just trying to protect you. Eh? So Swiss emigration to the Ukraine. Right? So this place here, Bessarabia. Yeah. You can see where it is. I'll show you a better picture. So this is the Ukraine here. And here's the, in the dark green Bessarabia. I'll show it to you. So this here is about Bessarabia. I mean, I'll let you look, look it up yourself. And here's the picture of it at the uh, at the map. So this is the Ukraine. This region here is the uh, Transcarpathia. So Templars here, Swiss here. I mean, coincidence? No, here's Switzerland. Just go, you know, tuck. Just pass Austria. Well, Austria is easy to pass, you know, same language. Now here's Slovakia and all of a sudden you're in the Ukraine. It's not very far. I mean, south of Italy is further further away, eh? Down the boot here, or England. This is quite near. So they, they everywhere they made a colony. And there's no war here. The whole, here, all of this, there's no war. Swiss here, Knights Templars here. And that was back like 300 years ago. Now they're all over. You know, you see what I get to. They're all over. I have no idea why they why the, the part Arabia is in it. Well, maybe the Swiss they 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 took a camel from here to there. I don't see any other explanation, eh, hey, Swissy? Uh, you camel uh oh, no, I'm not gonna say that. They're gonna censor my video if I say that. Hey? You old camel you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, so it's not very far. Uh, Swissies here, Knights Templars here. And of course, and now it's everywhere. So the Knights Templars were here before, and they took their beloved people afterwards because, I mean, a Knights Templar, he must eat, so it needs farmers. That's what we read before. It said the Swiss farmers. 
the dairy farmers and all that, you know. So, I mean, the Templar dudes, they were very smart, you know. They knew to wage a war, you know, you need logistics, you need food. That's why the Ruskies, they were losing the war, you know. I mean, it's, it's been said, you know, uh, with a good army, you can win a battle. But with good logistics, you win the war. And I even say with good, um, um, a good radio and contact, uh, that's even more important. The uh, signaler call, that's even more important, maybe. And uh, so the Knights Templars they already knew this. You need a good logistics. You need, you know, your 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 soldiers. They need to eat. They need money. And so Templars, when they got here, after they left here, then they went here and they said, "Well, come on, let's go and have a look a little bit further down." And it's all mountainous areas here, from here to here, all mountains. All this, yeah. And uh, so where can we hide the stuff, you know? And then they uh, they needed the uh, the dairy farmers, eh? So I could show you everything here, but uh, uh, oh, there's some stuff here about the uh, Nazi Germany. Very interesting. So I'll let you read it yourself. Oh, so we also have this Wikipedia, the Swiss abroad. And they are everywhere. Look here, you can see all this. They're everywhere. So people usually say, look at the jaywalkers. They're everywhere. Everywhere. They all cut all key positions. I mean, look at this. They're everywhere. And everywhere where the Swissies are, there's no war. Because Pharaoh and his nobility, they, their beloved people of today, the Swissies, you know, they don't need a war because they're already obedient and, you know, they're, they're, they do everything. Uh, the, the, the masters uh, tell them to do, you know, with banking and uh really criminal banking and all this i've got absolutely no problems with this and you know so i'll let you read it all yourself you know and uh hey, look united kingdom there are 34,971 now who are really swiss but they also emigrated to the uk and and they're not even they're not even in this number anymore in North America, because uh, they uh, they mixed within the population. Here, there are eighty thousand with a Swiss passport, like in the United States. But there are one point two million Swiss Americans in the uh, in the U.S. who have an American passport. Yeah, so they just disappear. Yeah, and I wanted to show you Russia. So these are very interesting websites here, Swiss Australian, uh, Swiss Argentine, Swiss Chilean, Swiss American, and uh, oh, where was Russia? I didn't see it. What happened to Russia? Uh, come on. Oh, there it is. Yeah, Russia. Yeah, significant, significant emigration of Swiss people to the Russian Empire. Oh, we already read it. It's exactly the same uh, text. And uh, only this is, they added this, the Russian Swiss generally prospered. Yeah, of course, they got the Templars in their backs. Partly merging with the German diaspora populations. So you see, there's a difference. As at the end of 2016, 776 Swiss citizens live in Russia. Yeah, but they are real Swiss, you know, they're not, not the ones who, are, who emigrated like 350 years ago, who got a Ukrainian passport and a, uh, and a Russian passport and all this. So this was uh, Swiss abroad. Uh, 
very important. You never expected them to go to Russia, did you know? I already told you this 10 years ago. Look, here it says Bess Arabia, and here is the old crest or coat of arms or logo of uh, Bess Arabia. Yeah. And this logo here of the cow or a, uh, a bull is very much related to the foundation of Switzerland in 1291 by the Knights Templars. I'm going to show that to you in a minute. Where it has exactly the same bull's head, also with the tongue sticking out. Exactly the same. And so again, you know, Bess Arabia, you know, why Arabia? Well, it says a little bit because of the Turks. Well, but Turks is not Arabia. Turk is a Turk and an Arab is an Arab. Uh, I'd rather call it Swiss Arabia. Well, I mean, the double S, the SS is here, yeah. And uh, Bess Arabia was divided into seven, or of course, seven Uyeds, or whatever that is. One of them is called Ackermann. Well, it's typical Swiss German, you know, Mann. Well, the double N, it just fell off over the centuries. Uh, it means a man. And Acker, it means a, um, a piece of land, a meadow for a farmer. You know, and of course, the, um, the logo, the Swiss logo on the, um, on the old crest of uh, Bessarabia is, of course, uh, Apis of uh, Pharaoh. Uh, and Apis is the symbol of the, uh, the protection of the homeland of uh, ancient Egypt. Like the advanced personal information system, if you want to travel to the US. I made all, I also made a video about it. It should be on my channel, Hats of Hats. That's why they made it like Apis. It's for the defense of the US, like, you know after the um, after 9-11 that happened so Ackermann well that reminds me of a very famous uh, corrupt Swiss banker very rich banker and I'll show it to you well there he is Ackermann in the original Swiss way to write it and it says Swiss banker you've probably seen his face already this is really the most famous banker of all times. Yeah. Joseph Ackermann is a Swiss banker and former chairman of the Bank of Cyprus and former chief executive of, officer of Deutsche Bank. Uh, and he was from Wallenstadt. You remember Wallenstadt, where there is the Lake of the Wales? And the seven hills of Switzerland in the end times. Well, that's exactly where he's from. Yeah, Wallenstadt. So there he is, Joseph Ackerman. And Ackerman, it's, well, it's quite a weird name for a Ukrainian province, isn't it? It's more like a Swiss canton. So he's, uh, well, here it says all here, the chief executive officer of Deutsche Bank, which is the biggest bank in the world in frankfurt not very far from switzerland still in the uh, in the region of the ethnic swiss he's in the group of 30 whatever that is and um, he's also in the uh, look the bilderbergs he's in it in 2009 he earned 9.4 million euros in a year uh, how much how much is that a day you know you probably won't even earn what he earns in a day you won't earn that in 10 years probably eh? and he was also in the uh what was it the ah oh, here it says the g7 i mean this is really the world banker here the, he's in the g7 here the group of the g7 he went probably to davos this is really the world banker of all times, Mr. Ackermann. And uh, we just saw 
the name of a province in Ukraine where there is no war. Of course, the Ruskies or our masters are not going to wage war, you know, where, uh, where, the, where the Swiss banks are with their Ackermann and, you know. So, the Ackermann, Ukrainian province in Transcarpathia. Oh no, Bessarabia, sorry. So here is the Apis bull of ancient Egypt of pharaohs with the inverse pyramid of death on his head, on his stern, and um, which is uh, very much related to the foundation of uh, Switzerland and the canton of uh, Uri, and consequently uh, it's related to Bess Arabia or Swiss Arabia. And it's also related to America, the Advanced Personal Information System, after the Patriot Act, which is in fact an act against the Patriots. So here is my Apis video on my channel Gatsefrats from eight years ago. Here's the title, Apis Bull God of Strength for Homeland Security. Coat of arms through 9-11, uh, World Trade Center scam of fair aristocracy. And APIS, it means Advanced Passenger Information System. So I'll, I'll put the link uh, in the video for you, uh, in the description under the video. So you must absolutely see and understand this video because it's all related. So there it is again, the crest of Bessarabia, which we find in the foundation history of Switzerland in 1291. So this is really, this is from the canton of Uri. It's the same cow, it's Apis with the tongue sticking out, the same as in Bessarabia. So the Templars founded Switzerland in 1291 here, mountains as in Bessarabia. Templars like mountains and caves where they can hide things, where they can build up a defense line, you know, they don't like flat flatlands like in the uh, in the in Donetsk area the rest of the Ukraine like so they bomb the hell out of it you know? it's the same symbol you know don't be mistaken I eh? uh, you will not understand the Ukraine war if you do not know the symbols if you do not know the history if you do not know Switzerland and the Templars you you won't understand a thing what's what's happening there and uh, so 1291, around the same time, the, uh, the Templars were already in um, uh, Transcarpathia, but the Templar, you know, he's filling his pockets with gold and they were the first multinationals, of course, because they are of the nobility. So they needed farmers, dairy for Swiss dairy farmers. So they told the Swiss, I mean, how, how did simple Swiss dairy farmers with his cows and family and his carts and everything, how did he get from Switzerland? How did he find the way? There was not a motorway with signs and GPS. How did he find it? Well, you know, he got helped. He got, he got the, the Templars were his GPS, you know, for God's sake. So they, they brought simple Swiss peasants into the Ukraine in a very similar area. So to take over the control over there, because they're smart guys, these Templars, you know, they, they were Templars farms, you know. They, they knew that their soldiers, they, they needed food, as I just told you before. I mean, the logistics is utmost of utmost importance. And these Templar dudes, they, they knew this. And also Russia knows this and the, uh, the generals know that, but they want to defeat their own army, which is not their own in the first place. Uh, this is what's going on. So this is Uri. There were three cantons where Switzerland got founded by the Knights Templars in 1291. And this is why we find the same cow with his tongue sticking out like you know like sticking out is the apis pharaonic apis is sticking out his tongue to the rest of humanity and to the ukrainians in this case so 
There you go. The canton of Uri. The Ri, by the way, is the sun. And I suppose it used to be Ari. The uh, main pregnant sun. Like we are born out of the sun. That's where they came from. The uh, pharaohs probably. So there were three cantons. Uh, it's in German. It's in German. Sorry about that. There are three cantons and uh, where Switzerland started. And this is the main canton. Because there's a thing there called the Rutli. And this is where the uh, where they did the uh, the sacred uh, Freemason oath, uh, where Switzerland is uh, was started. So here's the canton with the bull, which is Uri, Ari, like aristocracy, and Ari and Aryan. It's all the same people. Uri. Aristocracy, aristocracy, it's all the same. And it just went from here to the Ukraine. It's not very far. It's all mountainous area with the Knights Templars being their GPS. You know, I don't think any Swiss peasants could find it you know, that easily. They wouldn't even know where to go to from in the first place. You know. And I told you, the jaywalkers haven't been uh, the beloved people anymore since a very long time. I guess since 2000 years, since the, the Roman era, since the exodus out of Egypt, they became disobedient. And if you look at all the things going on in history, the genocides on these people and everything, I mean, they got no divine protection at all, you know. And Pharaoh is God. The Swissies are today's beloved people, and they are everywhere. They're absolutely obedient, fantastic bankers like Ackermann. Um, they execute uh, the orders without any moral uh, complaints or anything. Uh, no problem, which I had to find out, and my family, the hard way in uh, Switzerland. It says they call it Eidgenossenschaft, it's the beginning of Switzerland. And the other two cantons are Schwitz and Unterwalden. But this is this is the most important because the Grütli, I made a video about it, but the Swissies um, had YouTube take it off and now it's disappeared forever because it was in my my old channel with 350 videos which got taken off. Uh, you, you'll find this also in English, but um, yeah, you can find it yourself. So there it is. They did the, uh, the sacred oath uh, at the Rutli in the canton of Uri. Here it is. I think this flag here, or you can only see part of it, I'm sorry, is uh, the, uh, the, the flag and coat of arms of the canton of Schwitz, if I'm not mistaken. And this is Unterwalden. So this is why Switzerland uh, started. Of course, here three, and here three, the concept of three, there are our masters. And this is the, the Freemason oath, you know, with the two fingers up, which is also an oath to Osiris because it's a reference to the two feathers, the ostrich feathers on Osiris, his head. And this is why you have to stick it up like the two feathers on Osiris' his, uh, his head. So this here is the uh, Rutli I, uh, in this canton here, where it all started. And um, well, the execution of the Knights Templars, yeah? The order was founded in Troyes, in the middle of France. I went filming there as well. And I went filming here, but it's gone. I'm sorry, I hope somebody has copied it. Otherwise, it's gone forever. So you, you must copy my videos and spread it because one day, and I think it's coming quite soon now, all my videos will be gone. It's coming very soon. And I can't do it all by myself. I absolutely can't. I'm still a homeless. Uh, at the moment, I'm staying somewhere. But I mean, I, 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 I could get the message any day. Well, you know, take your packs and go. So the same Apis symbol of Pharaoh in Bessarabia, 
And uh, Best Arabia is just an extension of Switzerland. You know, you go through the mountains, through Austria, through the mountains of Slovakia, and there you go. You're in Best Arabia. You're in the Ukraine. And um, no bombs in Best Arabia. I think about it, Ukrainians. Please do think about it, Russians, because this is the origin of the war. Use your use your heads. So this is Rutli. This is how you write it in the Canton of the Cow, so to speak, in Uri or Ari. And uh, this is where the whole mess started. Actually, this is where they did the sacred oath. This is very important to know, extremely important, because uh, the whole of Europe being conquered and invaded and replaced, the replacement of the white race, it started here. This is where the whole mess started. The Ukraine war, if you want, it all started here, you know, 800 years ago. So you must know this. And here, once more, Rutli, Switzerland, next to a lake. Switzerland was formed here in 1291. And it was exactly here where the Knights Templars, they made the, uh, the alliance with the Swissies and the oath to get rid of the white race. And why? Because of Rome. And it happened like uh, 600 years before that. Because the, the white tribes, they were the only ones who ever conquered Pharaoh and his Roman Empire. Nobody else have done it. So, you know, they must get rid of them. The same happening now in the Ukraine. You know, get rid of them and make like a, a, a Russian Federation out of them, all mixed with whatever what. And again, I'm not a racist, I'm not a nationalist, you know, I have no problems with the jaywalkers and the beloved people, they can believe that if they want. Uh, it's completely wrong and it doesn't do them any good either. So, my dear jaywalkers, um, uh, I've got nothing against you, as you know, and uh, I'm just uh, documenting everything and giving some, uh, some honest advice how to go on from here and yeah how to go on from here and it all started here in 1291 on the Rutli with the symbol of the cow as in Bessarabia and as Mr. Putin he gets all his orders out of the motherland in the Alps he gets his orders out of Switzerland so he's not allowed to attack the homeboys in western ukraine so and this one mr hitler same thing so watch this video here switzerland sleeper agent putin on the same channel uh, all the explanations are in here Switzerland sleeper agent Mr. Putin and Switzerland sleeper agent Mr. Hitler. Pharaohs, Templars and Swissies are everywhere. And here, in fact, lies the partial Ukrainian collaboration with the Nazis during World War II because of Swissies Templar infiltration of the Ukraine. And you can see this in this symbol here, the Templars who came first, the Templars of Transcarpathia, and then the Swissies from Bessarabia a little bit after that. Why do you really think the Ukraine war is only in the flatlands of the East and Northeast? Huh? Why there is no war where the Swissies settled down in Western Ukraine, Bessarabia, and why no war in Transcarpathia, land of the Templars? Huh? I know, I know. In the East are Russian minorities put there by Stalin and before by the Tsars. Only problem. 
These people in eastern Ukraine feel Ukrainian, and most of them not at all Russian. So where's the problem, eh, Putin? We hear nothing out of western Ukraine, just as we never hear anything out of Switzerland. Very suspicious, ain't it now? Everywhere where Swizzy is, there is no war. Why? Well, because the Knights Templars are there too. And we can see this in Switzerland and in Western Ukraine. The same pattern all over. This is a scientific way of discovering things by comparing and to discover similar patterns in order to define a certain regularity. I just want you to look at the facts. It's the same scientific approach as in a laboratory. Compare, seek a pattern, discover a certain regularity and isolate the objective. A scientific approach also called deduction. We're getting there, Swissy. We've isolated the maybe and you're not going to get away with this anymore. You hear me, Swissy? Not even the Holodomor killing 10 million Ukrainians in the winter of 1932-1933 by starvation by Soviet Stalin touched the western regions of the Ukraine where the Templars and their Swissies settled down. So here's the Wikipedia website of the Holodomor. The Holodomor derived from oh yeah, to kill by starvation and uh, was a man-made famine in the Soviet Ukraine from 1932 to 1933 that killed millions of Ukrainians. And I fear it's going to happen again this winter. Certainly looks like it. I swear see, doesn't it? So what I wanted to show you, so here you can see the Ukrainians, just as today. You know, history repeats itself as usual. That's probably the symbol of it. You know, they're made of with some holy hocus pocus on it. You know, they always have got the answer afterwards. There's no divine protection at all. Forget about it. Oh, this is in Rwanda, apparently. I don't know what that has to do with it. Um, this is Ukraine. Mar Nigrum. The, uh, the lake of the, uh, or the sea of the, uh, of the Nubians. I'm not allowed to say this word. Nigrum, Nigrum. Uh, nothing allowed, you know. They, they just look for anything, you know, what what they can can make illegal. In spite of the fact that you know it's a normal word word using meaning the same thing, uh, so they can criminalize us. Uh, the peasants in Ukraine. Okay, there we are. This is what I wanted to show you. So more than 25% of the, um, of the, during the Holodomor is in red. So I get here, Skiv somewhere. And here, this Eastern area where we see the war now. And this is real funny why this area is a lot lighter. I and mean, this is important, deduction, people, scientific deduction. 
you must ask yourself why 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 and if we go to the east it's even getting very light yellow that's zero percent yeah and this the dark yellow is one percent from one to fourteen percent of the people who died and here's white is nothing you know well they say here it, you know it was not part of the soviet state but there was nothing you see it already gradually happening from here red it's getting blood red it's getting lighter and lighter and lighter here the area uh, transcarpathia and bessarabia it's light nothing really happened and these ones here they probably went here and they survived yeah. so this is very important to understand this so not the war now the ukraine war is in the in the west uh, not the uh, not the holodomor it didn't happen in the west there's a reason now look ukrainians dying just as today well this is now they uh, in those days they said six million well we we know it's now it's 10 million uh historians and scientific uh, research have uh, revealed that it's uh, six uh, t 10 million died yeah and that's um there is a reason you know that it, it's going to happen again it's already happening you know people have no water they have nothing to eat children dying it's already happening yeah, the holodomor the ukrainian genocide well, there's number two coming up, eh? Number two coming up. Well, you know, they're always, you know, religion jumping in afterwards when it's too late. Okay, they have got all the answers always afterwards, eh? I'm sick of it, really. I'm so sick of it, the whole religious hocus pocus oh, here again under the symbol of the the, the royalty the fleur de lis yeah, the children dying here it's seven million oh one million more or less oh. well okay seen enough pictures so uh, i show you only this one once more so you won't forget it there we are ukraine during the holodomor it's roughly the same as ukraine during the ukraine war today it's the same what we saw during the uh, pharaoh's bug war of uh, 2020 and 20 until 2022 if you look at the map of europe while well, during the nazi occupation you see the exact same map of the uh, people being of, of the lockdowns in europe of switzerland having no lockdown they're not occupied by the nazis there are two countries actually being left out there was sweden and switzerland shows exactly the same map so this is scientific deduction it's very important to do this work because otherwise you'll never find it out never terrible 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 how can this go on and happening again terrible because people don't understand the history they don't understand the symbols hey swissy i know what you did hey swissy i know what you're doing here you can see about the wikipedia website ukrainian collaboration with nazi uh, germany and then of course the collaboration of the ukrainians with the nazis also came primarily 
from the Western Swiss Templar regions. Like here it says, however, the Ukrainian population of Western Ukraine had little to no loyalty towards the Soviet Union, whose Red Army had seized Ukraine during the Soviet invasion of Poland in September 1939. Nationalists in Western Ukraine hoped that their enthusiastic collaboration would enable them to re-establish an independent state. So it's quite a special region, you see. And uh, well, I'll let you read it yourself. And also, um, also here, um, here yeah, nationalists in Western Ukraine were among the most enthusiastic and hoped that the efforts efforts would enable them to re-establish an independent state later on. So there's a whole lot of things uh, like uh, going on. So I'll show you a couple of pictures of the uh, the Ukrainian collaboration with Nazi German Germany coming out of the Swiss Templar parts of the Ukraine in the West mostly and maybe entirely and you see the same thing as today you know and nice girlies and soldiers uh, look here the same symbol we know this eh so the same symbol from this era has come back now and here the lion three or i think there are three crowns here and Ukrainian ladies, like probably Swiss ladies of uh, ethnic Swiss in the Ukraine. So it's hard to say Ukrainians collaborate with the Nazis or Ukrainian ladies because it's um, there's so many people immigrated there over the centuries. And especially, you know, of course, the um, Knights Templars where everything always comes from. I mean, the people are suffering. And uh, they're the ones behind it, you know. Well, again, well, I think, okay, we already had that. Good. So, yeah, well, you can sit, read the whole just punch pause. And also this here, I'm not allowed to pronounce it. Otherwise, you know, I get uh, censored. The machine will recognize it. And uh, well, there's a lot of interesting. So this here already started immediately within a few days of the beginning of the Nazi occupation of the uh, of the Ukraine. And. Uh, Yeah, this is interesting about Ukrainian volunteers in the German armed forces. So there was the uh, Nachtigall Battalion. That's the Nightingale Battalion. They probably, you know, their victims were screaming like a, like a bird. <coughs> you know, the Roland Battalion. Uh, and it's part of the German Abwehr. That was the uh, MI5 of the Germans, like the um, Abwehr, Secret Service. And, uh, Heavy Hilfswilliger. And then there was, of course, the uh, the 14th Waffengrenadier Division of the SS, the first Ukrainian. Uh, that was the symbol with the uh, lion and the three crowns. crowns. A crown, of course, because of uh, three crowns of the concept of uh, of three. And uh, so, you know, we must all understand this and know every detail of everything, you know, and, and that it was not the entire Ukraine, you know, collaborating with the Nazis, as Putin is saying, and especially not in the East. And Putin knows it, you know, where it all comes from, because he's a Swiss sleeper agent. Instead of saying where they really 
were collaborating with the Nazis, you know, Putin, he does the opposite. The Ukrainian SS division called the 14th Waffengrenadier Division, division, also called the 1st Galician, also came from the same Swiss Templar region of ethnics, Ukrainians in Galicia, Poland, and in a area called Vol Volhynia, and again from Western Ukraine, a eh? Swissy. So here you can see this, uh, the 14th Waffengrenadier Division of the SS, the first Galician, and the 14th Waffengrenadier Division, or also called the, the Ukrainian, um, was a World War II German military formation made up predominantly of military volunteers with a Ukrainian ethnic background from the area of Galicia. Later, also some Slovaks. So, then it's very important to know where is Galicia? Look, here's Galicia. I'll punch on it. You see, it's here it says, oh, well, it goes away. Uh, it says, it, it lies in Western Ukraine, Galicia. So the rest of the Ukrainians, they had nothing to do with this, you know. So Putin shouldn't punish them or, or talk about Nazis in the Ukraine because it's, it's completely wrong. So this is Galicia. And, uh, here, you, and here you can see uh here it is so it's in the western part of here's the ukraine it's in the southeastern part of poland where auschwitz auschwitz is here where i went to as well and in the western part of the ukraine and they are punch on it so here and this is the templar area and this here as well and this is where the swiss went to and the knights templars and only here was the um, the collaboration, you know, with the uh, most of it all um, uh, with the Nazis, you know, and the um, the 14th SS division. The rest of the country had nothing to do with it, and uh, so it's completely wrong what Mr. Putin is saying. It's it's a total lie. So I show that again the. And there's also a part called Volhynia in that same area. And there were terrible, you know, massacres going on there between Poles and Ukrainians. Because th there were three parties in Volhynia. There were uh, jaywalkers. And uh, I have to show you the pictures here. I forgot that. Oh, some charming pictures, eh? Here as well. And, uh, well, so there were three parts of three peoples in the, uh, in Volhynia. There were Poles who were apparently very dominant over the others. There were jaywalkers or were the ones who were mostly down at the ladder, <laughs> taking taking it from all from all the others. And there were ethnic Ukrainians. And after being suppressed, you know, uh, and humiliated for hundreds of years, they saw their chance coming with the Nazis, and then they committed terrible massacres. There were these ethnic Ukrainians in Volhynia which they did on Poles and jaywalkers, uh, killing mostly children, women and children. Oh, fantastic, eh? So, well, you can read it yourself, just punch pause, I'll do it a bit quicker. Uh, and it's still living today, you know, like this here, there was a, uh, a, a, a football club, 
Carpati, you know, the Carpathians, uh, Transcarpathia. And they were honoring the Waffen SS. You know, it's the same region again and again and again. I see, you probably know all about it, eh? Yeah. And uh, okay, I'll show you Volhynia because that's important. Okay, this here is Volhynia, which um, here you can see that, which is even part of the Ukraine here. And here in Poland, there are the ethnic Ukrainians, or here living here and they were suppressed by the poles and um and there were the jaywalkers as well who were the uh, the lowest on the ladder actually and that's history eh? and here Uz Uz there were all, if i remember that right the knights templars were here and they were also here it's all knights templars here and here swissy and of course also here and um this is the kind of, so every time it's in the West. Yeah. And this is the coat of arms of uh, Volhynia. Well, we all know this. It's the, uh, it's the cross, the coat of arms of the Hospitallers. It's the same as the Knights Templars, only it's inversed. So there you get to the Swiss, right? Eh? Because the Hospitallers, they took over all the wealth and all the money when the Knights Templars, they were forbidden in France and in Europe. So they inversed their cross and it took over all the belongings of the Knights Templars legally. And this is how the Swiss cross, um, it, it became the Swiss cross, yeah. And he say names and etymology, German, but they never talk about Swiss German. You know, they always keep a low profile. Well, we all know why, eh? Here's a castle, the Princess of Volhynia. I mean, it's the same in, in like in Western Europe, you know, in France or Germany, it's the aristocracy all over. And the people are dying, killing each other, you know. And so here you see, during the German invasion, around 50,000 to 100,000 Polish people, mostly women and children in Volhynia, were mass massacred by the Ukrainian insurgent army. But the insurgent army, they were the ethnic uh, Ukrainians living in Volhynia. I saw a Polish film about it. It was, it was terrible, terrible, terrible. The mess. They, uh, they, they took the skins off of people, you know, alive. And uh, while that happens, you know, the, the Ukrainians also have their reason for this because they were suppressed over hundreds of years. And then, uh, you know, the hatred builds up. And then when they got the chance, you know, the, the, the terrible things happen. So everybody got his reason, you know. But uh, I mean, there's no reason to do that with children. And, you know, a child is. Um, uh, a, tri a child is holy, you know, no matter how much hate you have. You know? So it's every time in the west of the uh, of the Ukraine. You know, there's no Holodomor in the west. The Templars settled down. The Swiss they collaborated with the Nazis only in this part here. The rest, no, no, no. And, uh, And if you don't know this, you'll never understand anything. Yeah. Okay, Volhynia, don't you forget this. And then there were the Travniki guards in the concentration camps who were worse than the German concentration camp guards, according to inmate testimonies. The Travniki men were Soviet prisoners by the Nazis who had the choice to either die in the Nazi prisoner camps for Soviet soldiers taken prisoner, of whom the Nazis starved to death three and a half million, or the other solution to become 
a concentration camp guard themselves. And many Ukrainians were selected, but also Armenians, Azerbaijanis, Belarusians, Estonians, Georgians, Latvians, Lithuanians, Russians, and uh, Tatars. So I'll show you some pictures here. The Travniki man. So here you see the Travniki man during the ghetto uprising. They took a big part in the uh, in the killings. Apparently, here's some more. Here you see the jaywalkers and their children being shot to pieces by the Travniki man. So again. The question arises here, do we see these Ukrainians here as the Ukrainian as a whole, or do we see them as ethnic Swiss from a Templar region? Because this Travniki man, they only came from Western Ukraine. And, uh, you know, 98% of the Ukrainians they have nothing to do with this. And it's not, I'm not exaggerating. 98%, they didn't have anything to do with this. Ukrainian people as a, as a whole, they had nothing to do with this. So it's again where the Swiss are and the Knights Templars, Volhynia, Galicia, uh, Western Ukraine. And this is very important. I mean, people have been given a name and a nation, but within the nation, you know, there's, there are a whole lo lot more ethnic minorities within the nation. I mean, history has been going on, you know, like, I mean, if you look at the last 2000 years of history in the Ukraine, there's so many things have been going on. So many people coming there, settling, going away and, and, uh, if we don't understand this, you know, we never understand it, you know. So I already explained now how to see the Travniki man and the Ukrainian collaboration with the Nazis. I mean, it's ethnic Swiss, Western Ukraine, Knights Templars. Here we can read about the German atrocities committed against Soviet prisoners of war. And uh, same thing as today, uh, they were taken prisoners because they didn't have any guns, they didn't have any equipment, they didn't have any ammunition. And we see this happening again, people. And if you don't know the history, it will happen again, because history repeats itself, because it's always the same, having all the power. And here it says, it's estimated that at least 3.3 million Soviet prisoners of war died in Nazi custody out of 5.7 million. Uh, we see it happening again. You know? Why? Because we don't know the history. And um, um, so the Travniki men, you know, they were inside here and they were going to die. Here you see the Travniki men. Here's Mr. Himmler. Ethnic Swiss, You're almost living in Switzerland, You're living, his parents came from, from the Swiss border. Uh, look at them, oh, no food, they were dying. So Mr. Himmler is telling this, uh, you know, this uh, Ukrainian, like, you want to die here slowly and miserably? Or do you want to put on a Nazi uniform? Well, you all know what happened. And uh, th this is how they made the Travniki man. And uh, so we didn't have any choice either. Hey, look at it. The whole sea of peoples. This is where the word comes from. A sea of peoples. Here you see a sea of peoples. This is what it says in the Bible when Pharaoh and his army disappeared in the sea. The sea, the Red Sea, you know, during the Exodus, it never opened up. This is how they write the old books, you know, using a lot of comparisons. 
And so that means Pharaoh disappeared within the sea of peoples, in, in between, you see. Travniki man. So, so he, he was taken out here. Okay, you're going to be a Travniki man. You're not going to die. Oh, yeah, I made it. Yeah, you know, like they didn't have any choice either, you know. Yeah, Russian soldiers going to be butchered like the rest, uh, like the other ones in the trains. You see, these are all from the east. Of, uh, of the Soviet Republic, or nowadays they call it the, uh, oh, I forgot the name, the Russian Federation. Oh, you see the same faces, you know, who are pushed to fight in the Ukraine, so they, they die. And the same thing, you know, the Nazis had, in the beginning of the war, they had better equipment, they had better guns, uh, better uniforms. It's the same as the Ukrainians now today, you know, having better equipment, better uniforms. The Russian soldiers today, they even take the, the boots of the Ukrainian soldiers because it's, it's American quality. It's the same thing happening again, people. They're over and over again. Now look at this. These, these are no jaywalkers. These are Soviet soldiers and the Travniki men, they didn't want to end like this. They got starved to death. So they became a, a concentration camp prison guard themselves. And they were the worst, maybe because they lived through all this. I don't know how to say. If people live through this, you know, they want to pay it back somehow, but they don't know whom. So most people, they pay back, you know, at the, at the weakest, children, women, uh, people who stand alone, who can't defend themselves. Hey, Swissy, that's what you did with me and my family, Swissy. I'm not going to forgive that, Swissy. I'm not going to forget it either. So, the ethnic Swiss in the Ukraine. And you know, it's not a coincidence that it's all coming from that era, from that part of the Ukraine again. That's not a coincidence. Hey, Swissy. So history shows clearly that the Ukrainian people never really collaborated with the Nazis that there are no Nazis in the Ukraine, except in the western part of the Ukraine, where the Knights Templars settled down, and in the centuries after, imported their Swissy alliance into western Ukraine. And of course, the nobility factor, which I already explained, with the Ukrainian fleur de lis. Now let's call it the Ukrainian fleur de lis of Volodymyr the Great Fornicator. The Russians could have easily invaded the Ukraine through Belarus, Belarus, as they already did here, like here into the western Ukraine, but they didn't. It would have been very strategically, you know, to invade here and like from the east and uh, squeeze them all in here and then end up in Kiev where the center is. But they didn't. Therefore, once again, the Ukraine war of 2022 only happens in the east and northeast, just as the Holodomor and the events of World War II. Why? Well, the answer is quite clear now. Who are behind all these endless wars? Octogon of the Nazi Templars and their base in the Alps, to whom also the Black Prince put in belongs 
which I've already explained to you in previous videos. There's only one way to stop this eternal terror on the Ukrainian people and on the whole of humanity, and that is to eliminate the Nazi Templar Octogon of the Alps, where Russians and Ukrainians should unite in this endeavor. Hey, Swissy, ain't that so? So watch this video here, Octogon, the Empire of Darkness, on channel Gatsafrat. I'll put the link in the description. The Octogon Nazi Templars also had another very powerful organization by the end and after World War II and operating out of Switzerland, the head of the beast. And this very dangerous Nazi organization was called after a big Ukrainian city, Odessa. The Odessa organization for O-D-E-S-S-A, in German, Organisation der ehemaligen SS-Angehörigen, meaning the organization of former SS members, which was a Swiss post-war Nazi organization that helped Nazi war criminals escape to South America. The notorious Swiss police chief of Bern, the capital of Switzerland, by the name of Heinrich Rotmund, whom you can see here, meaning Henry Redmouth, as in Rothschild, the Red Shield. He organized the Nazi Red Line, you know, going to South America for uh, Nazi war criminals. So Heinrich Rotmund organized the Nazi Red Line via the old Templar ways through the mountains, which the Swiss immigrants into the Ukraine have taken for at least thousands of years now since the Templars' settlements into the Ukraine and out of Switzerland, which I explained to you just before. So here it says in German, Der Chef der Polizeiabteilung im Eidgenössischen Justiz und Polizei Departement. And this is what he did. I'm, I'm not allowed to pronounce like these names here, like this here, because my uh, video will be taken off if I do so, because of the censorship by these people, the jaywalkers, which is very wrong, in my opinion, to do so. You know, now one of the consequences of that is that I cannot use and these words here and say what I wanted to say. So, I mean, the Second World War, it's so important and so many bad and ugly things happened and genocides. So it, it's very bad, you know, to by the jaywalkers to, uh, to destroy the um, uh, freedom of speech concerning these sort of things. And, I happen to be one of those persons who have nothing against jaywalkers, as you know. So, and even me, I'm being censored because of this. I'm auto-censored, sort of. And this is very wrong. Very, very wrong. It's the first human right. You do not censor freedom of speech. Final point. So here he is. So I hate Nazis and what they did. I try to help little Nazis because they don't know any better, but the big Nazis, I just want to grab them, yeah. And this is a big Swiss Nazi, Heinrich Rothmund. There he is, Roth, like Rothschild, you know. 
and uh, he invented this here as well. I'm not I'm not allowed to pronounce that, so you can read it yourself. Uh, let you read this yourself. That was a Swiss invention. This this thing here. This the. Oh, I'm not even allowed to say that. And then the Germans, they took it over, but the Swiss invented this, this here, to put the letter J on the, on the passport. And for a man, this name here in front of their uh, surname, and for a woman, another name starting with an S. I'm not even going to pronounce that. I, well, are you happy now? With the censorship, I not good, not good, not good. Why the name Odessa for this Nazi red line organization? Well, because Odessa has a big port, so the Nazi war criminals could board a ship to South America and through Operation Paperclap also into the US. And secondly, because from the 17th century onwards, there has been another flow of Swissies into the Ukraine's region of Dniester Liman, where the Ukrainian port of Odessa is situated. So here you see the Black Sea, Odessa. So the Nazi war criminals, they boarded a ship here and they went through the, uh, the Bospor here and they could take the ship uh, to South America, probably went to the Suez Canal. Canal. And this is what I told you, the old ways. This here is Swaziland. Already in the 17th century, 400 years ago, or and before, in uh, in the year 1100, the Knights Templars, they went this way here through the mountains of Austria, Slovakia, and they settled down here in Western Ukraine. And then in the 17th century, they needed, these Templars needed some Swiss dairy farmers and all that. So they took them along with this ancient route that they have been knowing for at least thousand years, from Austria, Slovakia, into Western Ukraine, and here into uh, Bessarabia. But there was also a flow of Swissies going into the Dniester Liman, which is like here where Odessa is. Dniester Liman, apparently, it's a delta um, uh, of a river. So these are the two reasons for the O-D-E-S-S-A, the Organisation de Ehemalige SS Angehörigen, which of course the bulk of the Ukrainian people, they have absolutely nothing to do with this. So again, the bulk of the Ukrainian people and of Odessa, they've got absolutely nothing to do with the Organisation de Ehemalige SS Angehörigen, except for a minority which comes out of the uh, out of the Knights Templars in Western Ukraine and um, the ethnic Swiss of um, of the Ukraine. So I think honestly we can cleanse the Ukrainian people of this uh, this terrible Nazi accusations of uh, of the Nazi himself, Mr. Putin, a Swiss sleeper agent. So for these two Swiss reasons, the Nazi Templar organization was called Odessa. Reason number one, there was Heinrich Rothmund, the police chief of Bern, who um, took the, um, who organized for the Nazi war criminals to go to the port of Odessa. Number one Swiss reason and number two Swiss reason for the name of Odessa is the uh, Swiss ethnic minority brought there by the 
Knights Templars in the Niesta Limon region where Odessa is situated. Well, here is about in the Wikipedia about the Odessa organization. Here it says Odessa is an American code name. Well, which is wrong. It was taken over by the Americans, uh, but it was a, a Nazi code name and not an American code name. I have to be precise here. Eh? From the German Organisation der ehemalige SS Angehörigen. Well, here's the meaning. Um, to cover Nazi underground escape plans at the end of World War II by a group of SS officers with the aim of facilitating secret escape routes and any directly ensuing arrangement well, to Argentina, the Middle East, and, uh, uh, and passing the town of Odessa, which not many people know. I know this because I infiltrated the, uh, the Octagon uh, organization of the Nazi Templars in Switzerland. And here it says, and the Swiss authorities um, through a secret office set up by Peron's agents in Bern, Switzerland. Well, you can read the whole sentence for yourself. Uh, I'll let you read the whole article. I'm not going to uh, read it for you. Anyway, there are many words I can't pronounce anyway, so... Now, oh, this is interesting. During the Watergate scandal, Gord and Liddy referred to the White House plumbers as Odessa in reference. And remember the Watergate scandal, eh? there was um, Bob Haldeman, a Swiss uh, bloodline, the Haldeman bloodline. I made a video about this on my channel, Gure. And uh, here it says, Die Spinner. Yeah, the Spinner was a post-World War II organization thought to have helped certain Nazi war criminals escape justice. Its existence is still debated today. Well, I can guarantee you it exists. It is believed by some historians to be a different name of Odessa. No, it's not. An organization established during the collapse of Nazi Germany. I'll explain you later why they call it the Spinner. It means the spider, yeah. So here again in the website Swiss Abroad on uh, Wikipedia, I show you how the Swissies, how they went to um, uh, Niesta Liman. Here, here it is. So in Russia, significant, significant emigration of Swiss people to the Russian Empire occurred from the late 17th to the late 19th century. The late 18th century and early 19th century saw a flow of Swiss farmers forming colonies such as Saba, Bess Arabia, which I explained to you before, and or at the Niesta Liman, now part of uh, Ukraine. The Russian Swiss generally, pro generally prospered, partly merging with a German diaspora populations, well, etc. So here you can see this. Oh, here you can see that. Uh, Niesta Estri or Niesta Liman is a, a Liman formed at the point where the river Niesta flows into the Black Sea. It is located in Ukraine in Odessa Oblast. So the Swissies, they went to Odessa, right? Next to the other region in Bessarabia. So because Odessa is not Bessarabia. So there were there were, there were more, more flows of Swissies emigrating into the Ukraine. Um, not only Bessarabia, also Niesta Liman, and there are probably more. We can be sure uh, about. So here, we can see once more where the second flow of Swissies, where they emigrated to in this area, this here, um, I don't know how far it's extended, but at least Odessa belongs to it. It's called the uh, Niesta Liman. So Liman is the uh, estuary and um, Niesta 
is apparently a river. So I guess it's this river here, which is flowing here, like into the uh, into the Black Sea. Sometimes they write Odessa with one S. And for us, like uh, I, I guess this is the uh, the Ukrainian way. And for Germans and Swiss Germans, it is with a double S and also for Americans and English and the rest of your lot. So that's why they call it the Odessa organization. There are at least two reasons. There's another reason, but I can't tell you this now. If Zelensky here would really be the man for which he's selling himself to be, then for all the work I'm doing here for the Ukrainian people, he should give me some sort of Ukrainian medal. But I fear that instead of that, he will most likely give me the finger and even honor me with the fingers in plural as you can see here i had a video on that swiss nazi police chief heinrich rotmund from 10 years ago which swissy managed to make fucktube deleted and now gone forever and in the video I even went to the former address of the Swiss Nazi police chief Heinrich Rotmund in the Marktgasse number 49 in Bern, in the capital of Switzerland. So, which you can read here. Intelligent files of the Bern police department show that the secret Nazi emigration office was located the Nazi emigration office that was Odessa, right? Die Spinne. And was located at Marktgasse 49 in downtown Bern, the Swiss capital. And I went there. And I had a whole, I had a very long video about it. And now it's gone. And um, so there was some more. Yet, um, I hear, I hear they talk, additional evidence is contained in post-war diplomatic correspondence between Switzerland and Argentina. The documents refer, reveal that the head of the Swiss Federal Police, Heinrich Rotmund, and the former Swiss intelligence officer, Paul Schaufelberger, participated in the activities of the illegal Argentine Emigration Service in Bern. They're behind it all. And I had to do with this Swiss federal police. And they still follow the same old Nazi tradition. I tell you, nothing has changed. Eh? So this is an interesting uh, document here. I'll try to go to the top here somewhere. And uh, so you can read it all. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll just punch pause. I'll just go here like. You punch pause and read it. I go here. I hope you get it all. And uh, there's a lot of information in it about the uh, about the Swiss Odessa, the Spinner Octagon. I mean, I could tell you more about it, but. Um, the video would be getting too long. It's already quite long now. And uh, I wouldn't like to waste more of your time, eh? Well, it's going on a little bit more, but uh, uh, there's some more about uh, Klaus Barbie. Uh, he also, Klaus Barbie, he also went, uh, there's some more down here, but um, I guess it's okay like this. Eh? He also uh, went through the um, Heinrich Rotmund uh, Swiss Odessa red lines. So here's some more about the Swiss Odessa red line, Die Spinner, 
into um, uh, Argentina. It says the Swiss chief of police Heinrich Rotmund and the Croatian priest Konoslav Draganovic also helped organize the red line. And together with this guy Ante Pavlic, extremely dangerous guy. Uh, he also uh, he's from the Ustasha, who still exists. And they are being, it's, you know, here they, they talk about the Operation Paperclip, of course. And uh, which was a, also a Swiss operation, you know, to get all the Nazis uh, at all the uh, key positions in the US, like the CIA, like uh, the first director, he was Swiss, uh, Alan Dulles. So I'll let you read everything here. Just punch pause. It all boils down to Switzerland, eh? Everything, even the name Odessa. And uh, why they chose that name. Operation Paperclip. And, you know, so they were in Argentina, the US. Now, apparently, they're all in Russia. And of course, there was also a. Um, I see the whole thing is not on it, but here you can see it yourself. Just punch pause and uh, just search for Juan Peron. Per on. Per, it means the royal house in demotic on is Osiris. It's another pharaoh. To this very day, the Swiss police follow up to their ancient Nazi tradition, which me and my family had to find out the hard way. Me and my family, with three very young children at the time, we have lived under Swiss mob rule for 25 years now, still going on today, and with no end in sight. The Swiss Nazi Polizei even seem to be proud of their extended Nazi prolongation, still applied in Switzerland and executed by the Swiss Nazi police as you can see in these videos here. Title Intimidation Swiss Anti-Terrorist Squad Arrest Sean Ross on the channel Gatsafrats. Nothing has ever changed in Switzerland since World War II and it needs some real Nazi hunting in this octagon paradise in the Alps. The Nazi Red Line, organized by the Swiss and their Odessa organization, was also called Die Spinne in German, meaning the spider, because a spider has eight legs, as in Octogon of the Nazi Templars, who are sitting like a big fat eight-legged Swiss spider in a huge centralized Nazi Templar spider's web in the secure Alpine stronghold, covering the whole of Europe and stretching out to the entire world. And you all see, well here's about Switzerland, how the spider's leg is stretching out until the Ukraine and passing right over where Odessa is, which is right here. So here you can read about the spinner, the spider. And I'll read it for you. The spinner, German for the spider, was a post-World War II organization thought to have helped certain Nazi war criminals escape justice. Its existence is still debated today. It is believed by some historians to be a different name or a branch of Odessa. 
an organization established during the collapse of Nazi Germany, similar to Kameranwerk and Der Bruderschaft, devoted to helping German war criminals flee Europe. So I can tell you it was part of the Odessa because as I just told you, the Spinner is um, the eight-legged spider and it stands for octagon. Similarly, Pharaoh's Nazi Templars always use European nationalists for their own financial wars, only to dispose themselves of the European nationalists after use. And when the movement has been set up and rolling, just as Hitler had all the real German nationalists murdered by his Nazis in the night of the long knives in 1934. It says the night of the long knives. And here you see the Nazis, this is Nazism, and they murdered nationalism. Only these nationalist guys, they're not very smart and they didn't understand until it was too late that these Nazis, they were in fact their enemy. So Nazism is not the same as nationalism, as the lying media wants you to think so. Here you can see some uh, uh, newspaper articles from 1934 about how the Nazis got rid of the nationalists. Hitler puts most trusted friend before firing squad. Here, 1934, July the 1st. So big revolt against Hitler. Well, that was uh, stormtroop leader shot dead. I did it on Hitler's orders. So this means, you know, we all know Hitler was a Nazi, yeah? And so that means the ones he killed, they could not have been Nazis. I mean, logical, isn't it? So what were they? Well, they were German nationalists and they woke up too late as it's happening again and ever again and again because our masters are so formidable intelligence and superior to these dumb nationalists. You know, they try good, but they do wrong. You know, they don't understand. So, so nationalism is not the same as Nazism. They are each other's enemies, as you can see here. So this is by the Bethlehem Globe Times, wherever that is, in 1934. Believe 500 are killed in German revolt. Hitler, well, we know now it were, uh, there were thousands killed. Eh? Hitler in relentless executions kills off leaders in attempt to suppress the second revolution. So the people try to rise up, you know, the German people, but uh, you know, they were not smart enough. A German is in fact not smart enough against the pharaonic masters of pharaohs, nobility and their Nazi Templars. The nationalists, they think they're smart, but they're not smart enough. And Stalin did the same. And also in the year of 1934, when he had all the Bolsheviks murdered by the communists, where we can read nationalist for Bolshevik and Nazi for communist. And I repeat, because this is very important, we can read nationalist for Bolshevik and Nazi for communist. This was exactly the same thing what happened in the purge in Germany in 1934 when the nationalist movement by the people got murdered by the Nazis. 
by Pharaoh's nobility. So the Bolshevik, they were, it was a workers' movement by the people against the Tsars and their abuse on the people. And they got murdered by the communists who are Nazis by the Tsarist um, realm of Pharaoh, of course. And this was also the end of the myth of Jay Walker communism because Stalin whacked them all in 1934, also starting in 1934 and in 1938, which you can see in this video here on the same channel, which I made a couple of years ago. The same channel here, this is the title, the Corona Agenda by United Templar Order of Salahuddin Caliphate. There you are. Um, so, here you can see it. You know, it's a myth. It's all, it's all, you know, here where there is this yellow star by their king, the Pharaoh King, starting, uh, well, King David was a rapist and a, and a war criminal but these people don't know it you know and, you know well anyway all these jaywalkers like leon trotsky murdered and which st which started in 1934 the same and here grigory zinoviev murdered by stalin they, they got all whacked and uh, this was the um of the 42 members of the Bolshevik party, only seven of them were jaywalkers. So that's not very much. So it's all a myth, you know, that the uh, the jaywalker uh, communist. First of all, a Bolshevik is not a communist. And uh, so here it's written right, the myth of the Jewish Bolshevik, the Bolsheviki. And uh, which is the same myth that the German people are behind the Nazi concentration camps because the party of the German people nationalists, they were also whacked in the same year of 1934. So it was not by the Nazis. So there were Nazi concentration camps and not German people concentration camps. The people didn't even know it. And their party leaders, they got all murdered by the Nazis in 1934. Exactly the same time when the concentration camp started. In 1933, which is also the exact same time when the Gulag started in Russia in 1933, and people, when it's all going like things happening simultaneously, you know there's something fishy going on. As I told you, it's a scientific approach, you know, to do comparisons for the deduction of um, and isolate uh, the the enemy. If the simultaneous things, so look at the Ukrainian war, the moment you see simultaneous stuff going on, you know there's something fishy going on and there's another power, you know, who is behind it all. You know, it's very important to do the scientific comparison. Otherwise, you don't get there. You know? So there's a totally different power. It's nothing to do with the Russian people, the German people or the jaywalker people who are steering the whole thing from, from behind the, the screens. Yeah, and of course, from their base in the Alps. Yeah. So here it says the beginning of the Great Purge, not the Great Purge itself, the beginning. In the beginning, it started in 1933 with concentration camp or the Gulag in Russia which happens to be the very same time as the Nazis in Germany started with the Dachau concentration camp. And it said the same, partly the result of a desire to get rid of, of, um, of drunks, degenerate self-seekers and the lazy. Oh, what a coincidence. It happened the same thing in Germany. The Nazis said the th same thing. We have to get rid of of the asocial people we're gonna let them work we same thing going on eh 
So it's happening simultaneously, meaning Stalin was a friend of Mr. Hitler, and there's a power behind those two, and they, they made a deal, you know, they, uh, an alliance, which we, the normal people, don't even know of. It's the same as Zelensky and Putin and Biden and Macron, they're all big, big pals, all out of the same bloodlines of Pharaoh. And here we see the Nazi concentration camp from 1933 to 1945. And the first camps, here you can read it, were established in March 1933. Oh, where did we see that before? Oh, yes, yeah, Stalin, he did exactly the same. You know, immediately after Adolf Hitler became Chancellor of Germany, following the 1934 purge of the SA. Oh, right. Oh, in Russia, it happened the same. Oh, that's funny, eh? Who ever thought about this, eh? The concentration camps were run exclusively by the SS, so by the Nazis, and not by the German nationalists who were all dead and murdered in the night of the long knives. So the German people, they are not behind it, people. It's the Nazi Templars and the bases Switzerland in the Octagon Alps. Uh, by the SS via via the concentration camps inspectorate and later the SS main economic and ad administrative office well etc etc you can find it yourself you read it yourself but at the moment things are going simultaneously compare people compare compare it's scientifically this is the only way to make a deduction and uh, to isolate the uh, the enemy, and to isolate the um, the answer to the question, right? It's the same as comparing the simultaneous arrival of the pyramids with the disappearance of these beautiful mammoths, in order to find out the whodunit part of the equation while using the deductive mindset. So here you see Lenin's general staff of 1917 and only Stalin, the executioner, alone remains. Here yeah, there are eight times three, 24 people. They got all whacked. So these were Russian nationalists, the Bolsheviki, and they wanted something better for the Russian people. They got all whacked in starting 1934. So concentration camp starting 1933, both in Germany and Russia, and the purges, they started in 1934. Uh, with the Night of the Long Knives in Germany in 1934, and in Russia, the peak of the purge in 1938. So I'm anticipating your question already here. So Sean, you said that Lenin, he was in Switzerland 20 years. So isn't he then the bad guy? And um, because he was in Switzerland where he got organized and taught and Stalin so killed the bad guy. So how does that fit in? Yeah. Stalin bad, and um, Octagon in the Alps bad, and Lenin bad. How does that fit? Well, I answered you. I answer that for you right away because I know your questions. It's quite easy. The evil ones are masters, as I just told you before. They use European nationalism in those days against the nobility and the Tsars only so they only use European uh, white race nationalism if you if you want so only to put up a movement and after the use of the um, of the European nationalists by the nobility then they all kill him when the movement is in is, is moving when it's all and we can see the same thing in russia today which um so these people were just misused and afterwards they were all murdered 
in Russia, in Germany, and we can see the same thing happening now today, which I'm going to explain to you in a moment. So here you see the Wikipedia page about the Great Purge. And here it says, by 1934, you know, the same year when the Night of the Long Knives happened in Germany, several of Stalin's rivals, such as Trotsky, began calling for Stalin's removal and attempted to break his influence over the party. So it's absolutely at this moment, completely simultaneously as in Germany, in 1934 that the big purge it started so i don't want it's quite long i don't want to scroll down everything uh, you can find it yourself the great purge and uh read about it and um so i have to go down with this video eh? so here the great purge in russia occurred in the 1930s so not everything happened during the peak in 1938 you know, it was a little bit of purging here and a little bit of purging there. But it started in 1934, just as in Germany, and the concentration camps both in Russia and in Germany in 1933, you know, to get rid of the drunks, the asocial, exactly the same uh, pretext. So Stalin removed the old Bolsheviks and other opponents by putting them on trial and condemning them to death. Stalin also purged many army officers, diplomats, union officials, party members, intellectuals, and numerous ordinary citizens, you know, numerous ordinary citizens, you know, the normal people and those who, by the people, because of the revolution, there were many of 1917, there were many ordinary slaves, normal Russians who were at key positions. So the nobility, they had to get rid of them. Army officers, diplomats, union officials, party members, intellectuals. Just get rid of them. An estimated 8 million Russians were sent to the gulags from which they never returned. Oh, that's quite a lot, eh? 8 million. It's the same as uh, 8 million Ukrainians now who had to leave their country. And uh, in the diaspora, just as the jaywalkers. That's a smart thing, just to leave. That's a wise thing. That's a very wise thing. How big do you think chances are that Hitler and Stalin were working together in this genocide on the white race when both Stalin and Hitler had their nationalists murdered in the very same year of 1934 and at the very same time. Yes, the Bolsheviks were nationalists working for the people of Russia against the Tsarist abuse. And the very same thing happened in Germany. And now, Mr. Putin, whom you can see here, squeezed in together in the oval. Here are two circles, and this is the oval, the Vesica Piscas. And here we can see Putin doing the very same thing today. Therefore, when the Nazi Putin had the ultra-nationalist Darya Dugana murdered, and apparently aiming her nationalist father, Alexander Dugin. I thought by myself, same old story. There we go again. As always, the Nazis killing the nationalists after use. I read it for you. Resistance to the regime, 1933-39. You know, Nazis here in Germany. Canaris, that was, I think, Wilhelm Canaris. He was the um, a naval officer of the naval intelligence. He was an admiral, just like my grandfather. Naval, naval, my, my grandfather was British naval intelligence, and this is German. So, Canar, I read for you. Canaris supported German nationalism but regarded the Nazis as gangsters. You see, even this man, an admiral, 
he saw the difference between German nationalism and the nationalists and the Nazis. And that was, you know, he knew that what happened in 1934, the Night of the Long Knives, when these gangsters, you know, of the Swiss mob, mob rule by the Knights, by the Nazi Templars, they murdered all the nationalists. So he regarded nationalism, he um, supported nationalism, but regarded the Nazis as gangsters perfectly well. That's why they murdered him in 1945, eh? because the Nazis won the war. He is believed to have passed information to UK and US spies. Canaris also helped the jaywalkers to leave Germany, often by giving them fake papers, claiming they were up there agents. That is the um, uh, secret service up there, like uh, MI5, MI6 stuff, you know, like uh, or the Office of Strategic Services. And he was executed in 1945. So there's a difference between nationalism and gangsters. And this guy was not a Nazi, he was a German nationalist. So Nazism is not the same as nationalism, as Nazism is the enemy of nationalism, because Nazism kills the people, the nation, which nationalism is trying to defend. Whereas Nazism is by the masters and nationalism against the masters. Therefore, Nazism, a tactical reaction, reaction on nationalism, the latter being an extreme danger for the masters, who therefore need Nazism to take over nationalism which very unfortunately the masters have succeeded in very successfully. Dear people, we will only have peace and justice in the world when we clean up ourselves the octagon Nazi Templar nest and their global mob rule in their alpine utopia. Playtime is over, Swissy. In the evening, when I'm done working on my videos during the day, I like to relax, stop thinking, and watch a movie on Netflix or something else. And even there, I can't really relax my mind and see loads of secret messages and occult symbolism, of which I reveal some in this video here. This movie called The Exorcism of Emily Rose is based upon the true story of Annalisa Michel during the 70s in Bavaria, Germany, who started to wake up between 3 and 4 in the night, which officially is the demon hour. So if you wake up at 3 every night, you know there's something wrong and you must act immediately like finding another place to sleep, move to another town and change your habits before it's too late. As in the case of Annalisa, who in the end was possessed by six demons and died from exhaustion at the age of 19. So here you can see a genuine picture of Annalisa 
and how she was possessed. The demon hour or devil's hour between three and four is of course related to the concept of three for the compass and the concept of four for the square which you can see here the circle for the compass and the square is here there are four squares in it so this here says square and compass which is not a coincidence and why do Freemasons have the concept of three and four, their compass and square? Well, the letter G, of course. Like the Freemason G, dominating the demon hour, starting at three in the morning, referring to our masters and their triangle hierarchy of Pharaoh's pyramid and ending at 4 a.m. for the square, down at the pyramid, where the grass grows and the sheeple graze. The 324 demon hour is an interdimensional gate letting demons into our realm by the same evil powers that created Freemasonry and their concept of three and four. I'll explain it one more time for you. So we start, this is the demon hour enclosed here in the middle by the three, this is the three and starting at three from the top down and here the four. So in between the three, this is the concept of three and the concept of four at 4 a.m. and between 3 a.m. is the demon hour with the G here. So I'll explain it one more time. The compass is about 60 degrees, and with 60 degrees, you can make an equilateral triangle with three equal lengths, like the side of the pyramid almost. And each angle has about 60 degrees, so they call it the concept of three, because there are three angles, three corners, and three sides and they the concept of three are our masters because it's the hierarchy it's the side the triangle the side of the pyramid so this is them it starts with them at 3 a.m to control the slaves the ones who might have a connection a divine connection so they get attacked like in between three and four and some people have to change places every night you know because of this or they should and then this is us this is 90 degrees with 90 degrees you can make a square which has four angles four corners and four sides so they call it the, the, the concept of four this is 4 a.m in the morning where it ends and which is also the the base of a pyramid where we are, where the sheep are grazing. So it ends, the demon hour, it ends like with the, with the slaves, with the concept of four. They are magicians, you know. The first weapon is the lie, anyway. So this is a perfect representation of the demon hour. Our master is starting at three a.m. and ending with us attacking us the slaves at 4 a.m. it's not a coincidence and 3 plus 4 is 7 and the g happens to be the seventh letter in the alphabet and that's this is why the number seven is the holy number like in the bible and the bible is a pharaonic book 
except maybe the book of revelations and something happened there you know and uh but especially the old testament it's it's all pharaonic you know king solomon was married with the daughter of pharaoh it says so the um Inri himself he was uh, from the house of david a royal house of kings that's why they put a crown on his head the um, the divine powers whoever you call them they didn't see even the um, existence of any europeans as the bible stops at the mediterranean so you know god does not see everything people use your minds you're going to, you're going to lose this game afterwards you know if you just really believe this religious hocus pocus you have to sort it out what is what you can believe and what you cannot believe so just look at the story of Annalisa she was not protected and she was very devout so this is the concept of three this is where the demon hour starts and it ends at with the concept of four at 4 a.m i'll read it for you here Annalisa Michel, a true story of a case of demonic possession, Germany, 1976. And the pictures you're going to see right after, just as the other ones before, they are genuine pictures of the possessed Annalisa Michel from Germany. Annalisa was a very devout Bavarian Christian attending the Holy Mass twice a week. So we can with all certainty assume that she begged this God of the Orient and his Middle Eastern Jesus Christ for help. But all in vain, the God of Egypt and his only son from the royal house of king pharaoh david let her down letting her die the most agonizing death at the altar of this oriental religion around jerusalem in the backyard of pharaoh so this is the picture of her here when she died or probably even when she's already dead it's a genuine picture she begged she prayed and the god of egypt did not help and neither did his son remember nothing good has ever come from the church nothing Annalisa Michel here you can read about her Annalisa Michel she was born on September 21st 1952 there she is lovely girl and here it says here early life born as Anna Elisabeth Michel on September 21st in 1952 in Leibelfing, Bavaria, West Germany, to a Roman Catholic family, Michel was raised along with three sisters by her parents, Joseph and Anna. She was religious and attended Mass twice a week, it says. And she was, uh, Michel, Michel attended the University of Würzburg, and by the way, Würzburg is the place where they where they burned uh, most of the so-called witches in Germany. Um, it's it's very known for that. They burned a lot of good women in Würzburg. Her classmates later described her as withdrawn and very religious. But it was all in vain, no help. So you can read about it, exorcism, prosecution, the death, 
the trial. Oh, there is a doctor here, a psychiatrist, the doctor Richard Roth. Roth, like, oh, well, that rings a bell, doesn't it? Yeah. Annalisa also had stigmata, just I also had twice in my tent. But I survived so far, although death has been near on many occasions. So I filmed this in this video here on my channel Gatsevrats. And I have no idea how that happened. I'll put the link under the um, in the description under the video. The difference is that I fight against this evil instead of praying for my own soul to be saved in this religious hocus pocus ritual. I read it out loud for you here. We should all fight against evil. Evil is intolerable. So how could evil and its demons possibly grab my soul if I myself don't even acknowledge the importance of saving my own selfish soul in the age of egoism? The whole hysterical emphasis on saving your own ego soul has been infiltrated by evil, as you can see here, where it's written, save my soul, with the concept of three and four for the Freemason compass and square in the letter O, and even in the very word soul itself. Here lies, in fact, the crucial point of protecting one's soul. Because if I myself don't even see into that, give it my attention and my energy and focus upon the whole time, then how the hell can any goddamn demon do so? and even find my soul without me leading the way by my own constant focus on it like here it is you all see it with all headlights on it and this is what probably happened to the bavarian annalisa michel going to the Holy Mass twice a week. Don't you ever do this, and especially not in a goddamn church, where you might suck in all sorts of entities from the other realm, while saying with that holy expression on your face, Please, come into my heart and save me. Which is exactly what the forces of evil had been waiting for. So patiently, all these millennia, saying, I'm coming, honey, don't you worry anymore. I'll take care of you from now on onwards and eternally. Damn, I can't even relax in my tent for a moment and quietly watch a good movie without all this running through my brain. Damn. A woman in general is far more susceptible to all this and letting other entities inside 
because she has the ability to conceive another entity and soul inside and communicate with it when she is having a baby, thus inviting another soul inside. A man cannot. Therefore, a man should be the head of the family and close the door for intruders, both physically, spiritual and metaphysically, if necessary, and protect the nest and the frag fragile procreation. This is why in Genesis the snake on Pharaoh's head seeks Eve, the most susceptible one, to open the door to come in and have a peep inside. Here in the 2012 movie Jack Reacher with forever young actor Tom Cruise at around five minutes playtime, an enormous sun hieroglyph, also pronounced hieroglyph, sun hieroglyph, is being shown for an unnecessary and suspicious long time, having absolutely nothing to do with the entire film. Within the middle of the sun hieroglyph, a circle for the compass with a square in it, as in square and compass, or squaring the circle, as Freemasons say. So here you can see all dead people lying around. They just got shot by a sniper. And this is the sun hieroglyph or hieroglyph, with the sun in the middle and two bars on each side. And here there's a square in the middle in the sun for the square and compass, and it's also the base of the pyramid, it's a concept of four. And this here, the circle, is stands for the compass, which is a concept of three. So it's all occult stuff showing in all these uh, videos. And in the next shot, you already see the police storming out a police car with all the um, uh, special police heroes storming out who actually get their orders from these ones here, the square and compass and the sun hieroglyph. Square and compass are the descendants of Pharaoh, the Freemasons, and the whole sun hieroglyph, it's Pharaoh. So here again, you can see the old, the people lying on the, uh, on the ground. Here's in a pool of blood here. Here's a little suitcase. Charming picture, isn't it? And on this pharaonic symbology by the Freemasons, there are dead people, bled to death, lying on it as in a huge blood ritual in an open air Freemason temple, sacrificed by Pharaoh. With the forever young main actor, quite certainly taking the stem cell youth elixir, drinking the blood of three months old unborn babies, keeping them young forever. So you see, this is probably the film Top Gun from 1986. And now 30 years later, he still looks the same. She, by the way, she got a little bit older. <laughs> it's amazing. The vampires that they are. Jack Reacher reaching into the source of eternal youth, which I explained to you here in this video um, two years ago on the same channel here. Here's the title, Youth Elixir of Pharaoh's Vampire Aristocracy Masters of 
alchemy embryonic cells. They do this, people. They really do. I've initiated the world into the sun hieroglyph secret symbol 12 years ago in my film The Pharaoh Show, in which I explained what it means and how it's being used. So here, this is the same thing which, what you just saw uh, on the ground with the dead bodies. In the middle, there's the sun, like in the, uh, in the movie, Jack Reacher, and with two bars on each side. And, and they show it in different ways. You know, I show a couple of different ways they show it even in this video here. So, you can read that text here. It says uh, 2012, but they actually uploaded it in 2010 because it was on my first channel, also called Gyure, which got taken down. And then, um, uh, luckily enough, I, I still, um, or I made another copy on this channel. That's how it was. Yeah. So I uploaded it in October 2010. That was the first video ever I uploaded. So it's called The Pharaoh Show. That was the original title. This I added later on. The Pharaoh Show in the Sun Hieroglyph, or Sun Hieroglyph, as some people say. And in the same occult movie by our masters, at one hour, and 39 minutes on the floor in the elevator a circle with three squares again symbolizing the freemason square and compass or square and circle with four delta secret symbols being seen in many logos and many open air Masonic aristocratic symbols, as I've shown you in a recent video on this channel here. So this is inside the elevator, which you can see part of the door here. And the circle here it stands for the compass, because with the compass you can make a circle. And the square, also the downside of a pyramid, where we are, the you know, they're slaves down at the pyramid, down at the hierarchy, which is the concept of four. There are four corners and four sides. So with the square, which is 90 degrees, you can make this square. And there are four of them here. One, uh, two, and a big one here. Four, this one here. Uh, sorry, three. So which is again also the concept of three and only one square is the concept of four. And then we have got these things here, what I've shown in a recent video called uh, humanity uh, getting delta all the time over and over again, something like that. It's, it can be seen a lot of times this symbol here and it has a meaning, it all has a meaning. Well, I mean, why do they put this in an elevator and show it in this video? And they showed a very long time, very suspiciously, you know. It has no meaning in the, in the video. Why show it, you know? They are transmitting messages amongst each other and to their descendants. But humanity is blind. Again, there's a body lying on the occult government logo of our masters, meaning that the Swiss octagon of the Nazi Templars and their Freemason wing have the right to kill us that only their organization can do so and can sacrifice any slave on their occult logos as in a satanic ritual. 
So here you can see the members of the Swiss octagon of the Knights Templars who are suiciding someone. Sometimes they accident someone, a person getting accidented, like thrown out of a window or something. And sometimes they, a person is getting suicided. The body, they probably throw the body also out of a window somewhere or some sort of an accident. This is the Swiss Octogon. This is what they do. Do you need any more proofs? Will you finally stand up? Or are you gonna die on your knees? What's it gonna be? I've given you all the proofs now. How, who, where, origin, main base, their history, their symbols, and their actual hiding place and their names what's it gonna be so it's here in this recent video on the same channel here where i explain their delta symbol another one of their transmission symbols i'll put the link to the video in the description box underneath this video so as you see it's in the same channel homeland security the title is humanity gets deltaed over and over again and we just saw this symbol here in the elevator and it's here also in russia this is america they have the same symbols it's the same people ruling over us and it's also in this here in the pentagram and you just witnessed a woman getting deltaed in an elevator in a so-called innocent looking hollywood video which is not very innocent at all persons getting deltaed in the video on a Freemason, Knights Templars, Octagon, Occult symbol. Maybe you didn't see it, but it says on their DVD, Tom Cruise is Jack Reacher. The law has limits. He does not. As they just smear it, right into our faces well you know now where that refers to as i've just shown that here it says the law has limits he does not we've just seen it happening you know people getting sacrificed on a freemason symbol they're above the limits the Freemasons, they have a person called the Enforcer, you know, the Reacher. Tom Cruise is Jack Reacher. You know, like he's, they are reaching out where it's not allowed, where we cannot, but they do it. Because the law has limits, but they don't have any limits. You know, this is what they mean. You know, they can suicide us. They can accident us. It happens every day, a couple of times around the globe, you know, people getting accidented, getting suicided. And uh, recently this year, it happened with a uh, French um, uh, billionaire. And um, he got thrown out of a window and he got suicided. If I still have the time, I'll make a video about that. And remember what happened in the elevator. You know the woman getting suicided on one of their logos i repeat for you the law has limits he does not jack reacher they can do whatever they please with the slaves
and these are in the video they are just showing an octagon agent of the Nazi Templars based in Switzerland so look at the Templars V here in the video so here at 2 hours and 31 minutes in the film Schindler's List of 1993 the Nazi train full of jaywalkers going into Auschwitz and again I have to say jaywalkers which is not a bad name it's more like a, um, a compliment and uh, because because of the censorship I cannot use their real name because the machine will take off my video right away so you can see here the Nazi train full of jaywalkers going into Auschwitz and I have to say you tell you that Auschwitz I believe it happened and please do not put me in prison because I might have another idea which I do not so leave me alone okay I've got nothing against the jaywalkers yeah is that okay with you so the train full of jaywalkers going into Auschwitz with the same Templars V as the Nazi Putin is using on his vehicles of the Russian Nazi invasion of the Ukraine as Putin's Nazi code of the octagon is the Black Prince which I explain in this eight hour documentary here on the same channel and I will put the link in the description Homeland Security same channel the Swiss Beast Home of the Devil part 7 Switzerland's sleeper agent put in yeah, the great pals you know, the same lineage and here again in the same movie uh, Schindler's List at 2 hours and 29 minutes the V train the V Templar train of Auschwitz and underneath it says Zwitau Brinlitz Czechoslovakia and Oscar Schindler's hometown I'm sorry I cut that off so here in 1945 you can see the German soldiers defeated disillusioned and defeated not really by the Russian army as you can see here the Russian soldiers they're parading them here in Moscow you see here miles and miles of soldiers they never came back no the Russians didn't defeat them but the Americans did because without the American shipments of tons and tons and tons of war materials the Russians could never have defeated the German army so these are normal German soldiers of the German people um, so the Germans lost the war but the Nazis won the war with everything they hid on looted goods and the various gold reserves in the motherland in the Alps and also Russia had of course its paperclip operation in 1945 of German Nazis legally disappearing into Russia and taking their Templar V as you can see here again with them into Russia which we can now see today everywhere presented on their armor and elsewhere 
so from Schindler's list and the V train of the Nazi Templars of Octogon to today's Russia's Nazi Templar V tanks and armored cars of the victorious Nazi Templars victorious over to world wars and their equally victorious octagon bays in the Alps. So here you can see the Templars V in the pharaonic colors of white, blue and red during one of the Black Prince Putin his recent hysterical war propaganda speeches in Moscow. Pharaoh had three crowns, the white crown of the Berhet White House of Upper Egypt, the red crown of the Bertasser Red House of Lower Egypt, and the blue war crown of which all pharaonic royal crown colors can be seen here in the Black Prince, his Templar V. So here you can see it white for the White House per hat crown, the blue war crown, and the red per tasser, the red house crown in the Templar V here happening in Moscow with Putin standing here probably and uh, it's all war propaganda nothing has changed the last 2000 years they're on both sides and it's still happening today actually now during the Ukraine war and here you can see Russian children forcibly being indoctrinated with Putin's Nazi ideology, forced to draw the Nazi Templar V, also used by the Nazis in World War II, who also forcibly indoctrinated Germany's youth with the very same Nazi Templar filth from their motherland in the Alps. Nazism of the 21st century. The Nazis never went away. Nazism of the 20th century. Same thing. 21st century, 20th century. Same thing on the other side by this pharaonic Mars murderer with his Templar V. As each war gets controlled by the same enemy within on both sides. Look, it's the same V Putin is using, the Nazis are using, V for victory. Well, who, victory for whom? Victory for the enemy within who are getting stronger and stronger while the peoples are fighting each other. Pharaoh, the Freemasons and the Templars getting stronger, stronger, stronger. By each war they put us in. More about this nobility war criminal later on in the video. V for victory, the Templars victory in the pharaonic colors, red, white and blue, just as today. And here he gives a transmission of the White House per head, horizontal rule, new world order, which is in fact the meaning of uh, transmitting the information with a white handkerchief in the left breast where the heart is. I mean a handkerchief 
can be any color, right? Here the Templar V, Pharaonic colors, united, we stand, as in the Templar saying, one for all and all for one. Uno pro uno, unus pro omnibus, omnes pro uno. Or where we go one, we go all. It's all the same thing, it's the same people, and it's 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 never gonna end, eh? Even Russia's Indians love Putin's Nazi symbology, believing the advantage for these Russian Indians, believing Putin's empty promises in genuine Nazi style. What a great world we're living in, eh? Swissy. Here you can see um, concentration camps in South Africa by the British nobility. Here are some pictures. This is the concentration camp. There they are, even children. And this is what they did to them just before they died, she died as well. So the first concentration camps in modern history were in South Africa from 1899 to 1902, when the British nobility massacred 28,000 white South African bore children and their mothers. In the nobility's concentration camps by the Baron Lord Kitchener. Here he is, the first Baron Horatio Herbert Kitchener, the first Earl Kitchener was an Anglo-Irish senior, has nothing to do with Ireland. This is Pharaoh's nobility. This guy was a baron and an earl. Uh, the first Viscount Alfred Milner, the High Commissioner for Southern Africa from 1897 onwards. There he is, Alfred Milner. And he was also one of the four authors of the Belfer Declaration. It's a mass murderer, this one here, the first Viscount Milner. And there was the, the third Marques. You can see Lord Kitchener again here. Now here's a picture of Lord Kitchener. There's all horrible person and this one here the third marquis of Salisbury Robert Arthur Talbot Gascoigne well that's French eh Cécile the Prime Minister and Foreign Secretary of England They're all aristocrats Uh, there he is, the third Marquis of Salisbury, Talbot Gaston Cécile. As I told you, you know, the uh, French is the original uh, language of the nobility, Pharaoh's nobility in Europe. So here I've shown you three of these. Um, the um the high nobility who made the concentration camps in uh, southern africa in south africa actually so yeah you can read about it and also the v symbol was there when the concentration camps were made by the british nobility and in fact, Lord Winston Churchill was there 
helping to build the concentration camp. He is a son, he was a son of a duke and born in Blenheim Castle. And the concentration camps were, of course, organized by many, many more other aristocrats of the worldwide pharaohs. There's the V symbol again. It's being used today. And here again, we can see Churchill's or Lord Aristocrat Churchill's V for victory in a much older symbol. And here, of course, is the circle for the compass. There are four other circles here, and this, in fact, is the sun hieroglyph. It's a circle with a dot in it, which is the official hieroglyph for the sun. And it looks like a sun. Here it says 666, and there are seven. Um, it's, it's a seven pointed star because that's the concept of three and four, like the G is the seventh letter in the alphabet. And uh, there are four rings here. The ring in itself is the concept of three, and there are four. So it says three and four. That's why there are seven um, uh, point. It's a seven pointed star here. And this is the downward pyramid, the inverse pyramid, like in Auschwitz, um, you know, to um, for all the different uh, variations of um, of prisoners in there. And of course, the colors are red and white for the Knight Templars. And it says in hoc signo vinces. We're going to have a look what it means. So this is all related to Churchill. Eh? So here you can see Lord Winston Churchill signing the damn thing here. Probably signing to kill all the jaywalkers in Auschwitz with this inversed pyramid here. The pyramid of death. And here it says, in hoc signo vinces. Look at the expression on his face. <laughs> Doesn't look good, eh? And here are the, uh, the V symbol here. The seven pointed stars uh, with the sun hieroglyph in the middle. It's exactly the same thing. So, this here is about in hoc signo vinces. It means in this sign thou shalt conquer. Vinces is conquer, like in the French vank. Signo is, of course, the symbol or sign, you know, that says sign. Yeah, it's, it's a say sign. Um, in hoc signo vinces, in this sign thou shalt conquer. And it is from uh, 200 and, or 300 before uh, Christ. So it's still in the Pharaonic era. And they, uh, they adhere it to the, uh, to the Christian religion here, which is of course, well, Religion is just another tool to uh, to indoctrinate our minds into not defending oneself and etc etc. That some some uh, power in the skies is going to save you and whatever. Uh, this is interesting because it says also on a on a Portuguese coin in hoc no signo vinces. And why? Because the entire Templars fleet, it went to, well, one part, it went to um, to Portugal. There's a lot of Templar stuff, and I filmed for you when I was in Spain, a lot of it. This is from 1721. And this is another way to make a Templar's cross. And we can all see the Swiss cross in the middle, which also the Nazis had on there. In this way, they had it on their tanks remember and here it says um uh, in hoc here yeah? in hoc signo vinces you know it's it's all templar stuff here again the v, the v symbol of the knights templars here the upside down v it's also being used templar crosses all over and it's all related to the crown this is the old world's order, and this here is the new world's order. This is the vertical rule, where they all come from, and this is the horizontal rule. It's, 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 everything is in it. 
So now you know what it means. In hoc signo vinces, and Mr. Churchill, the uh, the mass murderer, the the war criminal, he was entirely into this, you know, transmitting it to his own people. And for you, it's all a mystery why he was doing it, and people just copy it. Oh, that's so nice. We're all gonna do it. Yeah, let's do it together. Oh, isn't that lovely? Stupid slaves, I. Eh? We may therefore assume that the German concentration camps only 30 years later after the nobility's concentration camps in South Africa and the concentration camps from 1933 onwards in Germany were also the work of Pharaoh's nobility. This time, the German nobility, who are the same pharaonic Per A, big house family, with the British nobility. And you see the, the V train, Putin's V train coming again. Putin or Hitler, it's all the same. So I explain in this video here the nobility world wars on my channel Gure, the other channel, how deeply involved the German high nobility were in the Second World War. And I explain, I have explained in another video, but I don't remember which one, or it, I don't even remember the channel. Um, one of the reasons for which the German high nobility wanted to exterminate the all the jaywalkers because the German high nobility there was the vertical feudal rule of Pharaoh and who didn't want to mix their slaves they were so satisfied with their German slaves they were good workers and, you know they just drink their beer and they're happy and so they didn't want the mixture of all the peoples which we see today, the big melting pot of the bare head White House, the new world of the new world, uh, the order of the new world overseas in America. And uh, the whole mixture of races and religions of the, the new world or the horizontal rule system of the Knights Templars. So they, uh, they transmitted that to the rest of the nobility who didn't want to listen. And finally, they did this final solution. They waited long enough, probably hundreds of years. And they said, okay, let's do it. This is enough now. Let's get rid of them. And this is also one of the reasons. So it's, it's fair all over, you know, all over the whole idea. And, behind all the concentration camps, you know. And then there's that internal war making things even worse, not for them, but for us. By the way, the first Vikant, Alfred Milner, was also one of the four authors of the Belfort Declaration from 1917 initiating Zionism for nobility's jaywalker runaway slaves in their 2000 year diaspora. So you can see it, Alfred Milner, the first Viscount and High Commissioner of Southern Africa during the, the, the Boer concentration camps. And you can see it here on my channel here. channel Gure as well, the other channel. The title the nobility got their runaway slaves back from the whom the Republic had chased away. Namely, the British nobility was well aware of the threats by the German old world order feudal nobility to eliminate all the jaywalkers in Germany because the German vertical rule nobility 
didn't want the mixture of peoples, races and religions in their Germany. As the New World Order horizontal rule wanted this, as we can see everywhere today. So here you can see the Balfour Declaration, Arthur James Balfour, the first Earl of Balfour, another aristocrat. And this is again in the same video as I've shown you before on my channel, Gure, the nobility got their runaway slaves back. So the runaway slaves are the jaywalkers and the nobility wanted, just wanted to have them back. So there is no Zionism by the jaywalker people themselves. There is none. They are slaves just like the rest of the world. And at a certain time, at Pharaoh's time, and Pharaoh was God, they were his beloved slaves, which they are not anymore. That's gone. So, my dear Jay Walker friends, stop believing this religious hocus pocus because, you know, it's, it's going to be your downfall if you're going to believe more of that, you know. Just believe me, see all the facts and the proofs and use your head, my dear friends, eh? Because I wouldn't like to see that happening again, all the horrors of World War II, eh? Yes, concentration camps are a pharaonic idea and perpetrated by the descendants of today's worldwide aristocracy. Therefore, in every Hollywood movie, Pharaoh shows their power of the obelisk, the symbol of the pharaonic domination, as you can see here in ancient Egypt. Just as here in the film The Jackal from 1997 with top actors Bruce Willis, Richard Gere, Jack Black and Sidney Poitier, showing the obelisk at one hour and 39 minutes, the symbol of the pharaonic domination with their most powerful tools of today's pharaonic domination by the most powerful army in the world and its Sikorsky US Marine helicopter as today's prolongation of Pharaoh's ancient obelisk and its huge power. Or like here, the Netflix series Nightfall, with in red for the Pertasser Red House of Pharaoh for his Old World Order vertical rule. Here it is. This is the vertical rule of the Old World Order, Red House of Pharaoh. Because the Old World Order has fallen, as in night fall. And no, it's not a cross in red, because the right part is missing. Yeah, the right part of this cross, it's missing. There is no right part. And it would have been a lot easier to make that cross out of the letter T. Here, it would have been a lot easier to make this red cross here. In red, it also shows the beginning only of the horizontal rule by the Templars, starting left on the timeline and nothing on the right side yet. Because the series Nightfall only shows the beginning 
of the Knights Templars and their new horizontal rule system. You see, only on the left side, it shows the beginning of the horizontal rule, which was made by the Knights Templars. On the right hand side, there is nothing because this, this series only shows the medieval beginning and on the right hand side would be the new world order horizontal rule after 1945 and this is the old the, the fall the night fall of the vertical rule in red and red is the vertical rule because it's the old world order they're very precise people they think about everything Hey, this series is total propaganda and a complete lie, showing the French king as a Satanist and the Templars as the divine saviors of humanity. A totally twisted, reversed history, upside down story in order to indoctrinate the slaves by the winners of history, who are the Knights Templars, of course. And did you see those pyramids on the Faroe Islands in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and belonging to the Queen? of Denmark who is related to Donald Trump through Trump's a royal bloodline of Nordic kings of pharaonic descent yeah Donald Trump is related to most Icelanders and Danish and Norwegian royalty so the Faroe Islands are like near to Iceland, it's like in the Atlantic. Here you can see Donald Trump, I suppose this is the Queen of Denmark. Um, you can see it in this video here on my channel, again Homeland Security, the same channel, and here's the title. And doesn't Faroe Island sound exactly the same as Pharaoh from Egypt, only written in a Danish way. You know, look, pyramids, and there are better ones as I'm showing you, as I've shown you before. Pyramids and Pharaoh. I mean, it's all there. This reminds us of the story of the Pharaonic princess Skota going to Ireland. Oh yes, Pharaoh has been in Europe for ages with a Viking Drakkar ships looking like Pharaoh's sun bark or solar bark, which I filmed for you here in France. So it's on my channel Gatsefrats and here's the entire title I'll put it in the description for you and here in India in an ancient Indian temple this pharaonic cobra snake was found having the Isis horns with the Amun Ra sun disk in between together with the ostrich feathers on the head of Osiris. So this here, the Isis horns with the sun disk, it belongs to Isis. And these ostrich feathers belong to her husband, Osiris. Which reminds us of the two feathered Indian chief. And look, they always have the double Osiris feathers on their heads. Always with the two Osiris feathers on his head. Here they are. Of whom 
the Book of Mormon says that the American Indians originate from the Middle East and maybe even from ancient Egypt. So if there are any Mormons like from Salt Lake City who are looking for further proofs of their for their thesis that the American Indians they come out of the Middle East well then look at the double feathers I guess there's one feather here and the other one is here or maybe it's behind I mean I always see two feathers and it's the same as Osiris so there is a link somewhere I, I do see this link so Mormons so dive into that link eh? and here is another Indian with here the Osiris double feather on his head so the link is definitely there it says in the book that they come from the Middle East they both have the double feather well Osiris has ostrich and I think these are two different feathers so but it's every time I see two feathers here Osiris and he was where he it says wearing a distinctive crown with two large ostrich feathers at either side so this is a painting how it must have looked like in those days so this crown is the bear head of the white house of pharaoh of upper egypt and here you got a crook and this is a flail and here's red and white a little bit of red for the red house probably so reminds you the picture of the snake eh? and the indians always two feathers it's not a coincidence and like this it's usually depicted in the uh, hieroglyphs just as uh, on the snake so the Osiris was wearing a distinctive crown with two large ostrich feathers at each side and holding a symbolic crook and flail so these are ostrich feathers and the American Indians just like the pharaohs and the Egyptians all the time talking about spirits the soul the afterlife basically the same thing eh? and the same two feathers and here it's exactly represented like this as on the snake in an Indian temple just keep this in your mind like this and in fact the snake is here as well here is a snake just keep this in your mind hey eh? I'm going to show it now the Indian temple now here it is again these are the Osiris ostrich feathers two of them just like the Native Americans are having them. It's exactly the same thing. And now watch this, watch the horns and the sun disc. I'll show it to you now. So keep this in mind now. So here you can see them together. This is Osiris and this is Isis. So at the snake picture in India in an Indian temple you can see the ostrich feathers here around the um, the Isis horns and the uh, the sun disc when Osiris was growing up he married his sister Isis a custom which the pharaohs of Egypt followed ever after and Seth married Nephthys for he too being a god could marry only a goddess so in india they got the same gods and goddesses as in ancient egypt and here you can see the happy family this is their child the falcon god horus osiris with the ostrich feathers as on the snake and the mother isis and also sister with the sun disc and the Isis horns. Interestingly, both Isis 
and Osiris are represented in the Egyptian representation in India, like man and wife, Osiris and Isis, were united by the snake, whatever that might mean. I told you so, that pharaohs were all over the world, having kings and queens in all countries during the vertical rule. And now ruling over humanity in the Republican Templars horizontal rule. Yeah, Swiss nobility, the association of Swiss families. Uh, they mean only the nobility, the aristocratic families, of course. The rest for them are no families. And of course, in India, there's also the nobility, and they still exist. And they are also of pharaonic descent, like Patsha, Navab, Maharaja, there's the word Ra, the sun god in it, Maharaja. There he's sitting there. Indian king, Indian pharaoh. And here the Raja and the Maharaja with the word Ra, the for Amun Ra, Pharaoh's sun god, Takur. Uh, it's the same all over the world, people. And it's because of India's nobility that the Egyptian cobra with the Osiris ostrich feathers and the Isis horns with sun disk were discovered inside an Indian temple. Because the worldwide nobility are of pharaonic origin and they rule the entire world over all peoples and nations in their new horizontal ruling system. You can watch the video here filmed by this Indian filmmaker. This is the video and here's the channel. Ancient Egyptian symbols hidden in Indian temple. But he probably didn't even know that it was the Osiris feathers and the uh, the Isis uh, horns and sun disk. At least he didn't talk about it. So in the film "Don't Look Up" from 2021, with Leonardo DiCaprio, Kate Blanchett, Meryl Streep and other top actors. At 59 minutes, it shows the Freemason joining at the bed, in which DiCaprio was having sex with a White House official who was telling him that she had already sex with two presidents before doing it with him. So here you see the joining. It means one for all and all for one, or where we go one, we go all, because it's made of probably acacia uh, leaves and it's all these parts made together. And if there's one part missing, it, will, it won't hold anymore. So it's called the joining. Eh? Where we go one, we go all. Hey, eh, Donald? And at exactly one hour in the film, it shows that White House per head obelisk with six U.S. Air Force jets in, of course, Delta formation, racing by, showing the might of their total control rule and the might 
of Pharaoh's phallic obelisks, right after the other phallic sequence with DiCaprio being next in line to take the honor to follow two US presidents in a definitely horizontal role White House bed story, symbolized by the White House obelisk. I mean, his predecessors were presidents after all. So the image shows it all, obelisk, White House, and Delta military power, thus transmitting that the US presidents are in fact the descendants of Pharaoh, symbolized by the huge Egyptian obelisk. The Per Het White House, President Pharaoh's home, and the power of the pyramid, as in Delta formation. Pyramid Delta Triangle. The six Delta formation war planes show the horizontal rule of the Republic behind them, meaning the power and military might of the new horizontal New World Order system of our masters and put in place by the Knights Templars and executed by their Freemasons. You see the phallic symbol, the symbol of the pharaonic domination. It has nothing to do with the video, absolutely nothing. You know, here's the the White House, which means Perhet in Upper Egypt, and here's six delta planes here, and the horizontal rule. You can see it the uh, the contrails behind the um, behind the airplanes. And later on, it's going to make a cross here. I'll show it to you because that's all. That's also important. They they even form a cross here. So it's 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 a symbol of their total control of their of their might, of their superiority over the slaves. It's I mean one two three four um, huge symbols and uh, transmissions of their of their of their ideas and uh, symbology so this is the next sequence this is what i mean you see it shows a cross it's they don't do anything without uh on on purpose it there's no coincidence you know and you can see that our colors slightly you know yeah, I mean, they don't need to show contrails, these airplanes, you know, they, they can fly by without any contrails. They do it on purpose. And these are colors, probably red, white, and blue in the pharaonic uh, colors of the pharaonic crowns. And um, I mean, this is the old world order, the vertical rule. This thing is vertical in the times of Pharaoh. The pharaoh was like a dictator and he ruled vertically. Now well, this is the new era here of with airplanes and it's horizontal, you know, it, because we, we have the new horizontal rule, which really started off, you know, like in the, in the 20th century. Or, um, yeah, and uh, they, they really completed it, you know, they, they perfected it. And this is also the story of the cross, you know, it, it tells the story of a guy who wants to be the king, the king of the jaywalkers, with a um, and a king is vertical rule, and then he was uh, the Romans who were the republic, and at that moment and a horizontal rule. That's why we have the cross. They didn't agree with it, you know, and and they killed him. I mean, the jaywalkers didn't kill him. No. no. The Romans did, and the Republic, and of course there were other aristocrats of the Jaywalkers who, who agreed with that, like the Pharisees, it sounds like Pharaoh.
right? So you definitely see a cross here. They do nothing without a reason. Nothing, nothing, nothing ever. And here, the film Special Correspondence with Eric Bana and Ricky Gervais from 2016, showing a Swiss cross and the concept of four and three on an old New York building at 54 minutes. Plus, this Swiss cross is shown together with the sun hieroglyph and the pyramid above the door. So here you see Eric Banner and here Ricky Gervais, it's a French name, probably an aristocrat as well, as all old English names with the French home. They are of a, um, French aristocratic origins. So here you see the Swiss cross here. And it has another four squares in it for the concept of four. And so where's the concept of three? Oh, look, there it is here. The side of the pyramid. So this is the side of the pyramid and this is the base of the pyramid. So it says square and compass. And here's the sun hieroglyph or hieroglyph, which, I, uh, which I've shown in my first film, the, uh, the Pharaoh Show. It's uh, the whole building looks like a temple, actually, which I'm, which I'll show you now. So here you can see the whole building. It also has a a uh, sixty degree. It looks like a sixty degree angle here from here to here. On top of this temple, there's another pyramid sort of things with two, probably Yashin and Boa sticking out. And here the Swiss cross, the base in the Alps, three times. Now here too, there's the concept of three. It shows one, two, three times. And the thing in itself has four squares for the concept of four. And here again, sorry, the door is missing. Couldn't get it on the picture anymore. So there's always a reason they're using these buildings in, in Hollywood videos and other videos. And there's also a reason they they show it that long, which is absolutely most of the time it has absolutely no connection to the film itself. You know, it's all inside messages and uh, inside transmissions of ideas and things going on in the future. Things have that went on in the past and uh, etc. So. Of course, the first thing I saw was the Swiss cross. I mean, you can't miss it. In the middle of New York on an old building. Now, what is a Swiss cross doing in the middle of New York on an old building? Eh? I already told you that. Eh? Here, another picture. Here you see the famous New York cab. And it has a car in front with the, well, it looks like a G. Well, of course it is. Eh? It's all Masonic here, the whole building. And it says new, so maybe someone in New York can check it out, what, uh, what's, it, what's it all about. At 48 minutes into the Italian film, Io sono libero, about the Italian mafia, one sees in the stairs of the Justice Department somewhere in Sicily, and probably in Palermo, a huge square and a circle for the compass, all in marble, standing for square and compass. Here it is. With the compass, you can make a circle. And this is the square, which is the base of the pyramid. So this is the concept of four, and this is the concept of three. I already explained it to you. And it is in red and white, Knights Templar colors out of whom the Freemasons come, and in the Justice Department, it's, uh, it's, it's total Freemason rule by the judges, the lawyers, and so they love to walk on it and see it every day, and uh, oh, isn't that lovely, eh? They 
say to each other then or think for themselves we see this a lot everything has a reason it's just not just because it it looks good well it, it doesn't look good actually it has a reason and um, so look out for it people and in the building there are probably more of these things you can see one here and one here they're probably on every level uh, here i see the joining just like on the bed with dicaprio in white and uh, it's, you know they, they put it all over so they feel at home here in the justice department and you probably do not feel very much at home in this place where they attack you you know in a legal sort of what they say a legal way so this is the entrance of the building the justice department with the square and compass in the uh, in the staircase so if you're living in sicily go and have a look and take some pictures and as I've told you so in my videos about the Mafia, that our masters have a legal Mafia, which you can see here, and an illegal Mafia, the whole crime syndicate, and a lot of them based in Sicily, but the mother base is, of course, Switzerland. And the illegal mafia and their legal mafia they all work together because they all come out of this here you know an, an aristocratic coat of arms and here another one the wings of uh, the, of the falcon horus crown on it here this is where they come from the pillars here yashin and boas and you know, so it doesn't get that obvious. They have a illegal mafia to do the things what the legal mafia can't, because it would get too obvious. But more and more, we can see that their legal mafia, these ones here, tend to do the illegal things uh, in, in a very uncovered an obvious way you know they, they don't even hide it anymore so i show this in these two videos on my channel Gyure, this one here and this one here and i have more videos about the mafia on my old channel Hatsafats, and the channel that was taken down so this is in Switzerland. You, we can see the same marble as in the Palermo Justice Department, the same colors, you know, this sort of reddish and white, because it's all the same thing. And mafia, it comes from the, uh, from the Latin, mi anima fidelem, jus arian. And here the slayer saints pray and slay. So soon I'll put it all together in one video. And... Um, so this would be on my channel here uh Gure. there you go they have a legal mafia and an illegal mafia it's a very smart way to do that at one hour and 37 minutes into the italian film liberi di Selier from 2019 about the mafia and its english version called sons of ndrangheta they show the logo of an italian association supposedly to help juvenile victims of the mafia called l'isola de sole meaning the island of the sun showing a square and circle for the compass and concept of three in nice colorful colors like in a child's drawing to distract us from their real intentions so here you can also see their real intentions what they do with the juvenile 
victims of the mafia. And of course, this is all by the government. It's all politics. And the, here's the square in blue for the war crown. So it's a war. You know. and, um, and here is the circle for the compass. So it says square and compass. And it even has the concept of three. And in red, you know, all these colors, they mean something. And of course, uh, yellow stands for the sun and also often used uh, for white in ancient Egypt. And red is the old world order on top of it all. And <clears throat> so it's all, it's total Freemasonry. I mean, it's obvious. And l'Isola del Sole, the island of the sun. The moment you hear sun, you know, it should ring a bell. You know, and the moment you see a square and a circle, it should ring a bell. And of course, l'Isola del Sole is not really Sicily what they mean with it. For us, the slaves, l'Isola del Sole, it obviously means Sicily. But this is not by us, obviously, with the square and the concept of three in red for the old world order, the uh, circle the, or the sun and the circle for the uh, compass. So this is definitely by them. And I can promise you, they, it's not a reference to the island of Sicily, but it is a meaning an internal meaning for and by our masters because this here the logo is by our masters and it is a government institution by them the island of the sun is of course related to the pharaonic creation story how an island called atum the sun god emerged from the waters in the beginning so here you see the water here's the island and here is atum the sun god here's the sun as well here's also the sun so our masters chose this name l'isola uh, del sole the island of the sun to represent in the name a new beginning as in the creation story of the island of the sun. So the film, it was a very good film. I liked it because it's a true story about children um, in mafia families who couldn't find any way out. You know, they wanted to live, some, many of them, they want to live a normal life enjoy life and the internet and go dancing and don't go killing people don't end up in prison and you know do the things children do and uh, this is not allowed inside the uh, the mafia structures because they need to have new uh, members and where do you get new members well the you, you need the juvenile members and start early so L'Isola del Sole, the creation story of the island of the sun, which I'm going to explain to you later. Um, it, it shows a new beginning as for these children after hundreds of years in these ancient mafia structures. Uh, in, in the new era now, there is a new beginning, a new life not anymore in the in the mafia so that's that's why the freemasons out of the uh templars who come out of the nobility who comes who come out of pharaoh they as a reference to the new life for the uh the juvenile victims of the the mafia inside the mafia families uh there will be a new beginning so here we can read just a little bit about the uh, the creation story of Pharaoh, which is very much related to the Bible, of course. And uh, here it says the earliest god Ra 
uh, and or Atum, both uh, being creator sun gods, emerge from a chaotic state of the world. You know, here we also find the um, Ordo Abkao, order out of chaos of the of the Freemasons, and um, here in this ancient picture on it seems to be papyrus this is the island of the sun here's the sun here as well and uh, which emerge emerges out of the water so they have it in their in their pictures and uh, so it's a new beginning for the victims of the mafia Nothing's without a reason. So here it says they all held that the world has arisen out of the lifeless waters of chaos called Nu. They also included a pyramid shaped mound called the Benben, -Ben, which was the first thing to emerge from the waters. Yeah, I'll read it for you because this is very important actually. And um, all these films and videos, it's just filled up with the occult and uh, the uh, history and symbols of uh, the ancestors of our masters. Yeah. Ra, the greatest god of ancient Egypt, the origin story of how Ra spawned, all that is known, is both fascinating and illuminating. Before creation, according to Egyptian mythology, only darkness embraced the primeval ocean, out of which life would come, you see, out of the ocean, with an island. When the breath of life was strong and ready, the entity called Atum decided it was time for creation to begin. An island emerged from the water to support this divinity who manifested itself in the form of uh, Ra, the sun god of Egypt. This is the L'Isola del Sole, the island of the sun, coming out of the water. Going on here. On a primeval hill, Ra created out of himself the first gods, Shu, dryness and air, and his partner Tefnut, humidity who would engender other gods to complete the cosmos. Jeb, the earth god, and Nut, the sky goddess. In turn, these two birth the principles of life, namely Osiris, the perfect being, who eventually would rule over the rest of the world, which Ra was busy creating by naming the elements. And by the way, humankind happened out of the tears of his eyes again water osiris was a kind and wise ruler who taught humans agriculture and civilization with his sister and wife isis who helped her husband with creativity and magic they formed the perfect couple remember what we saw with the snake the perfect couple isis and osiris combined you know the uh, the ostrich feathers of uh, Osiris together with the sun disk and the, uh, again the island of the sun, the sun disk and the, uh, the Isis horns together uh, on top of the snake. I'll read it again. They formed the perfect couple and that was in India. Their brother Seth was strong but unruly, the opposite of his brother. In fact, Seth envied Osiris so much that he killed him. He got the, um, the, the, the biblical story of, um, of the two brothers killing each other. Oh, well, I forgot, I forgot their, their names. It will come back. In, I'll read again here. In fact, Seth envied Osiris so much that he killed him so he could inherit his throne and rule Egypt the way he wanted. Seth's sister partner and, and partner Nephthys could not stop the murder despite her love for their uh, siblings. 
Ah, Cain and Abel. This is the story of Cain and Abel, you know, definitely. The whole Bible is a, is a Pharaonic book, you know, talking about uh, pharaohs and kings and they didn't even know the Europeans. It stops at the Mediterranean, you know. So God was Pharaoh in this book. It's Killing Osiris turned out not such a bad idea. He was resurrected uh, through the magic of his wife long enough to impregnate her son, her with son Horus, who would later avenge his father and recapture the throne of Egypt. In the battle, he lost an eye. You know, this is the all-seeing eye. Horus lost an eye in the battle with Seth. Then Osiris departed to the other world to rule over the deceased, thus ensuring resurrection and the cycle of life. So the obelisk stands for Osiris, and that's why we find it so much on cemeteries. As it says, Osiris rules in, um, uh, uh, over the other world uh, of the diseased. Yes, the myth do not end here. While the aging Ra was fine-tuning his creations, uh, humanity rebelled against him. The god decided on extermination, asking his tear-giving given eye again for help. To fulfill her task, the eye transformed, transformed herself into a fierce lioness. You know, the eye again, the all-seeing eye, and the eye of... Uh, uh, Ma'at and uh, the other one, the lioness here, the symbol of the um, the nobility, and began slaughtering humanity. You know, the fierce lioness began slaughtering humanity. A hey, nobility, that's what we see. Delighted in her feeding. When Ra saw the carnage, he felt sorry for the beloved children who, like tears, came out of his eyes. And we do see, in fact, the tears in the logo of uh, L'Isola del Sole in the, um, the concept of three over the compass. They are tears. Also, like mafia guys, they, they like to two under their eyes, you know, these tears. Or guys being having been in prison. He stopped the massacre, but refused to live more among humans this led to his journey to the other world where ra created the 12 hours of day by sailing the sky from the eastern horizon to the west illuminating the world and allowing all creations to flourish under his rays reaching the western horizon ra then left the earth in darkness this is why we have the western world they talk about the western world because he reaches the western horizon and uh, uh, darkness for 12 hours of night while he sailed the underworld Ill illuminating uh, the dead destroying the enemies of creation and regenerating himself in a un union with osiris the god of um, re resurrection oh yeah it was hathor i wanted to say before the goddess uh, hathor related to well, i don't remember what uh, when ra appeared at dawn in the eastern horizon he took the form of a falcon known as horakti or horus or my name horus of the horizon the falcon who flies high in the sky horus is one who is high up but ra had other forms he also could be represented as a scarab. You remember the initiation ritual of the, uh, the was with the scarabs at this the the Swiss tunnel, the um, the scarab called Keper, the one who comes into being, and you know it comes into being. You like the tunnel coming into being. <laughs> being like whatever they you know the. It, it, will come out of it yeah the beast an analogy based not only on the pun between the name of the scarab and the verb to happen 
but also because the scarab, who arises from desert sands at the first rays of the sun, pushing a ball of dung carrying his eggs, was believed to be self-created, and by midday the sun was again Ra and represented by the sun disk. At sunset, he became Atum, an old man who had completed his life cycle and was ready to disappear, to be regenerated for a new uh, day, well, etc. So here you can see the tears of Ra, out of which humanity uh, was created, out of the tears of Ra. And this is why the Mafia boy is crying, because he's starting a new life away from the Mafia. Tears, tears, uh, because of the, the tears in the creation story, uh, humankind getting created out of the tears of Ra. So, with the help of these ones here, L'Isola del Sole, the organization, the boy is gonna start a new life, as in the creations of humankind out of the tears of Ra, Amun Ra, and Atum. And one more time, which Ra was busy creating by naming the elements. And by the way, humankind happened out of the ear, tears of his eyes. Who is his? His is Ra, in the creation story of ancient Egypt, the ones that are ruling over us. And these films are so important for them, you know, because it, it shows images, as they're like images, you know, like in the hieroglyphs. They are today's hieroglyphs with their secret symbology. So th that's why there's a lot of, you know, all the actors, it's all blown up and, you know, they take themselves. It's being considered as so important. It's in the media all the time and uh, because it's important for them. The, the, the cinema and videos are today's hieroglyphs. And the ancient, of course, Egypt lies just on the other side of the dip from Sicily, with Sicily one of the first places to be visited by Pharaoh, before they went on and founded Rome and the Roman Empire. So here you can see some pyramids, this is a part of the sun disk, or the Isis horns, the Nile, and this is Caesar with a Roman soldier. It's just around Egypt, it's just around the corner from Sicily. Eh? So here it says, why was Caesar in Egypt? Well, he doesn't know to know it himself here in this picture. <laughs> well, in fact, he did. It's a fairly good question, why was Caesar in Egypt? But an even better answer to that question is, you know, Caesar was in Egypt because the pharaohs were in Rome and they founded Rome and they took their people with them, the Egyptians, who are now called the Italians. So the, their favorite people were, of course, the uh, at a certain moment, the jaywalkers until the moment they ran away, then they were not God, Pharaoh's beloved people anymore. And the Pharaohs also had their ordinary people. And they took them with them, first to Greece and then to, uh, to Italy. And they became the Italians, whom we find everywhere in the world. I mean, people talk about immigrants and guest workers and not always about, you know, there's so many of them, and but nobody ever thinks about the Italians anymore. They're, they're basically everywhere. So here we can see Roman Egypt. 
and here is the Mediterranean here's Egypt and you see Greece is here the pharaohs first expanded to Persia like uh, this way and then they uh, they crossed the dip into Greece and then they went here to Sicily which is really the island well it's just a manner of speaking the island of the sun like you know but this is also an island of the sun this too this too this too this too they're all islands of the sun but uh well I'll explain to you the story and this is interesting here the, so you can read it yourself Uh, see if I can find it. Um, oh, there it is. Here, look. They call it a Coptic cross. Wow, well, looks nice, the Coptic cross, but. Uh, in fact it isn't you see uh, like here the Coptic cross at the ends it has like a um, it's, it's pointed like a sticking outwards you know and in, in, in the middle it's uh, you know it's rectangular you know it's a straight away line here and here's a st thing sticking out here this is well, the, the thing you in the middle, actually, it looks a bit more like. Well, anyway, look here. This is a Templar's cross, of course. It doesn't have this thing sticking out here as the, that Coptic cross. And you can see that this has been done later, you know, in it. The, uh, there's a, it's a part of the material has been carved out. And... Um, well, the Knights Templars, they were in Egypt, so where they got the treasure from. And it's quite interesting. It's, you can find it at the Temple of Isis at Philae. Yeah, well. I mean, the old world has always been lying to Northern Europe, people. So always been lying oh. talking about Templars crosses apparently two years ago in 2020 these crop circles were found in the north of France showing a Templars cross I wonder if someone has checked out if there's a Templar's commandery in the vicinity. In the film Immortal Engines from 2018, our Pharaonic masters show their official hieroglyph of the sun in the charming word immortal to accentuate death and pharaoh or pharaoh god is the master over life and death with a pharaonic sphinx behind which has become the nobility's lion's symbol for the aristocratic descendants of pharaoh ruling over their white slaves with blue eyes forced to have their red house mask over her face or their faces by the red house old world order vertical feudal rule with their lions sphinxes and sun hieroglyphs for us the mortals exactly as the word in the image says 
There were many more occult symbols of Pharaoh in this movie, but I can't find the film anymore, which was taken off the web. So you see the slave here. So it's definitely slaves and masters. Slave European with blue eyes and needing to, to have this censorship thing over her mouth in red of the old world order, Per Tasser, Red House. And on the other side, the lion, our masters. And the word, this is the official sun hieroglyph of the pharaohs. And in the middle, there's a little square. You see, this is a circle. So it also says square and square and compass. And everywhere in the E, they make sure you understand this is a horizontal line because normally the E, the line here, it stops here in the middle here. Same thing with the G and another E and the A here. They make sure that you understand that they're talking about the horizontal rule. And here as well, the L. So all pharaonic symbols are there. So this is the, the sun hieroglyph. It's an official sun hieroglyph. It's not a coincidence, people. I mean, why would they put a dot in the O? I, and the mask, and the lion, and the horizontal line here, and, 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 and. They don't make any, any coincidences, you know. They're very precise and they think about everything. So the blue-eyed North European slaves being censored with the, right, the red cloth over their mouth of the old world's order by our masters of the nobility. And we are the mortals, and they are probably not. Here it is, the same symbol as in the word mortal in the film. Only a mortal, they even do it better, they made a little square. It almost looks like a dot. It's the same thing. And this is the official sun hieroglyph. I'll let you read it yourself here. Oh, I can do it. Ra, ri, or re. Rey, you know, it means the king, like in Spanish, rey, el rey, el rey de España, el rey Juan Carlos, is the ancient Egyptian solar deity by the 5th dynasty, 2494 to 2345, before counting he had become a major god in ancient Egyptian religion, identified primarily with the midday sun. So there's a difference between the sun and the midday sun. Well, anyway, this is the hieroglyph for the sun, just like in the film. Here's some more pharaonic hieroglyphs for man, woman, the sun. That's why I wanted to show that to you, just as in the film, mountain, walk, move back. Well, I was just moving back, probably like Michael Jackson, like the moonwalk shuffle or whatever they call it. This is where he got the moonwalk shuffle from, eh? from the pharaohs. He's probably one of them, or he was one of them. And here again, the hieroglyph for sun. This is the hieroglyph for Ra at midday sun. You see the rays are going almost down, you know, it's midday. The horizon here, this is a part where the two mountains, um, I think in Karnak, where it shows this. Um, and here's the snake with the sun, or the sun disc, as in the Indian temple, the sun god. This is Apis, so it says Gnum. The god of sun, Set, you know, sun and Set. Set is the lord of the underworld, underworld where it's dark. That's why they call it sunset. And this means horizon. And well, anyway, there it is again. Hieroglyph for sun, just like, just like in the film. Now you see the one of the ostrich feathers again of Osiris and on the in the in the temple. 
So here you see two things of the temple, here the, the feather and the sun disk again. So, and here the midday sun. It says logographic sign for sun. Logographic, it means it even looks like the sun, you know, or an eye in this case, you know. So this phrase, it means the sun shines. Well, I think this is a bit easier. Eh? <laughs> and um, so the hieroglyph of the sun, just an example. And of course, the feather is uh, again the Indian feather. And think of the Book of Mormon. Who knows? And here again, the title of the film, Mortal Engines with the sun hieroglyph here in the middle. Damn, I can't even quietly watch a movie and relax with always with all these things running through my mind. Eh? Here they call it the sun dot and uh, they gave it the name here, the sun dot marine logo, which is quite interesting. So this is what it says here, you can read it yourself. Uh, a lot of people have been asking where a name Sun Dots came from when our company was founded in 1964 uh, by Dorsey Miller. She had a fascination with Egypt and its hieroglyphics. You see, there's another name. They call it glyphs, hieroglyphics, hieroglyphs, hieroglyphs, and whatnot. You probably never would have thought that a fish flag company would have anything to do with Egypt. But the inspiration for our logo, in fact, came from one of the oldest civilizations on Earth. The ancient Egyptians had numeral hieroglyphics to represent the sun. We could give deep into trying to explain them all, but for now we will just give you a brief description of the Egyptian sun glyph. So there it says, the sun glyph. I like that, sun glyph. That's a nice name, right? There we go. Mortal engines. So mortal engines. Are we, our bodies, are they the mortal engines of our souls? You know, our soul comes down and we take over a mortal engine. That's probably what they mean with it. In part one of the series, Bobby Kennedy for president at 56 minutes into the documentary, Robert Kennedy is transmitting the Freemason stance for Master Mason with his feet to all the initiates. As he knows, he's being filmed. And he also shows the hidden hand of the Freemasons, which to my knowledge, it should be the right hand. But I suppose if you're a left-handed, you have to do it with the, uh, with the left hand. So I don't know if Bobby Kennedy was left-handed or right-handed. This is just an awkward way to stand. A position you just don't take naturally. Here in the image you can see some Freemason foot positions amongst which Kennedy's Master Mason signal to the shadow government behind the screens. So this is step three. Step two is fellow craft. Step one is entered apprentice and step three, what we just saw here, it's Master Mason. And this is what Kennedy did. I mean, these things exist and you don't stand like this naturally. Or at least I, I never done that. And then there was of course this here, the hidden hand simultaneously done with the Master Mason foot stance. Yeah, look, the hidden hand, the Masonic hand de gesture. Karl Marx, he's a right-hander, Friedrich Nietzsche, right hand, Baron von Knigger, right hand, Pope Francis, right hand. Oh, look at that, George Washington is doing the left hand. A southpaw, as boxers say, eh? 
So it's valid. You know, it, uh, Bobby Kennedy just did the hidden hand of Freemasonry together with the uh, Master Mason foot stance. And there are some more um, South Poles here. I'll show it to you. So George Washington is a South Pole, Paul, a left hander. And I'll show you some more. Now look, here are 10 more. Do you recognize any? Do you see any South Poles here? Masonic sign, right hand. Frederic Bartholdi, uh, that's the guy who made the, uh, the Statue of Liberty, a 33 degree Freemason. And he went to Egypt and after he did that, he made the, uh, he got so inspired. He made that uh, statue of Liberté, Fraternité, Égalité. And actually, I'm staying right next to it at the moment. I'm in Colmar, next to Colmar. Joseph Stalin, a right-hander. Napoleon, a right-hander. Oh, look! Good old Beric. He's a southpaw. Look, he's a left hand, eh? Look at that. Lafayette, right-hand. Edgar Allan Poe. Oh, he's another southpaw, a left-hander. Mozart, right-hander, Robert E. Lee, left-hander, a South Pole, Charles Darwin, another South Pole. So it's completely valid. Uh, Bobby Kennedy, in the video, he's, uh, he's transmitting all sorts of Freemason symbology and, and signs and ideas and, you know, what, what they're going to do next, you know. And he also had this weird facial expression, you know, when he was sliding his hand under the jacket. And why he's doing it this high? Because here it's all buttoned up, you know, you can't. You can only do it here. And if you look at the video, which I'm not allowed to do here because of uh, the copyrights and all that, I can take a screenshot apparently. And um, so. Um, yeah, he, he definitely, there's a whole change of energy and a, a change in facial expression when he, when he's doing it. I, I saw it, I noticed it. Definitely Freemasonry. Of course, all presidents are, you know, otherwise you don't get there. And I suppose this is in the White House. Here you can see one of the soldiers of the shadow government, a Knights Templar by the name of Anders Breivik. It says Knights Templar Europe and Norway, whose father, who you can see here to the right, was a diplomat at Norway's embassy to France and to England. So, definitely Pharaoh's nobility, because normal slaves will never make diplomats. So, here you can read about Anders Bering Breivig, and there he is. And he has a fairly long nose, which is quite aristocratic as the Scandinavians usually have these very short and flat, almost little noses. Maybe because it's cold, you know, so you don't want to stick your nose out too much, you know. And I met some Norwegians a couple of years back, four or five years back, on the French motorway in the middle of the night where I was hitchhiking. And they were in class together with uh, Breivik, and told me, uh, even in school, he must have been a kid, he had a nose operation done out of, um, out of beauty uh, arguments, apparently. So it's quite a long nose. I've seen longer, but I mean, father is a diplomat, which you can see here. There you go. There you go. So Breivik was born in Oslo. His mother a nurse and Jens David Breivik, born 1935, a civil 
economist who worked as a diplomat for the Norwegian embassy in London and later in Paris. Well, you don't become a diplomat just like that. Eh? So this is upper class. And apparently this is uh, an inside job by Pharaoh. I wonder if the guy is at all in prison. I wonder, you know, because it's completely sealed. Nobody, nobody really knows, you know. Anyway, we're being lied all the time, you know. We're being lied and lied and lied to. There he is. Huh? The Utoya massacre of 2011, killing 69 future politicians while still juveniles, had nothing to do with right wing terrorism. As a member of the Swiss Templar Octogon had told me 11 years ago, but it was a cleansing by our masters of non per a future politicians. Out of normal Norwegian slave families and potential danger of these future socialists to Pharaoh's nobility in control. Giving too much of Norway's considerable wealth to the people and Pharaoh's slaves of Norway. Instead of the usual elite parasiting on us all. So the children had to go to eliminate the danger for our masters and their children. You all see the Templars cross here and here the concept of four and the triangle is the concept of three. It says state capitalism in Norway. Here you can see the flag of Norway in a sort of a money compass. And here it says wealth. So the money compass is directing Norway to wealth. So Norway is extremely rich, comparable to other oil producing nations like in the Middle East. And where there's money and lots of money, the Templars and their Swiss are there. And yes, they were there. And it's so obvious with Anders Breivik out of a diplomatic family being a knight's Templar. They don't even hide it, people. Look, it's all over. He, he had, yeah, another Knights Templar, Red Cross. They don't even hide it. And just watch how his Swiss pals, like the Swiss governor, Oskar Freisinger, no, not Oskar Schindler, more the opposite. Oskar Freisinger, here he is, Swiss. And he's the opposite of Oskar Schindler. He's a friend of this one. This is his hero. And yeah, I'll show that to you. So he expressed himself and the Swiss cynically about the mass murder on 69 children at Utoya Island by the Norwegian Templar, showing the photo of Templar Breivik, which you can see here, and cynically saying at a poster of their Swiss Nazi party, the SVP, cynically saying that drugs kill. 
and Swissy here literally smearing the memory of 69 murdered children with this sort of Swiss Nazi humor, which I don't really appreciate. So here it says, you see the Templar, he just murdered 69 children. And Swiss, he comes out with this and he says here, la drogue tu, he killed, that means drugs kill. Horrible, disgusting. So I, me, homie Ross, I, uh, 11 years ago, I made this video about it. Well, it says here June 25th, 2012, but uh, it is a copy from my other channel, also called Gure, which uh, was taken off. So here's the title on my channel, Gatsefrat. And uh, look, I had a lot of comments. Wow, four comments I had. I can even still sort by newest first. Oh, there are even more, six years ago. <laughs> These people probably don't even know what happened to me That's eight years ago, 10 years ago. Yeah. Hey, Swissy. So I made these two videos about the Swiss Breivik connection 11 years ago in 2011, for which the Swiss Nazis have heavily terrorized me and my family with the Swiss Nazi police coming round all the time to haul me up in handcuffs with a gun on my head to put me in several high security torture detention centers. The Swiss governor, Oskar Freisinger, whom you can see here, even has Nazi flags in his cellar at home, which is a perfectly normal thing for a Swiss politician to do. And we can all see the Templar cross here in black, which is the cross of the German speaking branch of the Knights Templars, which started really in Switzerland, and they are called the Teutonic Knights of which Putin of St. Petersburg in the Teutonic Knights area, of which he is a, a member of, and he takes his orders from these sort of people here, you know, from Switzerland. So this is what it said in the newspaper, and of course a lot more, but it's all in German, so I'm not going to... Uh, show that all and here it says Reichskriegsflagge im Keller the the German well, you know with the with the Templars cross uh, in the cellar which is almost the same word and here's his name Oskar Freisinger so it's not to be mistaken with Oskar Schindler who's completely the opposite from Oskar Freisinger um, sounds a bit similar, doesn't it? And here it says the SVP Nationalrat. Nationalrat is a governor, and SVP is the Swiss Schweizer Volkspartei, the Swiss People's Party. It's it's a complete Nazi party, and they are. I mean, it's the biggest party in Switzerland, of course. No. The Norwegian socialists had this holiday training camp on the island of Utoya in order to train a normal slave children into politicians and even called their project Generation Utoya, if I remember that well, because that was in 2011. So, a new generation of socialist politicians by the slaves made the elite fear for their ways to parasite on the people in the near future. So the slaves of Norway were attacked twice 
once in Utoya and robbed of their child politicians from within the people, and secondly, massive government repression by the authorities on Norwegian nationalists of the Norwegian slaves, as all the media had already decided anyway who was to blame for the Utoya massacre. It was all a setup. And in the motherland and base of the Nazi Templars, they keep a mummy by the name of Ta Sherit and Imen, which means the daughter of the god Amun Ra. And we can see the royal word Sar in Sherit or Sher It. Shar it or Sar it. And Sar is the demotic word for king or queen. The Egyptian mummy was found recently in the attic of a Tessin village in Switzerland, where they speak Italian and now being examined in the French speaking town of. Neuchâtel. Well, some Swissies have genuine pharaonic mummies up in the attic of their family residence, which is quite normal in Switzerland, apparently. Your granny from 3,000 years back is just lying in the attic, kids. And be careful, kids. When you look for last year's toys in the attic and don't drop your football on Granny, Swizzyland is a very creepy place indeed, with ancestral mummies in the attic. You all remember the Swiss ritual of the Swiss tunnel in 2016, don't you know? But how many of you have recognized the sun, Amun-Ra, in the background of Pharaoh's hiding place in the Alps? Another Isola del Sole, Pharaoh's island of the sun in the Alps, where all their might is concentrated. A strategic island in the middle of Europe. And again, the feathers of Osiris together with the sun disk, as in the Indian temple. The feathers of Osiris representing death, as Osiris is the lord of the afterworld. Gate to hell opened, satanic ritual exposed. The feathers of Osiris, Isis, her sun disk of Amun Ra. The Swiss ritual has written death all over it. Of course, furthermore accentuated by the three scarabees and Pharaoh's symbol of the reincarnation. But there are only three. The concept of three, which is them, our masters, and only our masters are allowed to reincarnate, which is not for the slaves and the people. It's written all over people, and it's all Pharaoh. The elite Swiss masters called the Daig, which you can read here, the Daig from Switzerland, the elite masters. And typical families of the Swiss Daig pharaohs are Sarazin and Marion, Sarazin and Merion, which are totally pharaonic names with Sar 
meaning king, pharaoh. Ra for Amun-Ra, the sun god, for the name Sa-Ra-Sin, giving altogether Sa-Ra-On, for pharaoh, sun god, Osiris, in the Demotic Pharaonic language, and Merion, Merion, is Me for pyramid, Ri meaning the sun, and On Osiris, thus Merion for pyramid, sun, Osiris. It says, nonetheless, seats in the Grand Council of Baselstadt, as well as other important positions in both public service and industry, are still routinely held by individuals with family names indicative for Daig affiliation, such as Visha, Sarazin, or Marian. Sar, Ra, On, Sa, Ra, Sin, Me, Ri, on, me, ri, an. The daig, which is a, um, which is a fact here. So here you can see the tower of, um, of the Roche pharmaceutical enterprise. And there's a lot of these names uh, related to that company, the names which I just showed you before. So here you can read the whole thing. So this is the Daig from Switzerland. Pure pharaohs. The word Daig is Swiss German for the Dao. And in High German, das Daig, the sticky mixture of water, flour, salt and yeast to bake a bread with meaning the elite per a pharaonic family are sticking together like the dough Here it says we are family and families stick together and even if you would pull it it would bounce back like elastic sticky dough the daig or like the elite, after having had a charming conversation with them, they always bounce back, stick with their own, and impossible to make friendships with them. Ooh, peasants are masters of Pharaoh's elite, the Daig. They want everyone else to mix except themselves the principle of the daig only problem there is no white in a rainbow the swiss daig elite are pure pharaohs in their impenetrable octagon base of the nazi templars in the alps ruling over the entire world. Hey, Swissy, we're getting there, Swissy. Yeah, look carefully at what you're going to see here. Look carefully. Did you see his tongue? And the woman she saw her. Yeah, look, it's a little bit closer now. If I manage, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look, look. Did you see that? And, and, and I mean, look at the woman. She's looking there. Look, look at her. She saw it. She saw what a creep she was thinking. Yeah, let's see if we can get him closer. Look. Did you see that? What a creep. Yeah, look. Now look at the woman, she noticed it. Look, she saw it. You want to see it one more time? There we go, look at that. Do 
he said. Uh, did you all see his tongue coming out? I mean, this is not really human. I've never seen a human doing this before. Uh, look, one more time. I hope, you know, the quality gets a bit less when I upload it, so I hope you can still see it. Look, there he goes again. Bloody snake. I mean, the ones who rule over us, they don't behave very human. They torture us, they rape children, they lie, they kill us by the millions without end. They don't behave very human, do they not? Yeah, one more time. There he comes. There he goes. Doot, doot. Bloody snake. Pharaohs. Well, we all know what Pharaoh has on his head here. Eh? That's the Uraeus snake. It's the Egyptian cobra. And they really are cold. Really cold blooders. Evil killers. And... Um, when they came to Europe, they built all the castles. I gave you all the proofs of that. So, you know, the same sort of tongue coming out of these ones here as the, uh, the friend of Prince Charles just did, or he may, he's probably of the same family, same bloodline. There we go, one more time. I did it again. And here, the true descendants of Pharaoh. It's in the blood, I've proven it to you. And here's the Vesica Piscus with the oval in the middle. And the oval offers, it means they are a chain. One for all and all for one. They're all together, they're all helping each other out. As the slaves, it's just everybody for himself. The dumb slaves. Um, I must admit, they are intelligent. Now, one more time, my favorite guy. There he is. He did it again. What I'm going to tell you right after this here, I will prove to you immediately afterwards the french are extremely mistrustful towards one another in a society where there's hardly any trust and i will prove that to you right now and here while comparing the frenchies with the americans and english speaking community in a very actual event. This here is in English about Pavel Filatiev, a Russian pirate paratrooper who deserted Putin's war in the Ukraine because he feels betrayed and lied to by the Russian government and by his own military superiors. And I'll read you some random comments out of the English speaking world. So yeah, the blue beret of the, uh, the Russian paratroopers with the, uh, the t-shirt, white and blue, blue for the war and white for the new world order. Here's his name, Pavel Filatiev. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, eh? He, is, he says his name again. Is it really him? <laughs> is it really the same name? So uh, somebody tell me then, eh? And uh, so here I show you random. Yeah, defective Russian soldier describes life inside Putin's war in the Ukraine from August 26, 2022. Well, you can read this yourself. And you see, this is really random. 
you know you know how this works a eh? sort by so top comments and here the newest first so yeah i i just you know it comes automatically in top comments you know so i just leave it like this i don't i don't change anything right so this is american mostly because this is at um the cbs here cbs mornings uh their youtube channel i'm just going to show you the comparison you know in the uh mistrustful way in between like um well, how it is here in france you know it's getting really horrible actually so these are mostly americans and also english cbs yes yeah, american so here jm says he's courageous for speaking up against the war and his hierarchy hope many more will step out and do the same well, i guess the two other replies will be the same well done pavel filatev let the russians in russia hear about your experiences we wish you good luck and stay safe yeah i love his answer he gave at the end to why he came forward and shared his experiences that was one brave honest answer you know this is all very positive very human here yeah, defectors from the russian army are heroes and deserve to be protected etc um well this is neither whatever and um Well, the, the next ones are talking about something else. Yeah, his story mirrors the accounts of many others, especially when they were on military maneuvers and the next in Ukraine, uh, well, etc. So, also positive, you know. Yeah, don't blame him for not revealing his location. I would be afraid he's a very brave coming forward. It's not cowardly to abandon your post and refuse to fight. This man deserves respect for speaking out. And um, pray, prayers for his safety. Soldiers who refuse to fight on war that they think is right are true heroes. Well, I, I, can, I read only very positive and, you know, they see him as a hero and what a hero for telling the truth, much respect and um, mad respect to you from the USA for being a real man and telling the God's honest truth in face if re repercussions from your own homeland by uh, AK-47. Oh, really? Nice picture. So this, you see, this is very, very positive. You know, I'm not going to show them all. You can look it for yourself. This is just random, you know? Yeah, and there are, well, 1,682 comments. Almost 2,000 comments, you know, like in a few days. And I guess they're all positive, you know, and respecting the man. And now I'm going to show you the comparison, uh, the same thing in a uh, on a, Fran a French television uh, channel. And the guy, he um, he's seeking an asylum. Um, well, you guess it, eh? In France. So there he is again, the Russian deserter, Pavel Filatiev. And this is what he did with his uh, Russian passport, saying like, well, Russia is going down the drain. And with all his military papers, there are videos about this. So the English American comments are full of respect for his brave decision. There's friendship and hospitality in abundance, welcoming the Russian deserter to America as if he were a brother, full of positive words. And now the French comments of the french speaking world about the very same event the same russian deserter pavel filatiev 
and at the very same moment and time. Here it is. I'll translate the random comments for you and just see the worlds of difference in behavior. And most of all, the total mistrust and lack of fraternal brotherliness. So here you can see it, Pavel Filatiev. It's written a bit different. Uh, it says paratrooper and who, who is in France asking an asylum. Uh, I'm not going to translate this because I'll, I'll have my, my video lifted. So, so here he is. It's, it's probably a bit later. He already got rid of his uniform. He had his beard grow and maybe he has his hair grown back. And this is on TF, uh, Tele, Television Française number one, the French TV number one. And this is LCI, another guerre en Ukraine, the war in the Ukraine. So, shall we have a look? Shall we now? So this is on September the 1st, 2022. So I can do the same here. Uh, so just the, the, you know, the random, uh, the, you know, the random comments are coming like, uh, like here and here. So I don't know which one I have now. Oh, okay. And so, I mean, the first ones, like um, coming up here. So, see the difference. It's a world of difference. Yeah. Du pipo pro propagandiste, ces soldats d'opérette, surtout venant de LCI qui vaut mieux que de fake news. Um, so, this one here, he says, um, pipo, it's, um, it's, a, it's a propagandist lie of this op operate soldier. You know, from um, it's coming from LCI, the the, the television stuff. Who oh, just vomit fake news? Well, this is well, it's very negative here, and this is very um, cynical. Oh, you got a, a Russian star on LCI, and um, it's all very negative, very negative. Here, he's a good comedian, just like his president. So this Russian hero, you know, the, the Americans say he's brave, he's a hero, he's a real human being. The French is, they say he's a comedian, he's a liar, he's a spy. Uh, yeah, this is also cynical and negative, you know, this here too. Uh, very negative. Um, Yeah, here, Leon Boom. Ce soldat russe qui se met en scène n'est qu'un opposant à Poutine, donc soit un socialiste nationaliste, soit un communiste. Il est pathétique, il est pathétique. You know, this, this Russian soldier, you know, in between brackets, like here, or the meaning, you know, it's, it's probably not even a Russian soldier, it's all a lie. It's just acting, il se, qui se met en scène. And um, uh, well, he's, here they say sale traître, dirty traitor. <laughs> uh, this is very cynical. The uh, le futur philosophe don't lui un passeport français et une place à la à la télé à la télé. So this is the, the future philosopher, the soldier. Give him give him a French passport and a place on on TV. It's all very, very negative. No respect at all, you know. Pour le moment, il y a un soldat, donc quelques mois, il y en a d'autres. C'est chacun début. For the moment, there's only one soldier. In a couple of months, there will be others. This is just the beginning. Moi, j'ai un maire de l'Ukraine. I shit on the Ukraine. Horrible. Euh, déjà le chronique, chroniqueur faux, expion du KGB, est à peine crédible. 
you know the uh he's an ex-spy of the kgb and he's not credible at all he's not he's not faithful at all he's a liar you know yeah n'est pas un militaire russe c'est un agent ce mec he's not a, a russian military he's an agent a secret agent uh the mem the um memoire d'un traître the um memories of a of a uh, a, a, a traitor he's saying he's a traitor it's no respect you know it's all like as i say you as i just told you now i'm giving you the proof the frenchies are incredible mistrustful you know uh Avendre son âme au diable, son enfer le suivra dans l'au-delà. Sell your soul to the devil and, you know, the, uh, the hell will follow in the afterlife. Well, this is a bit hard to read. And, uh, well, here's once, oh, something nice here. Thank you for the documentary. Only one, the only one, you know. Yes, ces journalistes sont lamentables, the horrible reporters. And uh, c'est un montage mensongère, ça finira mal. Aucun crédibilité. Uh, it's just a um, lying, um, uh, this, this is a lying setup, it will end bad. No credibility here, yeah? it's, it's all a lie. Um, pure propaganda. Etc. Uh, Etc. Et well, well, I mean, they think that he's a he's a spy. Uh, LCE, they're only liars and. Um, Le roi de, de la salade, the, uh, the kings of, of, of lies, you know, and bande des escrocs. They, um, you know, they're all liars and, and criminals. Escrocs are criminals. Well, this is, um, you see the difference, eh? Between America and France. And um, so I'm telling you this because something not very nice happened to me recently. And I, I just want to put it all in perspective, you know. So, um, well, Pavel Filatiev, you have no idea yet where you landed with your parachute. Eh? You know, you know, landing in Normandy or, you know, that's where you landed. You have no idea, mate. By the way, this is the main reason I don't want to make any more French videos as it's not really favorable for my work mood to get all these unthankful, mistrustful, thrash and trash comments after all the invested time and energy for a better world because and you can read with me here what is written here in the picture because there comes a time in life when you realize that the trash can is full just as in the case of this brave Russian soldier wishing justice and honesty in his Rusky motherland and then just get a lot of thrash and trash, mail and mistrust in the country where he was hoping to get a political asylum. And this here was written by a Frenchie. A nobleman, because that's the de word, like von in German. And it says, the most mistrustful are often the greatest dupes. And I will come back to this later and explain you 
what it really means. So here's the guy, Jean-Francois Paul de Gondi, who just said that, what I just read for you and what I'm going to explain later. First of all, here, Jean-Francois Paul de Gondi, Cardinal de Retz, he was a cardinal, a French churchman, the Florentine banking and noble Gondi family uh, had been introduced into France by uh, Catherine de Medici, it's a very powerful family. You, know. and you can see, you know, saying these sort of things, what he did, you know, very intelligent man, because this is Pharaoh. And he was the third son in his family, you can read it with me here, and according to Taimon de Rio, was made a knight of Malta, you can see the Swiss cross, on the very day of his birth, automatically. You know. And he was a cardinal, and this is what I've been telling you so many times, that Catholicism is made by and is together with the feudal aristocracy, whereas Protestantism is by the Knights Templars and is part of the Republic. And at the end, it's all the same. It all comes from Pharaoh and it all comes, you know, from the aristocracy. So people, do not lose your time, you know, in this, you know, religious battle between Protestants and Catholics, because it's not for us. It's their battle, you know. It's not for us, the people, because at the head of the Protestant Church and all this, it's the aristocracy, and at the head of the, the Catholicism, it's also the aristocracy. So don't, so don't lose your time with all that. You know, just stop it, you know, about the Jesuits and all this. Just a waste of time. Just the, just the other sidetrack about the jaywalkers telling that they, they are the... You know, they're just a scapegoat, you know, it's just a sidetrack, all this, you know. It's all by the aristocracy anyway, which which I which you can see here, yeah. Now, how come the Frenchies have become so mistrustful to everyone? They must have had many bad experiences themselves of being cheated to, being lied to being stolen, or even worse. I'll explain it to you, why they've become like this. Through a nasty experience I just had with them, I got ripped off in a sly manner, in a so-called cybercrime scam here in France. Finally, after eight years homelessness and a rotten sleeping bag, literally rotting away, I managed with the help of some of you good people to order some new outdoor gear and ordered a set of Austrian high quality Corinthia military sleeping bags that can be fitted together into one. When it gets really cold, it says Corinthia from Austria. We ordered the sleeping bags at the French Natura Bay internet shopping services. Here, Carinthia from Austria, Natura Bay from France. But instead of sending me for what we paid for, 100 euros, so this one here, the Corinthia Tropen, they sent me some cheap Italian Ferino copy made in China of the Austrian sleeping bag. And <clears throat> so here you can see the picture here. And I film it later with my Sony camera, which I insert in this video. So, Corinthia, I'm going to send this video to Corinthia and to the authorities. 
so they can really compare that this is the one I got and the other one I ordered and paid for. You can see here the um, for the mosquitoes here. I, I filmed that for you. And the inside here. It really is a copy of the uh, of the Austrian tropen bag. And here you can see the zipper, which is YKK. You can even see it here. And um, here it says, I think Farino, probably. Well, I didn't even say in my bag which which they send me. It says Natura by Natura by. Well, Natura fraud, I'd say. Now, as they fear, their little fraud counterfeit business is going to surface because of Homie Ross bothering them. They've put a sign vendu, which you can see here, in French meaning sold over the original Corinthia sleeping bag I was supposed to get and also paid for. It says Corinthia Tropen 200 from Naturo Natura Bai. Yeah, bye bye sleeping bag, Omi Ross. Unfortunately, I was too honest with them, telling them that I was going to take legal actions, merely hoping for their honesty and giving them a last chance as any decent person would do in order for them to abandon their cyber scam and deliberate theft. And then using my information concerning my next proceedings, they just blocked my account with them so deliberately wiping all the fingerprints of their organized cybercrime, which is just a reflex of an organized criminal mind who has been in the game much longer than any unsuspecting client. Hey, frankly. So here's the Natura Buy. This is their membership where all the transactions we're supposed in it. I mean, I've got a password and a um, uh, what was the name of it? The um, their login code. So this was the password here. There's the login code. So you do here connect, and then you get this. And I, I punched it already in. Look, I connect here, and there's nothing coming. Uh, I mean. Homie Ross was stupid to uh, to give him a last chance. So here is what it looks like before I do the login here. It says uh, non d'utilisateur and here the password mode pass and then uh, nothing happened. I, uh, well they've been much longer in the uh, in the business of crime and cyber crime than any unsuspecting uh, clients. I, um, I foresaw this a little bit too late. I mean, uh, this is not my world anyway. So the only proofs I have now is this bank transaction with the French Natura by scammers. The counterfeit sleeping bag itself with the box and my list of ordered products with them. I myself am more in the business of brotherly help amongst the people of this earth instead of this kind of wrapping my head around these kind of low life liar minds cheating on their fellow human beings. The funny thing is that in the mail I've just shown you before, the French Natura Buy are just an intermediary between the buyer and the seller, which they are writing to me. Thus, 
shoving their responsibility away. But yet, they received 440 euros and 27 cents at their own Natura Bay account. Just another one of their lies and another one of their scams, which comes so naturally with these kind of low lives. Here you can see it. Natura by Paris or whatever. And this is the amount, you know. It's for my survival, you know. I'm I'm gonna be freezing again and you know. And I can't show you the whole banking stuff because it's not my banking account. It's somebody who, a fan of my videos who helped me with this and I have to be um discreet and don't show too much of his name and, and you know so well what can I do I not much more put it on YouTube who we'll probably delete it and well, end of story after many mails the French Natura by scammers refused to take any responsibility, moving their responsibility entirely on the other company without a name, who had sent me the cheap Chinese counterfeit copy of the Austrian quality product. Look here, this is one of their many mails here. This is their email address. Uh, which is open, so don't bother me because of that, YouTube. It's um, it's their official email. You can find it everywhere. This is, of course, a pseudonym here, the name here. This was the date. I, I got heaps of mails. This is three days ago on September the 5th, 2022. And here th this is what they write here. Bonjour, Monsieur Ross. Natura Baia est un site de petite annonce. Nous ne sommes pas vendeurs. Now, wait a minute. They say they're not sellers. Well, I mean, they are on the internet with prices and all their product. They're, and then they're not, they're not sellers. This is really shady, you know. Nous ne pouvons pas vous faire un échange de produits car nous n'en avons pas. We don't have any products, so we can't even exchange your 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 products, the thing you got. Nous ne sommes pas un magasin, they are not a shop. Et nous n'avons pas de marchandises, we don't even have any products. Nous sommes un intermédiaire, une place de marché vous permettant de trouver un acheteur ou un vendeur. We are an intermediary and we find you a place where you can buy a a buyer or a seller this is real shady they you know they don't want to take any responsibility now all of a sudden i mean the money went to them eh? i i can show you that and now they're not sellers well how come the money goes to them if they're not sellers what's going on here they're, they're just writing well they're, they're nice people they're just here to help you know find you a buyer or a seller very shady. This is this is cyber crime, people. It's count this the counterfeit industry, which is a crime on itself. And uh, yeah, lots of mails. Is, you know, I, 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 it's not even worth. So I'm 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 telling them I'm I'm gonna take um, measures of um, corrective. Um, judicial measures you know and uh, uh, because i have no more patience with your cyber criminals and this i shouldn't have done because um they take it seriously and they even took took off the product of their now of their of their you know of their offers um so the uh, the guy with that were you know it says his name is Christophe Gilles from Orléans. This is apparently uh, the guy without a company um, uh, who sent me the the, um, the
defrauded product, the cybercrime counterfeit product. You know, no names, there's nothing, you know, no responsibility. This is real shady. This is real cybercrime, you know, and it, it's wrecking the European uh, economy, you know, these sort of people. Eh? So this is why it's important. And I, I, I give you some more information about it. So watch this video through to the end. So I found the company without a name, you know, who's just counterfeiting and stealing from a homeless. So this was, they sent this to me uh, September the 1st here, 2022. And um, well, it was the day before, August 31st by Lindsay de Naturo Bay. Oh, I have to show you the email again. It's a bit weird. Oh, there it is. Service client naturo bay.fr. So here's the company. Monsieur Christophe Gilles, uh, 92 Rue Henri Pavard in uh, 45140 Saint Jean de la Ruelle, France. It's even a telephone number, which I doubt it if it's all if, if it even exists. I really doubt it. So I see some more of the. Males after males after males after males, and they take n no responsibility. You know, trying to talk their way out of it. You know, this is cybercrime. This is um, very bad for the European community. For I mean, for Europe, not the European community. For the European economy. For the Europeans. Look, the uh, the French frauders, they even of uh, Naturo Bay, which looks very much like the um, sort of like the YouTube logo, same colors, Templars colors, of course, the same square where it's inside. Well, this is a square and here there are three letters, the concept of three and four. So I'm fighting against uh, Freemasons here, you know. So they even made a a Chinese, you know, counterfeit copy. They send they are selling for almost the same price as the real Corinthia, you know, but inside, you know, there's something else in it, you know, you, you, it won't keep you warm, you know. But it looks exactly the same, you know. And so they call it uh Sac de Couchage Hiver Marque Ferrino, the Italian, you know. Uh, the, t the type Defense 4, Defense 4. Well, the def Defense 4 is the most famous Corinthia sleeping bag. The one, you know, uh, it, it, which is for winter. And the one f which I paid for and didn't come was the Tropen 200, which is for summer. And you can put them all together. But even this one, uh, it even says Gore-Tex. Well, there's no Gore-Tex in it. And um, so here you see the Freemason handshake here. It says, uh, by protection nature, by acheter en toute confiance. You know, uh, trust us. And, you know, you can buy here. You can trust us. And here, 100% uh, security when you do a transaction with us. The payment, 100% secure. Well, we all know now this is a lie. It's Freemasonry here. Yeah. And this th this thing here is the, um, well, the, the same as the US Air Force, you know, the same logo, you know, the, the, the and they use it for the, uh, the sun hieroglyph here a lot. You know, th this is the sun hieroglyph, you know, uh, inside the, um, Instead of the Freemason shake, like here, they put the uh, the sun, you know, on all the buildings, remember? And um, so here it says, Natura Bay. And uh, so, you know, the um, they're making a lot of money with this scam here, like this, you know. And it's it really is a copy of the, um, of the Corinthia, the famous Corinthia sleeping bag. So... 
this is where I'm up against. You know, here it says Ferino, just like in the other bag, you know. And here the uh, the zipper it really looks like the um, Defense Four, and it's it's an exact copy. I mean, this is uh, design theft. This is um, only so they can get rich. This is counterfeit stuff. You know. You know, you must have a second look, you know, to see that this is not a uh, the famous uh, Corinthia Defense 4. This is counterfeit. Yeah. So, Natura buy. Yeah. Better not buy there. And here, the original Corinthia Defense 4, a solid European Austrian product. And you can see it's exactly the same. It's it's a, it's an exact copy, but it won't keep you warm. The other one because it, inside it's not the same. So apparently here it says the best bushcraft sleeping bag, the Corinthia Defense Four, and, and I mean they literally all say this. Yeah. So because of the scam, Homie Ross will still be freezing his uh, whatever off. Here's the site, you know, uh, www.naturabuy.fr. The FR stands for fraud, of course. And you can see they're trying to sell the Ferino Italian Chinese sleeping bag with I don't know what in the inside for a defense for. And the defense for is, uh, is um, uh, Corinthia. And this is the other one with the uh, with a mos mosquito net inside that I was supposed to get, but they uh, instead of that they sent me this one, the Ferino guy, the, the Ferino bag. So this is why it is dot fr uh, uh, fr. So natural by dot fraud. Anyway. This, with all their companies, is one of the ways our masters parasite on us. It's called corporatism. While we, the slaves, work in their companies, buy their products only, as all the company logos are Freemason, Pharaonic, and in the end, we even pay taxes on the product and even over our wages. Here, read with me. Mussolini defined fascism as the union of state and corporate power. Because corporatism is the system of the Knights Templars who were the first multinationals in the world, invented the Czech and invented banking, and there Mussolini of the Nazi Templars was called Il Duce, meaning the Duke, just another pharaoh. He was even living in a castle and married to an, a, a real aristocrat. And here it says, using that definition, can we claim therefore that North America is anything but fascist? Yes, it is. This is the essence of Operation Paperclip. And this is why their business and corporatism is more important than Homie Ross sleeping in the cold because he was ripped off of his Corinthia sleeping bag. And even, and, and watch what Mr. Benito Mussolini, what he really said. This is very important. Fascism should more appropriately be called corporatism because it is a merger of state and corporate power. 
you read this about 10 times again because this is what we are living today and even the word nazi is by the italians as nazionalismo is written with a z or z in american and not with a t as in german because the italians are the descendants of the inhabitants of ancient Egypt. Pharaoh's people, so to speak, the commoners, whom Pharaoh took with them to Italy to conquer Europe with those Roman genociders of the European tribes, the Roman genociders killing the Celtic tribes and their children, just as they did with the Native Americans, African slavery, and the rest of the world. And the only ones who really beat them back were the Germanic tribes. The Germans lost the war, but the Nazis won the war with all the looted nazi goods and nazi gold they hid in octagon Switzerland, to create their nazi templar corporatism with and all nations traded with the whore of suis sisters of isis Sir Dizis of Switzerland. And this is why in every YouTube video they force you incessantly to watch their publicity, which they literally shove down our throats. Because through commerce they parasite on us without working. A single day for it and the name for it all is corporatism by the nazi templars i owe my soul to the company store go listen to this fantastic song by this man here merle travis you load 16 tons and what do you get another day older and deeper in debt. Saint Peter, don't you call me, cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. As you all know, I see everything with a larger philosophical and historical mindset, as it dawned upon me that exactly these apparently frequent infractions on personal trust have made the french so incredibly mistrustful especially in comparison to the anglo-saxon germanic world where trust is being taken far more seriously as an important factor in daily lives fighting spirit yeah i'll read it for you trust dies but mistrust blossoms and france is a country where the inhabitants are very mistrustful towards their fellow countrymen towards the other and towards their neighbors and i have noticed that the frenchies are always busy to detect the ultimate proof of dishonesty of others of friends and acquaintances being almost the main topic of any conversation like a national habit or a national sport even and with apparent reasons for this behavior like Natural by company, sleeping bag frauds, 
cheap Chinese copies of expensive European products, an organized counterfeit industry leading to the downfall of European enterprises. And all this have brought a national mistrust into the hearts of the Frenchies, statistically augmented by the various Naturobi companies. I wonder what the Austrians of the Carinthia will think about it when they'll hear from me how the Frenchies are counterfeiting their quality product by some Italian Chinese design theft product frauded by the Frenchies in the true sense of globalism and acquired by a stubborn South African. So I give you an example for why there is so little trust among the people here in France. You know, they're always asking like, can I trust this one? Can I trust him? And you know, it just, it's like a national sport somehow. I don't know what's going on here, you know. Always looking for this, you know. And so I ordered two sleeping bags, which I can, which you should be able to put together, like for winter times. This is the Carinthia. Uh, here it says the, the real Carinthia bags. They have they have it all. It's a defense fall, and they have it all stitched their name on the uh, on the outer bag, and everywhere actually. And for the summer, there was a different company. There's one main company on the internet who's like um, selling all the stuff and then they go to different companies, providers who send it. I don't know if Amazon also works like this, I have no idea. And anyway, this is the, um, the name of the provider here. Here, this one here. He has different addresses here. I also have another address. It's um, it's real shady and the guy sent me a sleeping bag for summer this one is for summer and this one for wind winter or like august and he can put them together so you homie ross could sleep in winter so for me it's important but you got this little french businessman who just wants to take off your money you know it's it's fraud so he found out that there is a very identical sleeping bag, which is in the box here, uh, by a Italian brand, Ferrino, but it's not Carinthia. I ordered and I paid for the Tropen uh, Carinthia, which is, uh, and, and they, they send me something very, very similar. You really need to have a good look, which I did. So... You know, now I understand why there's such a lack of confidence, you know, in between, like, the people here in France. So, let's have a look at the, at the sleeping bag. I'll show you the difference and the fraud. There you can see it. It looks very, very much the same, but only from the outside. Of course, it's not the same size because it's a different bag, like... But this is missing, you know, Corinthia. And the material is real thin stuff here. And this is really thick here. So you can, you see? It's a different material. You can already hear it. It's very thin, you see? Very thin. This is thick. Very thick. Austrian quality. And there's nowhere it says Corinthia. Nowhere. So this is the French fraud, you see? It's the same, you know, if I go hitchhiking, you know, they all, like, trust the government. They all, you know, they all got Pharaoh's poison here. But they don't trust, you know, your neighbor. This is, well, at least they leave me alone in this country. That's, that's, a, that's the only good thing. It's a good place to live if you want to, you know, be left alone. They call it the exclusion. 
Well, the kind of many people are kind of proud of it. If you're a homeless, exclusion. They like to force you back inside or something. So you saw it, there's nowhere on it that it is a Corinthia from Austria. Now I'll show you the inside of the um, of the dust bag. And again here it says um, Defense for Corinthia EU from Austria and um, this is different you know that, that how it holds together um, this is also thicker this is real thin here some Chinese stuff how it holds together it's also the, the, the normal stuff like you know it's not Corinthia they're just thieves you know thieves you can see it's empty here this is the Corinthia for the big one the autumn one there it's outside and there's the little one I can't open them all at the same time here I've got no place for it so the real Corinthia you know that it's good quality here it says I think it's a province in Austria called Carinthia. It has a car in it for the soul, you know, like America, Canada, uh, Cabinda, everywhere, you know. Pharaonic. You see here, everywhere. They, they, they thought of the last detail, you know, it's really good stuff. And my life is depending on it, you know. And this, these guys that just want to make cheap money, the Frenchies, eh? And the other company, it's called Naturo Buy. Buy, like to buy something. Naturo, like na nature buy. They don't take any responsibility. I ordered it at their place. And also, I looked for days, you know, to find these, this bag here. And they have a different zipper high quality here it says here yeah, something like ze yeah it's their own brand zipper you see and I show you the other one it has the, the normal YKK some made in China one and of course this is a different material and of course what is the most important you know I, I don't really care about the zipper I mean, except if I have to go and take a leak, you know. Yeah, well, we may laugh about it, but it's it's bloody sad because my life is depending on good material, you know. It just frenzy likes to make some easy money here. So, the material inside, they have their own material, which is really fluffy and it's it's almost like down, but, you know, it can get wet, it doesn't really matter. It will still, you know, keep you warm. But that is important. And that, and that little bugger from Italy, of course it doesn't have the Corinthian material. You know, they, they can't get hold of it. Yeah. So my life is depending on it. And so I, 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 this is going on for weeks now, you know. I, 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 I mailed them, we telephoned, and they just don't want to do anything. So I just put them on YouTube, no choice, eh? Um, and um, and I'll send it to the police, you know, but they're, they're not going to do anything anyway, you know. Okay, I'll put this one, like, here. And let's get the little one out. The Italian one. Now I need my two hands, just put this down. So there are the two bags where they go in. Here it says Corinthia, and here it says Ferrino from Italy. Look at that. From 2021, it says here in French. So, you see, you can hear it. It's a different material, you know, it's very thin. You can hear this. This is army stuff. Armies have it. Also Austrian army is having this. I want this, you know. Not, not like Italian underwear, you know. 
Mm. Yeah, they, they, in their fraud, they even forgot to take this out, you know. So they, they, only this is how I know it's Farino. I, I didn't even know that they made copies of um, or copies of the. Uh, it's it's a very exact copy, but not that this exact actually. And here, look at the zipper. It's not the Z E or whatever. It's Y K K. You know, this is the normal. That's the other way around. Yeah, it's the normal zipper. See, this is not Corinthia. You know? and it's a very nice. I, I guess all the copies they're made in China anyway. This one is made in China, and also the the the, the Corinthia, of course. You know. And this is how they can make an exact copy. So the Chinese make a lot of money on it. The Italians make a lot of money on it. The Frenchies. And who's going to sleep in the cold and, you know, freezing his legs off? Homie Ross will. So I've got no other choice to put it all on YouTube, you know. So even also the mosquito net here. The Corinthia has another color. I think they. this is black. And they have, like, uh, Corinthia has, um, like, green. And this, this too, this is also YKK. Now, why? Why do you do this? Uh, YKK. Yeah, this is not Corinthia. Corinthia has... Uh, Corinthia has another... Their own brand. What is it? The ZE or whatever. Uh, YKK. With the zipper here, you can open it up. Yeah, it's, a, it's a copy, you know. And I mean, uh, I, I didn't buy this, you know. And it says nowhere, nowhere it says um, Corinthia. Nowhere. It's just a copy. It doesn't even say for Reno. It's made, it's made for fraud. That's what I'm telling you. I mean, Ferrino is a brand, you know, they, 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 they should make. The guy is a frauder, you should get him off the market, you know, Frenchies. Hey? This is why we liberate you for, you know. My, uh, your grandpa, you died for nothing. I'm, I'm, you know, they think I'm just some foreigner immigrant, you know, or whatever. They can do whatever they want with me, like, you know. So I'm going to open it up. I need my two hands. I'm going to show you there's nowhere Corinthia. And there's the other one. There's the Corinthia. You see the material shines differently. This one's shiny. And this one is not. So I open it up. And I wonder if the Chinese, if they, if maybe they did put the um, what's in it of Corinthia, so then the fraud is even worse. I'm going to send it to Corinthia as well. I'm going to tell you. Look, what does it say inside? It doesn't say anywhere, like on the side here, Corinthia. No, what does it say? It says Ferrino. Bourrage PL, well, that, that, that's certainly not the, the Corinthia stuff inside. And here, once more, it says Ferrino from Italy. And here it even says in Italy, San Mauro, made in China. Well, I wonder where the other one is being made. Anyway, this is Ferrino. Uh, they frauded me. They steal, they lie, just, you know, to knock the money out of your pocket. Well, I mean, you paid for it. I, I don't have any money. So, some nice fans, you paid for this. And then Frenchy just, in collaboration with the globalists in China and Italy, they just knock your money out of you out of your pocket which was meant to keep me warm in the winter and that 
you know, in this society, it's only about money, 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 money. You see, it sounds different. You know, it's all there. You can see the two different colors of the two bags. Yeah, this is the little one. It has a different color. Yeah, it's a different. It's all Ferrino, Ferrino. Yeah. Fair rhino. It's not even a South African rhino, it's a fair rhino. I mean, if it would have been a South African rhino, okay, but this is a fair rhino. But not very fair at all. Right. Bunch of thieves. This is cyber criminality, cyber crime. This is real cyber crime. I mean, the guy, they're from two different sellers, but from the same internet company, Naturobuy. And um, so, I mean, this guy selling me the Ferrino bag, he's an expert. He knows what he's selling. You know, it's not an accident, but he knows he can say, oh, it's, it's an accident. I'm sorry. You know, I, I made a mistake. Like, no, 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 mate. You did not make a mistake because you are, the, the, you know your product, eh? It's not a mistake. It's not a perfect crime. I'm going to make sure for that, eh? You're not going to get away with your, what you thought is a, the perfect crime. No way. So, YouTube, you please leave it on. I'm doing nothing wrong here, I'm doing something good, so you leave my video on, eh? No matter how much the Frenchies are going to push to take it off, no, 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 you stay on. I'm just, I'm reporting a crime here, cyber crime, for Rhino. So there is the internet company Natura Buy, where we ordered and paid the Austrian Corinthia Tropen High European Quality Sleeping Bag, where now, because of Homie Ross complaining, they've put a sold out bar over it. And there is the Chinese Italian Ferrino design theft counterfeit. The, uh, of the sly businessman and fraudster counter, counterfeiter uh, Gilles, uh, Christophe Gilles, 92 Rue Henri Pavard in 45140 Saint Jean de la Ruelle near Orleans has sent me instead and not being able to resist the temptation of earning an easy buck through fraud and deceit without working a single day for it and augmenting the already extremely high level of mistrust in France. What wonderful times nowadays with so many new possibilities of the anonymous digital world and from a safe distance to properly clean out someone he must have thought by himself. This is why there's hardly any hospitality in France and you'll find more hospitality on the moon because Frenchy always fears the alleged dishonesty of the other person. As we say in South Africa, in a Afrikaander saying, the innkeeper trusts his guests like he is himself. In this context, Germany is very different and far more open, thus making the Germans way more dangerous for pharaoh's elite and their authorities. Like as they say here, wer wind seht, wird Sturm ernten. He who sows the wind 
will harvest a storm. And they mean the authorities with this, of course. And in spite of the fact that Homie Ross was not part of these here, I got invited by them because there's far more hospitality even in Germany than there is in France. It's, uh, and, and this is my own experience, you know, because there's more trust amongst the people. And this is something the elite and our masters don't like at all when people get together and trust each other. In France, the main topic in any conversation is always about being afraid of something, afraid of the government, that this and that acquaintance is dangerous and might bring harm, that you never know if he is dishonest, and so forth and so on. Really, the true rabbits of two world wars. And if I hear them gossip like that, I sort of always imagine the white pom pom at the rear end of a hare rushing away. I just can't help it. Only when Frenchy steps in his Renault, Peugeot, or or Citroën car, he'll transform him and unfortunately also herself into a lethal beast risking the lives of pets, animals, pedestrians, cyclists and even children. The roads in France are literally littered with cadavers of all kinds. And France has the highest rate of mortal accidents of the entire European community due to this Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde duality complex in this absolutely horrifying instant transformation with 3,000 confirmed killed every year on French roads. A country where people don't dare to let their children ride a bicycle outside on the road. And in fact, you don't even see any children on bicycles in France, where children on bikes is literally non-existent. Here, the French newspaper, Le Parisien, as you can see here on top right, they did a survey on the, um, how dangerous it is, how dangerous it is on French roads because of the cars. And that this came out. It says here, toutes ces voitures ont refusé la priorité aux piétons. It says all the cars refused priority on to the pedestrians on a um, a pedestrian crossing as you can see here you know the guy is standing on it the car should stop but no car has stopped it says toutes ces voitures all the cars refuse the priority on the uh, pedestrians doesn't they don't care if it's a child or what and the government in france they don't do absolutely nothing because the car industry in France is extremely huge. You know, with they got three big car brands, at least, like Peugeot, Renault, Citroën. Uh, very fast cars sometimes. Um, but I mean, who cares? As long as Natura buy and their cybercrime associates can buy a new fast car, on stolen money, all is good in France. I'm not angry with the Frenchies because of this sleeping bag scam, because I know there's a deeper reason behind this, and that through this mishap, I have to explain you something related to this scam. Here, read with me. 
This is by Lao Tzu. The best fighter is never angry. Let this suck in and think about this. And that's exactly how I feel. This scam is just a dumb thing that leads to distrust amongst an entire nation, thus laming an entire people, of which we've seen the result in France during two world wars, seeing only the white pompon rear end of the French bunnies, and which is not really because they're cowards. No, it is because there is no mutual trust. Like, why should I cover his six and sacrifice if the other won't do the same towards me? Cover your six is army slang and reference to a soldier's wrist watch being kept horizontally on the arm, with the 12 up front and the 6 behind towards the back. Here you can see Spitfire and here it says 12 o'clock, it means ahead of the airplane, 3 o'clock here, it means to the right, 6 o'clock means behind where the tail is here, and 9 o'clock means to the left. And also, like enemy at 11, meaning that the enemy's position is forward and slightly to the left, which is a Nazi Templar octagon invention using their Swiss Army watch, as all armies derive out of the Knights Templars and their hierarchy. And therefore, because of these Sodomite Knights Templars and all the actual pinkless killers everywhere, in their slang, cover my six has gotten a slightly more aberrant meaning. More into the direction of cover my triple six cover my six watch your six and because the frenchies are so incredibly mistrustful with each other and towards others beforehand imprisoned by their shackles of mistrust weighing a ton of immobilization. They will never be able to organize a real defense system or a general uprising against the enemy within, since they don't trust each other. And for an uprising or a real people's revolution by humanity, there must be trust and total readiness for the ultimate sacrifice for one another. And Frenchies are just not ready to sacrifice anything because it immediately runs through their minds. Why should I give something to others whom in the end will betray me anyway? And so nothing will ever happen. So in the end, they will even trust the wrong ones, as they don't trust each other. And with Pharaoh making sure, and by forcing the slaves, that they will only trust the system instead of each other. And this is what I told you, remember this here, this saying, 
by the cardinal and aristocrat Jean-François Paul de Gondi, the most mistrustful are often the greatest dupes, which means if you don't trust each other, you will lose, you're going to be duped here. Yeah. So the cardinal and aristocrats, he surely knew his flock. And in this saying here, he's talking, of course, about the French, as he was French from Italian descent, but he was French. He knew his flock. He knew his slaves. No, I'm not angry because of the scam, nor do I seek revenge to get even or get my money back, because I relate and see the bigger picture where the problem lies, which we have to solve together as a whole. Humanity gets more and more enslaved by Pharaoh because there is no union. And there is no union because of mutual mistrust. And there's mutual mistrust. You can read with me here from top to down. So there is mutual mistrust because of no ethics, no respect, no moral code, no honesty, like cybercrime, sleeping bag, counterfeit scams. And because there's no more integrity, I'm used to take my losses in dignity and contemplation with a gentleman's understanding seizing the bigger picture that, for example, the French are Pharaoh's first victim in Europe. With French becoming the nobility's language of Pharaoh's aristocracy, all over Europe. Who? Oh, peasants. From the courts of England to the courts of Prussia and even the courts of Russia. Everywhere French was spoken by the nobility. Read with me. We would like to introduce this topic by saying that the period between 1200 and 1500 must be seen as a period of shifting emphasis upon the two languages spoken in England. The upper class continued to speak French, as they had done in the previous century. But the reasons were etc. They spoke French, the nobility. The French are the first victim of Pharaoh in Europe, with first of all Pharaoh Caesar and married to Pharaoness Cleopatra, did a huge genocide on the Celtic tribes of France by Pharaoh's Romans butchering men, women, and children. It was called the Gallic Wars. And here you can see the Celtic leader Vercingetorix, and this is Caesar and his gang of pharaohs, and here you can see Frenchy being imprisoned. So, of course, Frenchy got a little bit mistrustful, and then followed up afterwards on what was left of the proud Celtic tribes. Afterwards came a thousand years of total control feudal system 
by Pharaoh in his medieval castles, developing the French language as Pharaoh's new adopted language spoken at all the European courts of the nobility. So here you can see the white slaves doing sort of cotton picking because the white race is a slave race. They have been slaves of Pharaoh for 2000 years now. The white race has no power whatsoever. And those who are white and who are ruling over the white race, they are the nobility and they do not come out of the Europeans, but from Egypt. So here, down here, you see the white European race doing the so-called cotton picking. Well, it's not cotton, but you know what I mean. They do the cotton picking in a total slavery feudal system for the masters here in the castles. Here are the slave masters. And here, a thousand years of slavery in a feudal system for the white race. So, I understand that after 2000 years of pharaonic slavery over the Gaul and territory of France, the inhabitants of France have become incredibly mistrustful towards one another and having led to the typical French everyone for himself mentality without hospitality and augmented mistrust by all the little business scams frauding one's money out of one's pockets through lies and deceit as here in my case with the counterfeit sleeping bag wrecking the European economy through organized counterfeit design theft on top of it all. No, I'm not angry with the Frenchies for being ripped off, shaken down, and for their absolute lack of solidarity and hospitality. Because on the other side, they've left me in peace all these years. The French police have always been correct, polite and friendly with me. And it's a gorgeous country with lots of nature, very high mountains, extended forests, beautiful lakes, a lot of green and pict picturesque villages with a lot of history. No, I'm not angry, having been deceived, because on the other side, I've survived in peace in France over the last eight years. And the Frenchies are not aggressive, except when in their car. It's quite a safe country. They're very polite and charming. Only there's nothing you can do with the Frenchie because they're so damn mistrustful. So for me now, the Frenchies are just part of the countryside who don't really disturb me. And I don't even notice them anymore, really. Thank you, Pharaoh, for destroying all the tribes of the world and leaving soulless, traumatized, mistrustful slaves of one's proud warrior tribes. Several of you good people out there have brought several times to my attention by mail and by comment the newly founded US Space Delta 18. But I thought I had already made 
some videos about that 10 years ago which is this video here with a lot of pyramids amidst the US rockets of the US space program here on my channel Hatzafat seven years ago so here's my other channel you can find it here in the um, in the bar here here it says video it's all in French and here it says channels where I got my other channels and you see here that was seven years ago the title is satellite drone imagery all seeing eye in the sky and rock and Laura Bush from Grafenried Swiss nobility the video is worth watching so here you see the pyramids with the U.S. rockets and their space program. This is official. Oh. Also, the logo on this old video of mine from six years ago is very interesting. It says Knights Templar Fleet. And it has the same symbol in the middle as the space delta 18 logo of course this is not an ancient templar picture which you see here but as the knights templars never really disappeared um it might it, it's definitely been done by by the same ones and i'll try to put the links in the description if i won't forget on my channel Gatsefrat, here you can see the same symbol as on the um, the space delta thing here, and the title is Switzerland owned African slave trade slavery ships of Swiss Navy. So here it says space delta eighteen, and why number eighteen? for i do not really assume our pharaonic masters have another 17 space deltas the number 18 consists of three times six and one plus eight is nine for the nine original knights templars so here you can see them Hugues de Payen, Godefroy de Saint Omer, where the, the word Omerta is from, Andre de Montbar, Hugues I or Hugh, Geoffroy Bizol, Archambault de Saint Amand, Payen de Montdidier, Rossal, Godmar or Gondamer or Gondemar. They're all aristocrats. You see, you know, this, uh, this de everywhere here. De Montbar, de Saint-Omer, de Payen. It means, like the Germans, von. Uh, it means from. They're all aristocrats. Yeah. Like von Stauffenberg or Werner von Braun. All aristocrats. You know, they never have any problems, you know, like doing paperclip things and all that. But there are also the nine original gods of Egypt, the sun god Atum, his children Shu and Tefnut, their children Geb and Nut. And their children, Osiris, Isis, Set, and Nephthys, all together called the Great Aeneid. It says the Great Aeneid. You see, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine original gods of Egypt. And here we can read about the great Aeneid, and they were the nine original gods of Egypt. They were living in Heliopolis, 
polis, it means the town. That's where the word police is coming from, you know, the town sheriffs. And Helios, it's from the Greek sun. So Heliopolis, it means sun city. And we can see it was a major city of ancient Egypt. So here we can see Heliopolis. Heliopolis was in the Pertasser, Lower Egypt, where now Cairo is. Now we can read about Heliopolis if you want. So the the name is like Greek, probably by the uh, the Ptolemy. And here's the great Aeneid. There they are. Atum, Shu, Tefnut, Geb, Nut, Osiris, Isis, Set, Nephthys. Oh, they even added Horus here. Why did they do that? Hmm. Okay. So, Heliopolis, Sun City. And where is this rocket going? The uh, Space Delta 18. Well, it's going to the sun, isn't it? It all relates. And what do we see in their logo? We see Pharaoh. And then there's the octagon star over his head. So, and the nine Templars, I mean, they come out of the aristocracy and the nobility. They come out of Pharaoh. Also, nine original Templars. The nine Aeneid, Pharaonic gods. And now we got 18, space delta number 18. One plus eight is nine. The rocket going to Sun City. The Heliopolis rockets of America. And what do we see on the space delta logo? Yes. Pharaoh ruling over the earth, which they do, in fact. Pharaoh rules the world, which they even depict in their logo. And now sending a rocket to Heliopolis, where the sun is, and the, the great Aeneid, space, delta, one plus eight, is nine and why always delta why these creeps always delta us around i'm tired of getting delta around and here you see the delta here becomes a pyramid see and here on top of it here is a square for the square and compass in white. Of course, it's red and white, Swiss colors and Knights Templars colors. And on top here, it's the same symbol as the Space Delta 18. See? Yes, it's part of a pyramid. See? Just depends how you look upon it. You know? Well, apparently, they look upon it from the downside. Where the slaves are or where you're just standing right? but it is definitely the same symbol well oh, this can't be a coincidence so stop delting us around the new delta variant of pharaoh's bug war the u.s delta force and their blood ritual pinning for this soldier brotherhood killing for the elite and look here they got the pyramid badge here with the light lightning striking in the middle in german lightning is called blitz like in the blitzkrieg yeah it means a lightning war and it's also the ss symbol in the middle here because it's all 
a um, consequence of the uh, Operation uh, Paperclip when all the Nazis, they came in the US. And this is the result. You see here the Blitzkrieg, the Nazi, the SS symbol. You know, if you look at the sides, you know, one here, and one here, it really says SS. If you only look at the white part and not at the red part. So you got Pharaoh's pyramid with the SS symbol in it and the Blitzkrieg. And they do a blood ritual. Uh, killing, you know, uh, defenseless like Afghanis and their children, you know, in the third world. Shame on you. So as soon as the US drugs armies Delta Force and Navy SEALs had left. The Taliban could finally ban the opium trade again, just as they did in 1998, thus being the main reason for the US NATO invasion of 2001 in Afghanistan under the pretext of their towering inferno false flag attack. So on purpose, I show you this on an American state YouTube channel called Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty. Here they are. And uh, the title is Mar Marijuana and Opium Crops Destroyed After Afghan Taliban Leaders Edict. And of course, you know, they, they, they tell the truth, you know, because if I would have shown you some Afghan channel, many of you wouldn't have believed it. So therefore, I show a American state YouTube channel called Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty also very much uh, implicated in the Ukraine war. And of course, you know, they start with telling the truth here and showing the pictures, how the Afghani, how they destroy the opium fields. But then they have to put some grains of disinformation in our heads, like, you know, like put a little bit of poison in our heads, you know, to make us doubt the whole story. But these are real Muslims who don't even wish their enemies' children to be addicted on these satanic drugs. This is how the Taliban are. That's just how they are, you know. So I would say, you know, Get rid of the US police and import a lot of Talibans and give them a US police uniform and you get the um, you get all the, the, the drugs off your streets in 24 hours. I can guarantee you that. We get also delta by the Kappa Delta for female Freemasons, also called a sorority which etymologically derives from the French word sœur, meaning sister, as in Sisters of Isis, or Sœur d'Isis, for Suisse, Suisse, the original French Templar name for Switzerland. And look at their charming logo. Here's the logo. Yeah, look at that. Look, you got the, uh, the, the the skull and bones of the Freemasons here. You got the pyramid, the dagger. I mean, talking about femme fatale, eh? the fatal sisters. The concept of three, standing for the compass. You got the Christian cross, surrounded by four, six, nine, twelve. I don't know what. So the, the Christians are surrounded, I'd say. Here you got Aladdin's lamp, you know, getting the demons out, so to speak. And um, of course, a snake. 
Yeah. Uh, definitely the sorority of the the fatal sisters and uh, this the femme fatale and here look where you can oh yeah there were and the uh, so so a sorority is a female brotherhood a female fraternity and this one here was founded by four sisters for the concept of four and three stars in their logo. Here you got the four femme fatale here. Maybe you recognize some of their names here. Blackiston, Hendrick, Wilson, White. And um, for the concept of four, the concept of three is here. That's where they come from. The uh, our masters and um here you got the president stockton the vice president feinstein well you probably heard that name before huh? one of the steinsies the uh the pharaonic uh jaywalker nobility not all jaywalkers are pharaonic nobility and uh, so they are the Steinsies, the, the first ones who built in stone around the year 1000 in Europe. Whereas the European slaves they were just living in dirt huts like in Africa. And um, so here you can see once more their logo. Well, you all have fun with it. The Pharaoh Gurleys of the Kappa Delta love the Delta because Delta is the fourth letter in the Greek alphabet with the value four but yet the picture shows a triangle for the concept of three and side of their beloved pyramid and integrated hierarchy. So Delta says square and compass, square and compass, one single letter that says it all. Well, now you all know, finally. Sorry, it took so long, but I have a lot of things on my mind. I'd say put them all in their space Delta 18 rockets. Let them take all their deltas with them and off you go. And we take our planet back. This one here is the governess of New York, Kathy Hotchell with a lovely pharaonic logo of the seal of New York underneath, showing the Egyptian goddess Ma'at to the right, another girly to the left with a French revolutionary cap, as in Statue of Liberty given by France and planted in New York, with the sun for Amun Ra and a genuine Nazi eagle on top of it all, which will surely be a joyful sight for the jaywalkers in Brooklyn, New York. Well, you just don't get that high up without joining a sorority or a sisterhood like Kappa Delta. So here you see Amun Ra, the sun. This is Ma'at, an Egyptian goddess. Here she got the hat here of the French Revolution, the red hats. And this is a genuine Nazi eagle. Exactly the same. This is the this is the consequence of Operation Paperclip. The Nazis have taken over America and also Russia through Mr. Putin. Well, there she is, Kathy Hotchell, the lady who's showing herself with a Nazi eagle so everyone can see it. 
and the former they got rid probably the sisters you know of the sorority they got rid of the former governor uh, because of allegations of sexual harassment yeah sure yeah sure he did yeah of course he did and um here yeah, she su successfully lobbied the university to divest from apartheid south africa so she helped you know like giving south africa to the zulus and one of the reasons i can't go back back home and uh, well there's a lot more to read i didn't even read it and she's in the committee of the armed services here she is in the committee on homeland security homeland security counterterrorism and intelligence subcommittee um, uh, on emergency preparedness response and communications well, you know why these uh, the sorority they have a dagger in their logo. Now we know, eh? So this is the seal of New York, the one with the Nazi eagle, which used to look like this here. You know, different. But anyway, here's the sun. This is Maat with the scales and the and the sword. This is the, the, the cap of the French Revolution. They call it the Phrygian cap here. And here's the Nazi eagle. But it, it, they changed it, you know. This is what it used to look like. Or this here. Or this here. Very different from today. You know, because the Nazis are back. You know. And they're getting bolder and bolder, you know again so so this is what it used to look like the seal of new york well it still was occult completely occult but now it's nazi again and this is what the seal of new york looks like today with a nazi eagle and um, the sorority standing over it the Sisters of Isis, yeah, Ma'at, Amun Ra, the Sisters of Isis. So here it is, it's a close-up picture, a Nazi eagle. Operation Paperclip. Ukraine war, Russia, Putin, Switzerland. They were never defeated. Germany, the Germans lost the war. But the Nazis won the war. So here you can see the Nazi eagle with a swastika underneath and exactly the same as on the seal of New York on the, under that female of the sorority. It's a Nazi train eagle. Eagles like this one were mounted, mounted on train engines. The presence of the eagle indicated property of the Third Reich and helped foster a sense of national pride. Well, New Yorkers, now you can feel your national pride with the seal of New York. Have fun, you all. Now, I want you to have a close look at the form of the Space Delta 18 logo you can see pharaoh ruling over the earth and there's the swiss octagon hanging over his head as the invisible swiss on all key positions with their octagon and this triangle with four sides for the concept of three and four now would you call me a liar when I told you that America's actual so-called biggest enemy used the very same logo for their space agency equivalent of Space Delta 18. Look to the right. This 
is the Russian Roscosmos. No, silly, it doesn't say Bokokmok, sort of Rusky variety of cocksock by the local female Moscovite population. No, it says Roscosmos. So here it says here, Roscosmos. And look, this logo here is the very same as this thing here. So how, how can they be enemies? You know, they're the same ones ruling over all countries. And here's Pharaoh ruling over the world. And here's the invisible Swiss octagon above of that. You know, with the on all key positions. And this is supposed to be Delta. Well, Delta has the, the value of four, the value of four. Normally it's going like this. So it has three angles and it is the concept of three. But actually this one, because it's going like inwards, it has the concept of four as well. And it already says Delta for three. And here, one, two, three, four sides for the concept of four. So it does say square and compass all over. And the Ruskies, the Pokokmok, no, I'm not going to say the other one again. They have the same symbol here. Well, how is that possible? How the hell is this possible? So it says, in fact, the P is an R. And the C here is an S. It says Ros, Cos, Mos. It's quite easy. There's just a few letters that are different, you know. And so the Cyrillic Russian C gets pronounced as an S. So it says Ros, Cos, Mos. And they have the very same symbol as the US Space Delta 18. And this means that the Russian leaders are the same as the US leaders, all using the same symbols of the pharaonic ancestors of Egypt's worldwide nobility ruling over the human race, who just want humanity's tribes to fight each other and transform entire nations into one big slaughterhouse. Mr. Putin is very good friends with President Zelensky and friends with President Biden and friends with President Macron. Just look at the symbols, look at the bloodlines and look at Switzerland, folks. Here, I prove it to you once more, and this is what I did. I wrote this mail to the Ukrainian embassy in Paris, offering them my help. But they're not even interested, and just sent me back their standard mail, without any answer at all because they want to destroy the Ukrainian people and the Russian people. As I've already explained to you, right after Putin's invasion started, in this video here, well, it's underneath the letter, which you can now see here in a eight hour assembled documentary. So here is that video. Here, uh, I don't know, yeah, you can see the title, The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil, Part 7, Switzerland, Sleeper Agent. And this is here, The Swiss Beast, Part 1, and this is the French version. So this one lasts now eight hours. Swiss base number seven. 
and I wrote them on August the 16th, 2022. You can see that here, a quarter to three. So it, there, it, it's nine days ago. Intel on Putin and humanitarian aid to Ukraine. To the consul, and I also wrote, wrote one to the other one there. This is a, um, a public email, so don't worry. Um, fuck tube, don't take my video away. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a public email, right? I'm not um, disclosing any secrets here, yeah? So and this is my email, swisstorture at gmail.com. So I wrote them here in English and here in French. So I just read it for you. Hi, I'm ex Rhodesian SAS and I'd like to help out. Me and a friend of mine want to drive a truck load full of food and medicals into the Ukraine. In Strasbourg, I'm in contact with Sergei, a Ukrainian surgeon, with French doctors and with humanitarian organization. Only as a South African, I don't have a country anymore. And South Africa belongs to the Zulus now. So I'm here now, eh? And they want they don't want to issue me a passport. So I need you to issue me a Ukrainian passport if you're interested in our help. Otherwise, I just can't get there, traveling from Strasbourg, France. I fought against the Ruskies twice, once with the SADF, the South African Defense Force, in Angola and Cabinda in 1981, and once in Afghanistan in 1985. At the moment, I have expired Swiss documents for Schengen states only. As after my time in the SAS, I also attended other sorts of duties, which led to the following intel about President Putin. So in the videos here which are just which are underneath who is part of an ancient international medieval military order of which the proofs are in these three vid youtube videos here president putin gets his orders out of switzerland where his order is based yours truly sean ross from south africa and ex rhodesian sas well here's in french salut je suis ex sas de rhodesie well i'm not going to bother you with that one eh? And uh, so again, this is the video I talked about. It's eight hours. To the left, it says the Swiss beast. You can't see the whole thing. And the rest, yeah, you can see it's on my channel, Homeland Security. Okay, I'm gonna show you their answer, which is a total contradiction with what they are showing to us, you know, what they're presenting to the world. But of course, I knew it. So here's the answer. You see, Intel puts in humanitarian aid to Ukraine. That was um, what I wrote. This is uh, their email. There's nothing, I'm not dis disclosing any secret information either. It's public information. It says, uh, add Ukraine, help on Ukraine. But at the same time, it said, adieu almost adieu ukraine so bye bye ukraine if you put the uh well if you, the i should be then here adieu. you could make adieu out of it you know and sort of optically immediately i see adieu you know i don't, I don't see ed ah so it was two so two days later i got this back august the 18th so that's seven days ago well they send it midnight how come you know why midnight and they say that oh it's a standard letter here this is the the embassy of the ukraine in france yeah uh, avenue de Saxe, paris it's the um the committee of the coordination to the help to the ukraine well i mean i'm offering my help i even risking my life there you know and just get a standard letter back with all these things, you know, to um, all these links to click, I'm not going to click any links. You know, I mean, I'm help. I'm offering my help, so I I would expect like, yeah, okay, right. You know, what we're we gonna do? Okay, let's get together. You know, like nothing of the kind. It's like 
you know, it's like I want thousand dollars of them, you know, or something. I want something of them, you know, and they don't even answer me about the passport or about nothing. There's nothing. So I wrote them a, a letter back that I don't click on links, and if they could please, uh, you know, give me a normal answer. So this is their icon. There's nothing on it. Maybe it's um, it's showing Zelensky uh, cross dressing or something, which he did. I guess you all saw the pictures, the video. I'm, I'm not going to show it here on my channel because they can do it, and I get my channel taken off. And the same pink list killers, you know, um, slamming the button. You know, he's doing it like it's their, but it's their thing after all. You know, but this is how it works. Yeah. So they're not interested, people. It's all uh, it's all cinema. The president is a cinema. What well, the other one too? Putin. All the presidents, uh, like you know, like get, get together and help Ukraine. It, it's all. It's a lie. It's just a lie. You know. So I show you what they wrote me back. It's just and then I they they and then they send me this back again. And then I, I, I send them another one, and I never got any answers anymore, you know. I guess they got the picture, you know, they, um, that, they, uh, that, that they got a guy here, letters, a guy who understands it, you know. They got their pants pulled down like Mr. Zelensky. So after that, I sent them this back in French, because they answered me in French. And I said, well, apparently there's interest, in, interest, interest. I said, well, apparently there's not much interest. You know, you're not really interested. And here, click. I said, I don't click on your on your links. So I mean, they could have easily sent me these things, you know, the links in a different way, so I can just copy them, copy paste them, you know. Uh, or in, a, in some other, other way. No, instead of that, they just send me the same bureaucratic standard letter. You know, and, and, you know there's a lot of guys, you know, risking their lives for, for this, you know. So, and then, you know, then, then they send me this back, you know, this with this, the same answer, exactly the same thing, you know. Just standard letters, stick, you know, you can, they don't even have to answer, you know, they can do it in five seconds, you know. So it's the same, you know, with the French, you know, Americans and the Allied English risking their necks for the French, you know, the Allied and the Allied landings on June the 6th. I showed you that they're not really thankful. They're not thankful at all. It's all, you know, cinema, you know, for the TV or the newspapers. The Russians are not very thankful either, you know. 3,000 American sailors, they, 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 gave their life, you know, to send the convoys to Amer to Russia from America. And I don't know, billions of tons were sent, you know. Russia could only win the patriotic war, the great patriotic war, because America helped them, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And now they just they just spit back on you. They spit back on America. They spit back on England. They really hate us. I mean, why, why did we help them? And I tell you, with the Ukrainians, it's going to be the same thing. Why are you risking your neck for them? They're not going to be thankful people. They're only going to spit on you, just like all of them. Don't do their wars for them, you know. It's, it's, it's don't do it. We must fight the enemy within. So here, the, again, Ros Cosmos. Here's their logo. Uh, it says Pokokomok. No, not the other word again. No, I'm not going to say that again. Eh? And um, well, it goes on here. Here's, you see their logo again. The same symbol as the US Delta, Space Delta. And this is the old one. So here's their website i managed yesterday to get in and today i just couldn't get in anymore which is kind of weird so now it's turning i have to wait a little bit no i don't think it's working it is not working i'm sorry oh here 
on Wikipedia, Space Delta 18. Here's their logo. One more time here. And look at the heads of these guys. I mean, they don't look very human. They, they probably... Well, I mean, if it was, if it were a science fiction film, I'd say that they, they're breeded with uh, aliens. I'm not saying that. Hey, I can't say that. But if it were a science fiction film, I mean, it looks like they're breathed with them. There's something else. Look at their faces. And here, the all-seeing eye here with the blitz, the blitz creek. Here's the concept of four. This one is the concept of three, the circle. And it's the whole thing is an oval. Oh, everything is there. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's, a, uh, it's a chess game. It's all a chess game to them. It's, the, uh, it's a knight of the chess. Oh, really? And they're all, they have a lot, you know. One eye, this eye is looking this way and this, this is looking the other way, you know. I noticed that a lot. Look, he's got this uh, the symbol on his chest. If he goes to Russia, he can just pass, you know, for a Russian officer like that. And um, well, you can read it yourself. Space Force Intelligence Activity. See, you know. The National Air and Space Intelligence Center. Yeah. Oh, well, Sphinx. Oh, okay. But, um, we get that. And an octagon. And to the right on top, there's the symbol again. The Missile and Space Intelligence Center. Space Delta 7. <laughs> How many stars? Seven. Okay. Oh, and there's one on top. Seven for the concept of three and four together. Oh, it even says seven here. Look at that. Yeah. And there's a bear. Well, the Russian bear. If you go with the lo this logo with an American uniform to Moscow, you can just get into the um, to the head shed there, you know, to the headquarters. I mean, the symbol is the same, uh, the Russian bear on it. And there's the octagon. The Ruskies probably use the same. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, they do. I already showed that to you. People. Our leaders, they are the same. They have the same logos in Russia as in America. The people shouldn't fight each other. We don't have any problems with each other. Stop it. Look, there are seven heads here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven heads of state. And all governments of the world are friends with each other who just want the slaves battle each other in a big arena just as the pharaonic elite of rome already did in the Colosseum. look there it is the symbol again on the uh, space 18666 uh, concept of three and four Delta thing. Here, yeah, look, there it is. Exactly here. And here, the other, the other way around, here it is. This is a pentacle, and this is a pentagram. Yeah, duck. Same symbol. There it is. It's in a pyramid. If you look at from downwards, as I've shown you in the Delta Airlines. But it's also this here. Look, and they even put a child in the Rock Pock Mock Space Delta 18 logo. Just think this part away and this also away. I mean, here already is nothing. So it is really accentuated this here. Tuck, tuck, tuck. You all see it, eh? Uh, this space delta, kappa delta. This girl is also being deltaed by them. And here it is again, the space delta 18, which is here. 
You remember the girl standing here, exactly here, where Pharaoh has his head here? She was exactly standing here. And here, the, the I think I just call it pok, pok kok mok from now on. Same thing. The, we're getting pok kok mocked and we're getting deltaed and it's, uh, it's all over. Just don't forget the girl standing here. Eh? Look, even Roscosmos, the Russian Space Agency, and the NASA logo, they are the same. There is a circle like an oval for the Oval Office here as well. So Americans and Russians, again, the same. And then they've got this red thing here. And here too, sort of a red thing. Because they're all the same pharaohs, people. And here you got the United States Space Force, Department of the Air Force. Here it says 2019. So this one here is younger than this. This is Star Wars, Starfleet Command. But the symbols are the same. This, you know, they all, and they all got this circle here, or this, this oval. It stops here. Here as well, it stops here. So it seems that this is younger, and this is the same one as the... Uh, as the, uh, the the Delta thing. Uh, apparently they got everything from Star Wars, you know. But I mean, Hollywood, they are the same masters, they are the same pharaohs, you know. So it's all older. And you've got all these stars here, you know, here. And here a big one, same as here, all these little stars and here a big one. And this one here. United Federation of the Planet, like the Swiss Federation, eh? A Swiss A. So the captain here, he says this here, because he saw the United States Space Force with the same logo. And this one here, oh, I know, mate. They nicked it from us here. <laughs> well, they're all the same, you know. Hollywood is the same as uh, the army, the politicians. They're all, it's all by the same masters, eh? I'll let you look in it, at it in silence. Silence is over. Look, there it is again, the same symbol. And this is why Pharaoh's nobility is using the very same Space Delta Roscosmos logo which I filmed here by some Dutch Prince Morris of the Royal House of Orange. And you can find it on a lot of business logos as well. And as we can see, the very powerful House of Orange and its Prince Morris, even using the symbol of both the Russian and American Space Agency. It is therefore no wonder that in the very same land of that House of Orange they founded in 2006 a European militarized police to knock down the slaves in crisis times which they just call a European police force with military status for crisis management using political vocabulary to make it look harmless. And in fact, in France, during the Yellow Vests demonstrations, many have heard the police talking other languages than French, while shooting out the eyes of young French protesters. Well, maybe the language they heard was maybe Lithuanian, like here, maybe Romanian, or maybe Turkish. Is Turkey part of Europe? And look how many there are. One, France, Italy, two, 
Netherlands 3, Poland 4, Portugal 5, Romania 6, Spain 7, Lithuania 8, Turkey 9. There are nine original uh, Euro Gen 4 and um, just like the nine original Templars. And where, why were the nine original Templars? Because there are nine original Egyptian gods, the great Enyad. The name of this crisis management police is Euro Gen 4, short for European Gendarmerie Force. And the French word gendarme means Jean de Arme, meaning people with guns. This will be Pharaoh's police force created by the House of Orange, who also founded the Bilderberger, that will be used to force you and your children to take Pharaoh's poison related to Pharaoh's bug war. And I read for you here, here the European Gendarmerie Force. The European Gendarmerie Force, or Eurogent 4, is an operational, pre-organized and rapidly deployable intervention force, exclusively comprising elements of several European police forces with military status of the parties in order to perform all police tasks within the scope of crisis management operations as established by Article 1 of the Treaty Establishing the European Gendarmerie Force. So here's their logo, Lex Pacifarat. Lex is the law, and Pacifarat, it means making peace or making, making things quiet, you know. And, uh, so uh, here is that treaty. They talk Article 1 of the treaty. Oh, look here. The, its status is enshrined in the Treaty of Velzen, which is a, a town in the, uh, the land of the House of Orange in October 2007. And uh, so it's active from 2006 until present. And here, at that time, there were still seven states. Now there are, there are nine, as you just saw. The implementation agreement was finally signed by defense ministers of five participating countries on September 17th, 2004 in the Nordvik. I hope I pronounced it right, in the Netherlands. Oh. That's where they're from. And uh, well, I guess there's a lot more to see. These are the, the generals or the colonels of it. They're probably all aristocrats. And here are the seven countries. And here it says, look, the observers are Turkish and the partners are Lithuanian. who are already in it now. I also have a maritime force and, wow, well, great fun, eh? Was it necessary? We already have enough of these, don't we now? These are the participating countries. Turkey is in it as well, Lithuania. And here uh, is their website. Let's see if it gets out. Oh, there it is. Uh, Oh, they're the victims. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Well, all right. And how do they translate it from Latin? Lex pacifrat, the law will bring peace. No, 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 no. no it's the law. No, no, I, I, I know some Latin. It means the law the law of silence, silencing you up. 
that's what it means peace it's also like silencing silencing you up you know like putting whistleblowers like julian assange like you know forever in prisons in europe that's what it means well wow. yeah it means shut up or we knock the wind out of you did they really have to call it like this with a d for gender in it because it actually sounds much better without needing to force that D in the middle of it all. Eurogen4 with the D or Eurogen4 without the D? Well, we all know they have a reason for this. Coming out of the pink list killer Knights Templars there are nine original knights and there are nine actual Eurogender for states with even part of Asia in it. I mean, Europe stops here at the Bosporus and Constantinople here. This is Asia, it's not Europe. And when these guys came into Europe, they call them guest workers in the 60s, you know, like fooling us, saying they're guests. And now they're going to police you and knock the wind of you out of your windpipes if you don't obey. And uh, I must say, I have nothing against Turks. I met some really nice Turks. And, um, but I don't like the idea of being lied to by Pharaoh and all that. Look at what's written here. Look at it carefully. And also in Russia, the people get beaten up by Pharaoh's blue army with pink list killer written backwards on their uniforms because all these worldwide uniformed thugs come out of the Knights Templars, about whom the French king said that they were all sodomites needing to be burnt. Or do you really think that Russia's pharaohs are so stupid writing pink list killer backwards in a country where pink list killers get hunted down by the slaves huh? these are the new templars in all senses of the word and here you can see the masonic logo of the russian Sberbank, which is probably Ruski's biggest bank and it has three white and three green squares in their logo for the concept of three and four saying square and compass so here this it's a square a part of a square well there's a square it's 90 degrees so this is the square the concept of four and there are three of them, each one, two, three green, and one, two, three white, for the concept of three, for the compass. So it says square and compass. Of course it does. And this is, in fact, a Swiss Nazi Templar bank. All banks in the world are all Swiss Nazi Templar banks. And all nations traded with the whore of Babylon from the Alps. Wake up, Roskies, and don't listen to Putler the Führer. Instead, listen to this fantastic Slovakian clip by Klemen Slakonia called Put In, Put Out. Put In, Put Out. So here it is, this channel, Klemen Slakonia. 
Here's the song, it has subtitles here, but he sings in English. And the title is Vladimir Putin, Put In, Put Out, the unofficial Russian anthem. It's fantastic. It's three minutes. And so here it is again in his videos. He also has a song on uh, Angela Merkel, and one on Putin, one on the Pope. And uh, so, Ruskies, go watch this clip, put in, put out. Let's put them out. By the way, Ruskies, your great patriotic war wouldn't have been possible without America's help, who shipped you from October 1941 to May 1945 through the Arctic convoys from America to Russia. 427,284 trucks, 13,303 combat vehicles. So I'm reading here, read with me, Ruski. 35,170 motorcycles, 2,328 ordnance service vehicles, 2,670,371 tons of petroleum products, gasoline and oil, or 57.8% of the high octane aviation fuel. 4,478,116 tons of foodstuffs, canned meats, sugar, flour, salt, etc. 1,911 steam locomotives, 66 diesel locomotives, 9,920 flat cars, 1,000 dump cars, 120 tank cars, and 35 heavy machinery cars, provided ordnance, goods, ammunition, at artillery shells, mines, assorted explosive, amounted to 53% of total domestic consumption. One item typical of many was a tire plant that was lifted bodily from the Ford Company's River Rouge plant and transferred, transferred to the USSR. The 1947 money value of the supplies and services amounted to about $11 billion. Hey, Ruski, you read this again. Because the Yanks, they saved millions of Russian lives and they sacrificed thousands of their own in order to ship all the goodies for your war into Russia. Man who died a horrible death in the Arctic seas while being torpedoed by the German U-boats and Nazi airplanes. So, there were also British deliveries. Do you want me to read it for you? Well, go read it yourself, you know. Yeah. Yeah, British deliveries. Yeah, read with me, Ruski. 3,000 plus Hurricane aircraft, 4,000 plus other aircraft, 27 naval vessels, 5,218 tanks including 1,380 Valentines from Canada, 5,000 plus anti-tank guns, 4,020 ambulances and trunk, trucks. Here, the 5,000 anti-tank guns. Now we see it's going all the other way around, Broski. So wake up. The Nazis are back in your country, and his name is Putin, with tens or if not, well, tens of thousands of Nazis, you know, behind him. Real Nazis. I don't mean, you know, like some 
nationalists, Slavic Russians. No, not those Nazis. They're not Nazis. They're nationalists. I mean, real Nazis out of the Nazi Templars from Switzerland. So, yeah, 1,721 motorcycles, 1 1.5 billion pound sterling worth of aircraft engines, 1,474 radar sets, 4,338 radio sets, 600 naval radar and sonar sets, hundreds of naval guns, 15 million pair of boots, in total 4 million tons of war material, including food and medical supplies, were delivered. The munition totaled 308 million pounds sterling, not including naval munitions supplied. The food and raw materials totaled 120 million pounds sterling in 1946, in accordance with the Anglo-Soviet Military Supplies Agreement of June 27, 1942, military aid sent from Britain to the Soviet Union during the war was entirely free of charge. Can you believe it? And now the Ruskies, they just spit back on you. And they say Britain is bad and America is bad. Even the people are bad. You know, well, you can read it yourself. Eh? It's disgusting. It really is disgusting. And I fear that the, um, the Ukrainians will do the same after the, you know, after the war, just as the French, you know. And I speak French. I hear this French talking about America, and it's not very nice. So you just punch pause or go to Land Lease and Wikipedia and read it yourself I'll, if i don't forget i'll i'll put it in the uh in the description for you and these are all the other countries you know they got military aid from america against the nazis and uh and most went to the uh, soviet union i suppose yeah so if not you know, the Russians would have lost another, they would have been completely annihilated by the Nazis. The Nazis would have won the war, without any doubt. So here's the chapter, US deliveries to the Soviet Union, in tons. You know, look at this, in 1941, here, in 1944, more than 6 million tons not kilos, 6 million tons, that's 6 billion tons, 35%. Be a little bit more grateful, Ruskies, and stop lying, or stop believing the lies and copy the lies, right? Yeah, British deliveries, well, you just punch pause and you read it yourself, Rusky. If you don't understand this all, I see a very black future for you, you know, because people are not going to accept this anymore. They're going to whip your ass. You hear me? And in order to help Russia and the Russians, thousands of US and British sailors lost their lives. Hey, Rusky. Stop twisting history and stop being so unthankful. So here it says the convoy RA-53 departs Kola Inlet, wherever that might be, March 1st, 1943. So Roski, you make sure you read this all, eh? I hate lies, people, you know I hate lies. So you just punch pause here and read it. This is a merchant sailor. Maybe he died, I don't know. He died to help the Ruskies. So you read it yourself. 
and uh, the British Prime Minister Winston Churchill called it the worst journey in the world. Sailors on nearly 80 convoys from August 1941 to May 1945 risked their lives to help the Soviet people. Hermann E. Melton, an American participant in these events that took many lives in the frozen Arctic, published his recollections of that harrowing time in the book Liberty's War, an engineer's memoir of the Merchant Marine, 1942-1945. Hey, Ruski, you make sure you read this. Yeah, you can read it all. Here it says, some 3,000 Allied seamen lost their lives in the North Russian convoys. Oh, now I know what Russia is going, the Russians are going to say, oh, that's only 3,000, that's not very much, we lost millions. Yeah, but listen up, Rusky, these 3,000 men, they saved millions of Russians. Maybe they saved another 50 million Russians from the Nazis. Do you hear me? You can see the, um, the winter convoy route here to Murmansk, going here from England and from here from the US. And um, of course, we had the Enigma when the uh, the Enigma machine was deciphered. Then, because of that, the uh, the Russian offensive could start really, you know, in 1945 or 40. No, I think it was 45 or 44. Yeah, the end of 44. Because the the Allied, the American and British goodies, they could get to the um, to Russia because um, the Enigma machine was deciphered, and also that helped uh, save the Russians. The end of the Enigma machine. And again, my grandfather, he was an officer in the uh, the Royal Naval Intelligence. And he was working on this sort of things. So unfortunately he died. Also me, Rusky, I lost my grandfather, you know. He was also helping you, Rusky. Convoys to the North Russia also carried more than 345,000 tons of ammunition and TNT. So this is a personal witness account. On my last visit ashore in Murmansk on February 27th, I witnessed a German dive bomber, Stuka's deadly attack on merchant ship El Oriente. Now you read it yourself. Here you see the, the painting somebody made. You know, these people were artists, you know, they were not really military, you know, they were merchant uh, sailors. Here you see the American ships, Rusky, being bombed by, uh, here by the Stuka. You know, people, Americans and British losing their lives to help saving your butt, Rusky. So don't be so unthankful. Also, my grandfather, who, he was a um, he was an officer in the Royal Navy, and he died in 1942. And uh, he was the in the Royal Navy Naval Intelligence, doing this kind of work helping you, Rusky, and preparing all this, you know, or helping to prepare. Royal Naval Intelligence, Rusky, and my family too. My grandfather died, you know, for helping you, Rusky. So I don't want to see any more Russian Nazis in my YouTube channels, you know, with all these hate mails. Do you get me? A no Russian disinformation agent by Mr. Putin either. Do you hear me, Rusky? Yeah, James Harkers of the British merchant ship Ocean Faith also mentioned the dive bombing of the El Oriente in his diary, referring to the ship as the Laurentis. Later, as the uh, 
as the ocean faith moved to another. Well, you can read it yourself here. And uh, this is uh, the ruins of Murmansk after the Second World War. And uh, here you can read some more about the same witness account of those days and how unfriendly the Ruskies already were towards the Americans and the British in those days. And uh, I guess uh, somehow it must be in the blood somehow. Never changed. They eh? There must be a reason somehow that the Ukrainians, they, um, they call the Ruskies the Orcs because of all the crimes they're doing right now. And uh, yeah, well, I'm not going to say more. So, Ruski, go listen once more to the great patriotic song, Put In, Put Out. It'll do you good. Pharaoh's agenda is to Americanize the Slavs of Eastern Europe into a happy New World Order dictatorship with lots of food, lots of sexual aberrations, lots of material goodies, lots of similar symbols lots of welfare, lots of mixed peoples, and toward which Putin is working on, together with his Freemason friends, Zelensky, Biden, Trump, Macron, and the rest of Putin's global leader friends, because this is Pharaoh's agenda. That must be accomplished by all means and through all costs of human lives, human misery and endless sufferings because of Pharaoh's worldwide nobility. Just look at the girl being dealt out. The enemy just love their symbols for hiding their true identities. Do you want to continue getting deltaed or do you want to stand up?